Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you are gracing us with your presence on the live stream, welcome. Super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I will work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answers, sometimes I do not, but either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. Guys, so I think the cold weather is finally behind us. You know, if any of you guys are on my mailing list, you guys saw uh, an email I sent out uh, this afternoon um, talking about temperatures. So yesterday was the last night in Southeast Georgia, or in, or in Southeast, within Georgia anyway, um, where, you know, the nighttime temperatures are dropping um, below 50 degrees. So from here on out, it's gonna be go time. Like things are gonna, you know, the, the weather's gonna be warmer in the day and also at night. So, you know, the, the grass should really take off. And you guys were lagging behind saying, you know what, my lawn's taking a while to, to, to really pick up. Uh, from here on out, we really should see a lot of uh, a lot of, of fresh growth, a lot of acceleration in, in how quickly uh, the turf is growing. Lots of stuff tonight, lots of pictures from viewers. Got some top dressing pictures to, to go through from Mary, from Papa Mo's Low, from, uh, from Robert. Um, it's got some pictures from Todd as well. There's also some disease problems, some, some fungus problems. We're going to get into all that. As always, guys, we're coming to you guys live on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and also Instagram. If you guys are here as well, don't feel left out. Feel free to chime in, ask your questions. We will try and incorporate you guys into the show as much as possible. All right. So let's see who we have in the show tonight to get things going. We got Ben Raham saying, happy Friday, Ron and everyone. What's going on, Ben? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. Appreciate you as Always, our first question of the evening comes from Jazzbot584, where he says, Happy Friday, everyone. Is it okay to spike the carbon um, with Miramichi Green Pest Control if it's time to spray my pest treatment at the same time? Or will that disrupt the biospectrum? 
So, um, uh, thanks for the advice to mix the pest control. Have a great weekend. See y'all on the lawn. Yeah, you can, the only thing I would, I personally would not mix biospectrum with is, uh, is fungicides. If I were spraying, say, pillar, like pillar SC, if I were spraying that, I wouldn't put, uh, I would be less inclined to put mix biospectrum in with that. But outside of, um, outside of fungicide, really any liquids that you're, that you're spraying on your lawn, you can, you can throw biospectrum in the tank if you want. So fertilizers, uh, pest control, um, herbicides if you want um yeah yeah i mean you can it can you can you can go in the tank with uh with any of those the only thing again i would not yeah i, I personally would not mix it with is uh is fungicide if you're going to be spraying the marimichi green pest control it sounds like the question you're asking is you're going to spray your normal spoon feeding concoction so maybe the carbon kit and uh, which in, which includes biospectrum and you want to know if you can throw some pest control in the tank as well with that yeah there's no problem with doing that at all uh jazz spot there's no issue uh whatsoever so yeah Go out, go forth, spray, and be happy. All right, so we got a uh, notorious block in from Instagram saying, "I love learning from you. I appreciate it, man." A uh, notorious block. I have a lot of fun hanging out on Friday nights. It's a good weekend. We got Formula One this weekend. There's another good UFC fight this weekend. Lawns are starting to look good, starting to green up. So it's it's good times. I got I got some new hardware for the garage. I'll show you guys that in a little bit too. If you guys are interested, I mean, it's nothing nothing big. You guys always get you know have much better cool stuff to show off than than I do. But it's a small thing, something I've wanted for a while, and it's finally arrived. So uh, I'll show you guys that here here shortly. All right. Next up is Jazzbot. He says, "Is anyone seeing slugs in your lawn? I saw a baby one." while putting down my Miramichi Green Pest Control. Hopefully it will cure it too. Yes, if you're seeing grubs or um, grubs in your lawn, I mean, not uncommon this time of year. I haven't been seeing any in my lawn uh, just yet, Jazz. I'm not sure what part of the country you're in. Um, but if you've got your preventative insecticide down, a celeprin or whatever you decided to use, that really should take care of it. You know what I mean? And what will happen to me invariably as I'm mowing throughout the season is I'll go out one morning to go mow and I'll see like a dead, I'll see like a dead grub on like laying on the, on the surface of the, of the lawn. So that, that's what I typically uh, come across whenever I see grubs um, in my lawn as, as the season progresses. They're typically, they're normally not alive when I see them, when, when I, um, when, by the time I get to them, they, they kind of make it up to the surface and I guess they, they, uh, they, they croak off, at least on my lawn. All right, um, and your question saying, so many videos, I don't remember if you said it's okay or not. Yeah, so yeah, as far as going back to what you asked about the pest control, there's, um, yeah, the only thing I would, the only thing with biospectrum, I, I would not mix biospectrum with personally is a, is a fungicide, but everything else, they, they all they all play very nicely together. No problems at all um, with that. So hope that helps. And guys, as always, you guys know when the stream first starts, I know you guys, were some, some of you were here in the comment section first. If I'm answering a question that came after yours, it's because for the first, a little, first, you know, 15 minutes or so, the, the questions don't come in in order. They kind of get jumbled. So that's why I'm going through them like that. But I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm going to get to every single question on here. So fair not. All right, VMH is up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I checked my soil with a 21-inch soil sampler probe. Okay, so you'll substantial probe. Good length. I like it. He says that I used to pull soil samples, and it punched down 6 to 9 inches fairly easily throughout. I'm thinking about aerating again. Should I? I mean, you can always air it again if you want VMH, but I mean, I'll be honest with you, six to nine inches isn't bad. I mean, there's a lot of people that would love to have that from a standpoint of, um, you know, being able to push a uh, a soil probe that deep in their lawn. I mean, normally with a screwdriver, some people with a screwdriver, a solid screwdriver, have trouble getting down that deep, much less with a, um, a you know, a tool for collecting, um, for collecting cores. So if you want to aerate again once your lawn is, you know, doing well, I know you've already done it once this season, if you want to do it again, that's fine. Um, but you know, I, I, it sounds like, it sounds like your soil profile is pretty, um, I, I don't, I'm not hearing a lot of compaction based on what you're describing to me. Just what I'm trying to say. Plus also keep in mind the, the aerator that you built, your Batmobile aerator, from what I f remember seeing on the tines, they don't go down much longer than, I mean, they definitely don't go, don't go as deep as nine inches. So I don't know that you're really going to, um, get a lot, you know, get a lot more depth by aerating again, if that's what your goal is. And again, six to nine inches is, is pretty good. It's pretty good, you know, so it's, it's your call. Um, if you're going to do it, I would wait until the lawn, I'm assuming the lawn's already recovered from the last time you aerated. If not, I would wait for that to, to be the case before, you know, you start, um, you start, start going after it again with your aerator. But uh, but yeah, if it's, it's your call, man. Completely your call. If it were me, I would not. In other words, I would not, if I, if, if I were, if what you described to me is what you, if, if what you're describing is what I had going on with my lawn, I would not be inclined to aerate, you know, in the next couple of weeks. If I wanted to do one maybe mid-summer, that would be fine. But like right now, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't be inclined to do another one just yet. But it's your call. You 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 own an aeration machine that you that you built yourself. So 
you can do it whenever you want, right? You got that, you have that luxury. All right, we got Jermaine's Battles up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's going on, Jermaine? Hopefully you are doing well. Now, guys, before we get too far into the show, I wanna go over, um, so Mary J sent me some pictures of her lawn, of her top dressing uh, job. She put down two yards of the Super Sod mix. Uh, she did some, she did coloration as well too. So let me show you guys what she was working with here. So I think she didn't like label the pictures as far as before and after, but I just looking at them, this is the order that I think how things went. So this is the lawn before in my mind, right? And then this is our next picture. So we can see here, she did her core aeration. You can look there along the street, plugs all over the lawn, looking solid. And then next up, we see the sand going down. See that's already down over the lawn, and it looks like you have a um, your the ditch or the the air the the little ditch in your front lawn. The, their water drains. It doesn't look to be too bad. So I mean, it's that's that's not a nightmare to mow through from what from what I'm seeing here. It doesn't look too bad at all. And it looks like you did a great job laying the sand down, guys. You know you know what I always say. Whenever you're putting the sand down, you really want to um, have the tips of the grass exposed. You don't want the entire thing to be beached because it just uh, delays how long it's going to take for the lawn to recover. Looks like what Mary did here was just right. It doesn't look like that's even been watered in yet. So I'm sure that once she waters it, that's gonna settle even more. And we got another picture here. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like she's running the irrigation in this picture, because you can see, you see all the material is darker and it looks like it's settling in very, very nicely. And then finally, um, well actually no, so I, I did them out of order. So this is probably picture number four and then this is the last one. So overall, great job, Mary. Nice job, great work. Um, it's, I know it's not a, you know, top dressing, when you first start it, you kind of question, you know, why are you doing this? Because it is, it is a ton of manual work, but your lawn is going to look really, really nice once it recovers from it. It doesn't look like it's gonna take too long either. You know, from what I'm seeing there, from the um, the picture where you're watering in there, if I can find it, that one, it's already settling pretty nicely. I wouldn't imagine, I would imagine in a couple of weeks here, you're going to be, um, you're gonna be out there, you're gonna be out there mowing um, in, in no time, so. So no uh, worries, no worries at all. No worries at all with that. Great, great job. Great, great, great work. All right, so we got some more to get to, but we will uh, we will say some of those for later on in the show. All right, so next up we have Luis Cardona saying, um, happy Ron, happy Cinco, what's going on, Luis? Happy, uh, happy uh, uh, Cinco de Mayo to you as well. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully uh, you guys are, are you know, having a libation that's a little bit better than what I've got. I've just got some, uh, this is Arnold Palmer tonight. You know, not not a. I, I would do a margarita or something like that, but again, my uh, my answers would get would get a little crazy as the night went on, right? So we'll we'll save that for another time. All right. So Todd Hickey is up next. He has a question: a disease problem in his lawn. We don't like that, but you know what? It's not uncommon this time of year. He says, "I placed Pillar SC down last weekend, but had some suspicious spots now that have grown in. Reddish color around the edge. Looks like large patch. It kind of sounds like large patch." Can I spot treat it with what products? Eastern North Carolina, Tifway 419. All right, so this is, I think I've got some of the pictures here from Todd. I'll try to get them up here right before the, sh the stream show. So what, looking at here, this is picture one in his lawn. And that does, I agree with you, Todd, that does look like, that does look like the beginnings of Large Patch. Um, here's the thing, you, you applied, yeah, the ring, yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, this this time of year, not not uncommon. That, oop, that was the thing I was gonna show you guys. You have to see that later. Um, yeah, that doesn't, that does look like the beginning of Large Patch, Todd. I think you sent another picture here, so I can find it. Um, yeah, yeah, you got one more here. Um, I, I would say, here's the thing. I don't know that I would do another fungicide application just yet. If you did Pillar last weekend, um, you know, that's still resident. That should still be working. If you want to, you know, at, at a minimum, I would give it another week. I would, I would at least have 14 days between, uh, you know, between your fungicide apps. Uh, you could do pillar again if you wanted to, um, or you could use headway if you wanted to mix up the active ingredients. I mean, both headway and pillar are both group 11 and, uh, group 11 and, uh, three, uh, fungicides. So if you wanted to do that, um, you know, if you want to go to Headway, you could. If you want to do another app of um, of Pillar, you absolutely could. Um, another option is um, oh, what's it called? It's uh, I think it's Clary's, like the three three six F. I think that's an option. Let me see if I can get a yeah. So this is I'll put a link for this one. This is another fungicide as well, um, Todd. You might want to look into this one. is is a group one. It's a different family than Pillar. SC or um, or Headway, 
But again, you did the application last week. You know, the fungicide you, you applied in the in the soil is still is still very much working. I would give it another week at minimum. Really, I, I like to space out my uh, my fungicide apps. We when I'm treating an active problem um, by three weeks apart. So if I did one, say the beginning of the month, by week three, by day 21 of the of the month is when I would do my my uh, my follow up app. If you want to push that up to a week later, that's fine. But I I wouldn't do another one just yet because again, if you're talking about just you know six days ago you put fungicide down. So there's really, I, I don't think that's necessary uh, just yet. So as far as another option, again, you, you, do, you can go with, um, let me show you here. You can go with Headway. So if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and go to the fungicide section, fungicide insecticide, you can go, so Pillar SC is, um, again, it's a liquid fungicide. Uh, group 11, group three, and then headway is propiconazole and azoxystrobin. Um, so you could go with this if you wanted to switch it up, um, or I will give you another option. There's Clary's 336F. You could go with that as well. So I'll give you a, um, a link to that here in the chat. But honestly, man, I you know I would give it I would give it a little bit longer because remember here's here's the thing when it comes to fungicides, Todd. Remember, fungicides don't they don't reverse the damage. Like what they do is they they arrest the spread of the disease. So they kill the disease. They um it's almost like antibiotics, right? Like if you have a, a um an, an infection, you take an antibiotic. Like the antibiotic is going to kill the bacteria, the stuff that's harming you, and it's going to allow your body to get ahead of it and to heal, right? But it's not like it reverses um whatever you had you had going on. So fungicide is much the same way. It's going to it's going to you know get rid of or, or or suppress the um the the disease that's damaging your grass, allowing it to recover, but um. But it's but it's not going to reverse the process. So I, I would say give it a bit more time if you want my opinion. I mean, I've dealt with large patches in my lawn. I've got I had like I have one one area there in the front lawn that, that I'm dealing with. Um, give it a bit more time. It will it will recover. You already got a great fungicide down. Pillar SC is a great great product. Um, you know, I, I would give it at least another week, really two weeks um, before introducing another one. You have a choice between using the one I just linked to you there in the chat or going with Headway, or you could even just do, you could do another app of Pillar if you wanted to. I wouldn't do more than two of the same one in a row. Um, so I would do, if you do want to do Pillar now and do another one uh, next week or even um, week three, that would be okay. But if you're, but if you're still not happy with how the launch recovering, it should be doing just fine by then, honestly. But if, but if you say that you need another app, that's when I would switch it up um, at that point. So give, I'd give it a more time. I wouldn't be, um, again, it's only a week. You know, so uh, think of it this way. If you had like a fertilizer burn in your lawn or you had like a like damage from like pet urine or whatever in your lawn, it's gonna take more than a week in most cases for that to recover, right? Even when you even when you remove the the thing or the the the, is the thing that's causing the problem. So even if, if Fluffy isn't like doing his or her business in that spot anymore, um, it still takes the lawn the grass a while to recover. Once you once you remove the thing that's causing the, the causing the issue, it still takes a while for it to recover. So I would give it a bit more time. Again, you've already done the right thing, getting the fungicide down. Give it more time to work, and I think you'll you'll be you'll be happy with how it um it how it recovers. It looks like you got ahead of it, honestly. I mean, it doesn't look like it's like when I had it in my lawn badly a couple of years ago. It looked way worse than that. I mean, it was a very clearly defined ring. So it looks like you are very much ahead of the curve. I, I wouldn't expect that to take too long to recover. So so hope that helps. Um, you know, if you want to, you know, hit me, hit us, hit me up in the, uh, the Academy, in the, in the Facebook group, you can do that as well. We can, we can chat about it some more, but I think that's a pretty good plan of action based on what I would do if I were in, uh, in your, uh, your shoes. So sorry you're dealing with that, but it's honestly not uncommon for this time of year. And you know, on that topic, guys, if you guys have not put a preventative fungicide down as yet, it, it'd be a, gr this is a great time of year to do it. We're, the temperatures are starting to consistently go up. We're getting a lot of rain literally right before the show. I'll show you like this. This video was taken like literally six minutes before the show started tonight. So this is the back lawn as of like uh, 30 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. And you can see it's raining out there. So we get a lot of, we're getting a lot of rain this time of year. You can see that my table is wet and um, we get a lot of rain this time of year. So when you start mixing rain, um, so a lot of moisture and, and heat, if you have, if your lawn is predisposed to having disease problems, um, these are the these types of conditions that will, that will allow them to manifest themselves or allow them to take to take root. So, if if for no reason other than to prevent the kind of problems that that you saw see Todd is dealing with, get a preventative fungicide down. I like Headway. Um, it's, a, it's a great product. It's two in one. Headway or Pillar. So either one of these guys, I'll show you here. Either one of these. So either 
Um, Headway G, if you like a granular, or Pillar SC, if you like a liquid. People have asked me, I've gotten emails saying, which one is better, which one is worse? Really, they are, if you want a liquid um, fungicide, go with Pillar. If you want a granular fungicide, go with Headway. They're both excellent products. Um, Pillar goes a bit further. So this one bottle treats uh, one acre, and the application rate for it is really easy. It's like one ounce per thousand square feet, so it's really easy to mix. So you see it's like 43.5 ounce bottle, covers 43,500 5, 43, square feet, so it covers an acre, one bottle. And then um, headway depends on the rate that you use, but I, I tell people around 15,000 square feet is what you can expect to get out of, a, out of a bag of headway if you're applying it at the preventative at the preventative rate. So from a cost perspective, Pillar is a cheaper per application than Headway is, but it really comes down to which you prefer. If you like liquids, go with Pillar. If you like granulars, go with Headway because this is the time of year when, you know, disease problems start to really start to really show up and uh, you want you want to get ahead of that if you can. Kind of like insect damage. You want to get ahead of that before it becomes a problem in your lawn. And I put links in the in the chat in case you guys are interested in that. All right, so we got uh, Ron Henry in the in the chat tonight in Instagram saying, what's up, what's going on, uh, Ron? Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully all is going well with you, sir. I appreciate you coming to come hang out a little bit. Next up, we have Gunny Grasshopper. He says, can you advise again on the product to apply for Bermuda grass growing in my flower bed? Yes. So what I'm a fan of Gunny, and it's not an inexpensive concoction, but it does, it is like a one and done. So what you can do is use glyphosate, so a glyphosate product, um, and a and Fusilade 2. So you can use glyphosate by itself, so I'll show you here. If you go to, right, I'll show you, if you go to the store, we now, we actually do have a glyphosate product now. Um, so if you go to shop and then weed killer, you can get um, the Quick Pro, the Roundup Quick Pro. This is like five individual packets, so five easy single-use packets. Um, and this is a higher concentration, so it's got diaquat in it, and it's got 73% um, glyphosate. So this is a this is a pretty as far as uh, a, a a kill all type product. This is really good. What I would use, what I would do is, is if you want to again have a one and done. I would mix that along with Fusilade 2, and you're gonna spray that one time, and then you're gonna, the Bermuda grass is not going to, um, is not gonna, you know, you're not gonna have a problem with that in your mulch beds. This is an example of what you can expect. So this is like before, and then this is two weeks later. So before, and then two weeks later. And what you tend to find, right, is whenever you spray, um, whenever you like, you do use just like a, um, just, just a glyphosate product by itself, what you'll find is it'll knock the Bermuda back, it'll discolor it. Um, it'll turn brown, but it, you'll, you'll find that, that some of it will still grow back, you know, a month later, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start coming back in. When you mix uh, glyphosate and Fusilade 2, it, it is dead, it does not come back. Like I literally, in my beds now, like if I, I don't have any video to show you guys, but if you were to walk outside now and look at this spot of my lawn, because this is actually from... This is actually from um, from my lawn. This uh, this video I'm showing you here, or this picture. Um, there's still no Bermuda grass in there. There's still none, right? So along here, along well, you can't see, but along the edge, along the pavers, right there, the lower left hand corner, grass is living its best life, looking great. But in the mulch beds, there is there is nothing. So it's a great combination if you only want to spray one time. If you're willing to do a multiple app, you can just use just glyphosate. But I mean, Fusilade two and glyphosate, that's a that's a really good combination. So. Having said that, let me get you the links you're going to need to pull that off, Gunny. So at Gunny, this is thing one, that, and then thing two is um, is this. And again, it's not inexpensive. I mean, the, the, the thing about um, Fusilate, it's really designed for like removing Bermuda in um, certain cool season grasses and also um, uh, zoysia. So it's great for that, but when you mix that along with glyphosate, it's a very good combination for, um, again, for like a one and done type concoction that will clean up clean up Bermuda, which again is a big big accomplishment. Bermuda is really difficult to get rid of, and uh, and this this will do it. So uh, so let me send this to you as well. So that's thing one, and that's thing two. And if you want a video, I've got a video showing it. I show a different um, glyphosate product. The stuff, the stuff that I linked to you in the chat is actually a higher concentration of glyphosate, so it's even it's even better than the eraser product that I show in this uh, in this video. So let me, um, I'll I'll send you this as well, so you can see how I mix it. it. Has my the rates that I use and everything, and you'll be all squared away. Um, Bermuda elimination. You guys gotta excuse my spelling, man. I'm trying to type and 
and uh, do all this at the same time. So if there's spelling errors in the chat, forgive me. All right, so there you go, Gunny. That's everything you should need. Uh, if you need anything else, let me know. Have fun. Make sure you wear your PPE. All right, uh, we have a question here now from, um, from the Instagram. It's saying, just received my shipment of 7020 from the Golf Course Lawn Store, which was suggested based on the soil test results. Good, sounds great. Should I aerate first before throwing it down? If you're planning to aerate the lawn, like if you're going to aerate this weekend, yes. But if you're if you're not, if, in other words, if you have you don't have any definite plans to do any kind of aeration, like you're not going to aerate till, sorry, you're not going to aerate until, you know, two three weeks from now. No, I wouldn't wait that long. So if you're going to do it this weekend, yeah, why not? Why not aerate and then fertilize afterwards? But if you don't have any immediate plans to aerate, I would not wait. So uh, so yes, hopefully that helps um, answer your question. Double uh, O Seven Lawn. Um, the only time when I hold back fertilizer applications is when I'm, um, for aeration is if I'm going to, let's say I'm going to go top dress, right? Which is, if you guys notice a lot of my videos on top dressing, they tend to be at either the beginning of a uh, beginning or end of a month, right? So it tends to be like right before my next fertilizer app, because I like to throw down a little bit of fertilizer when I'm doing my aeration and top dressing work. So if you, if that happens to be the case for you, 007 lawn, then yes, wait for that. But if you, but again, if you are not going to fertilize again until, cause we already, or five days into May, you're not going to fertilize again until June. No, I would not wait that long to before you put down the uh, the seven zero twenty. So, hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, definitely let me know. All right, Gunny's up. He says, "Hey, Ron, just finished my first verticut ever. Want a workout? But I love the outcome. Yeah. So verticutting, I mean, it's it's a great it's a great way to encourage new growth to thin out the lawn in a gentle way, assuming you set the verticutter up um, nicely, set it up properly. And again, with the with the temps, with the nighttime temps now getting warmer here in Georgia, I'm not sure where the part of the country you're in, Gunny." But if you, um, you know, with the, with, with the temps now definitely on a warming trend, both night and daytime temps, uh, you know, the lawn is going to recover from any that any kind of injury you put it through a lot faster than it would have, say, even a week ago or even two weeks ago. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully you went light. If you did, it should be very, it should be kind of difficult to even see the lawn was verticut. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree that as far as far as, you know, just producing one, helping the, the stripes and also just encouraging new growth in the lawn and preventing cutting issues eventually as the lawn begins to thicken up. Verticutting is a uh, is a great thing to do, especially if you have some way of catching all the clippings, right? It's, it's not as much fun if you got to verticut it and then go and rake the entire lawn. Like I've done that before, not fun. But if you have a mower like uh, like the Allet or any other type of s setup where you're able to verticut it and throw the, the debris into a catcher, then it's um becomes a lot, a lot more doable, a lot less painful to uh to pull off so good stuff good stuff man all right uh steven uh steven thompson's in the house he says um let's see here he says um i know i'm i'm early but i figure i'd ask while i can if i did the yearly max of prodiamine already what can i put down in the fall besides spectacle flow thanks uh thanks ron happy friday everyone uh there's lots of different um uh, pre-emergence you can do you could do that dithyb hair you could do um, you, could do, you, could, you technically could do like pennant, you could do, um, simazine. Um, but I will tell you, Steven, if you have warm season grass, it's really hard to beat spectacle. You know what I mean? Like what I would say is this, if you can find a couple of friends, you know, even if it's, even if it's a couple of buddies of yours that you guys that are like in the same town where you guys can buy a bottle of the stuff and split it, like you're really going to like the results that you get using spectacle flow as far as keeping Poanio out of your lawn. You know what I mean? There's not, there's not much that I've found that works um, there's nothing that I found that works better than it. The only thing that was close is um, was a product that you can't really buy anymore in a small amounts, uh, which was Simazine, Amazequin, and Prodiamine. It was called Coastal. You can make it yourself, but again, in your case, you've already used your annual allocation of Prodiamine. Um, so if you can swing it, again, or you have to do it all yourself. If you can convince a couple of your buddies to go in on you on a bottle of, uh, of Spectacle, you're not going to, you're not going to dislike the results. The results are going to be very, are going to be really good as far as, you know, keeping POA out of your lawn, um, you know, throughout the, throughout the late fall and this time of year into the spring, it's going to be, you're, you're going to really like the results you get with Spectacle. So I would try and move you that towards that way. Everything else or other options that will work well for other types of weeds, but POA is really difficult to keep out of your lawn and nothing that I have found works um, quite as good in warm season turf as, uh, as spectacle flow. So just something, just something to give it, just, just a thought. It's just a thought. Just want to put that out there. All right. So um, let's see what else we got as far as, um, as far as um, content I want to show you guys. So um, if you guys are enjoying the show, we got 126 people in here already, which is awesome. If you guys would not mind hitting that like button ever so gently, it costs you absolutely nothing. It's a free way to support the channel. 
and the show. So if you guys would not mind doing that, I would most appreciate it. Surely we can do better than uh, 59 likes. We can do better than 59 likes, right? All right, next up is Jason Harrison. Make sure we got here, nothing else. Yeah, this is just Jason Harrison. He says, uh, evening everyone. Tonight uh, tonight was a movie night, uh, but got moves tomorrow. Looking forward to some relaxing lawn talk. Nice. Mm -hmm. I hear you, I'll do my best, Jason. I'll do my best to try and keep it entertaining and and uh, keep it relaxing, try and keep it chill. On, uh, on Cinco de Mayo, right? It's the right, it's the right day for it. All right, guys, so on the topic of more top dressing projects, because this is, because it is the season, as far as the window for doing lawn leveling work, it is now. Like if you, from now through really mid-July is a, is you're, the, you're good to go as far as doing uh, top dressing and some of the viewers have been doing that. So I want to show you guys some of the work they've been putting in here. I showed you Mary's lawn already. Uh, next up, we got Robert, Robert Rainey's top dressing work here. So, Robert, here's the thing with Robert. He has got to, he's got to be extra in everything. You know, he can't just send me just a regular picture like everybody else. He got to get his drone out and like, hey, this is what the lawn looks like before. Here's how the stripes look, looking pretty good, nice. And then next up, he's showing uh, the what he's got going on. Several several yards, several bags of super side yellow, uh, yellow mix, uh, that leveling mix, that that stuff. So you're putting down. And then next up. You see, he's spreading it out over the lawn. So here's the thing, Robert. This is an interesting technique. I um, you know, I, I tend to use a um, I tend to use like a I've used like a, um, the machine typically, like the uh, the earth and turf machines for doing a lot of the top dressing work. So I've not done the the wheelbarrow technique like what you're seeing you're showing here, but I can see the merits in doing that, man. Definitely, you know, you do all the work of, of getting it out and big piles over the lawn and working it in and you don't have to worry about like going a lot of back and forth. So for solo leveling, I can definitely see the merits of this technique for sure. All right, so moving on next. He's got the sand all over the lawn and then through the magic of, you know, lots of work and a quick picture, now we can see it's spread out. It looks very nice, Robert. I like how that is, not too heavy. It looks like a, a fairly light top dressing job. You can see a lot of the, the grass, a lot of the green showing through there. So the lawn's gonna recover from that really quickly. And um, finally, another drone shot following up to show how the lawn looks after all the uh, all the hard work. So nicely done, sir. Nicely done. Uh, you did it exactly how I would do it, and it's gonna it's gonna look awesome. I can tell you right now, it's gonna be in your case, it's likely gonna be two weeks from now. You should be mowing, maybe maybe even a bit sooner. I can't tell if it's been watered in after you did that drone shot or not, it looks it looks a bit dry to me, so maybe you haven't even watered it in. So once it gets any kind of rainfall or you're in irrigation, it's gonna settle in really nicely and then you'll be out there mowing again before you know it. So good job, great time of year to get your top dressing done. Um, that's normally when I do my big top dressing jobs, uh, this is the time of year when I do it. So uh, so yeah, great, great, great work. Great work on getting uh, on getting that, uh, that, that all taken care of. All right, so we'll show you guys some more here. We got another one. I got another one from Papa Mo's Lil. I'll show that one here in a little bit. But moving on to the next question is Bermuda Guy DIY. All right, says, hey, Ron, it's go time, right? Yeah, it's go definitely go time. I would, I would definitely say it is, uh, we are well into uh, go time. It's his first season real mowing with an early 80s McLean. Nice, a classic, a classic. You know what, we gotta clap it up for that. Gotta give it to you. All right. Uh, you refurbished it over the winters. Is there a recommended height of cut for a beginner? So for me, what I would say is this guy, Bermuda um, guy DIY, and you're gonna get different answers depending on who you ask. But for me, I've tested mowing under half an inch. I've tested mowing at an inch. And for me, the, the height of cut that I like the best, I think is a great catch all height of cut, is three quarters of an inch. So 0.75 inches is a great height of cut. Um, reason being is it's long enough. You have enough, you have enough length in the grass that it's going to stripe very nicely. Like, you know, the way you get your stripes are, you know, the grass, you get the grass to lay down based on how the sun hits it. Um, you get your stripes and with a 0.75 inch, um, uh, height of cut that there's enough leaf there to where it'll, you're, you'll be able to lay them, lay the grass down, get good stripes. The stripes will last a bit longer. The color of the, of the turf is going to be better than if you cut it really short. So if you're cutting it uh, like well under half an inch, you know, it's still gonna look good, but as far as like the color, it's not gonna be quite as nice as if you, when you're cutting, you know, between five eighths, like 0.62 to, to, to three quarters of an inch. So anywhere between there, 0.62 to three quarters of an inch is where I like to uh, to keep my height of cut. I think you're gonna enjoy that also from a standpoint, if you ever have to go out of town, uh, you know, you can, um, you know, you're not gonna, 
the, the, the mowing requirements, whenever you start going below half an inch, get, get pretty gnarly, especially when it gets hot. With three quarters of an inch, for the most part, you're gonna be mowing every couple of days in the summertime when it's in the heat of the summer. You might be mowing every other day. If you're below half an inch, if you wanna keep it green between mowings, even if you're using growth regulator, you're really gonna, there's gonna be a stretch there, a month or four, a three to four week period there where you're gonna be mowing every day if you wanna keep it looking nice. And for most people, it, it starts to feel like work doing that versus versus fun. So for all those reasons, I would stick with um, with three quarters of an inch than, uh, than much lower than that. If you wanna start at again, 0 0.62, 5 eighths, and, and then move up to three quarters, that's fine, but somewhere in that range is where is what I would recommend from a standpoint of um, of height of cut. That's that's what I like. I get great. Um, that's that's what I think I can get great great results doing that. So I've tried I've tried it I've tried it much shorter than that. Um, looked great, but didn't like the amount of work that was involved with it. I've I've tried it longer than that and didn't like it. Didn't look quite tight enough. So 0.75 is uh, is a good sweet spot. I always say 0.75 is a good height of cut to not have real mowing ruin your life, especially. If you um, use some some a growth regulator with it, use some Primo Max, uh, you're gonna really like the way the lawn looks. You're not again. You're gonna be mowing every two days. You know, thereabouts. Two, this time of year, maybe every three days if you use Primo. Every two to three days, you're gonna be mowing it, and then during the summertime, at, at the worst time when the, when the grass is growing most aggressively, every other day is what you're gonna have to deal with, which is not not too bad. But again, using some growth regulator, using Primo Max is what I would say is, is, a, is a part of that as well. So hope that helps. Congrats on the new mower. It's always nice to see people getting new equipment, new hardware. Enjoy it, keep it sharp. That's one of the most important things. You didn't ask about that, but as far outside of height of cut, the next, this next most important thing outside of mowing a lot is keeping your equipment sharp. Make sure your mower is sharp because you're gonna prevent injury, you're gonna prevent disease problems. The color will be nice, like if you, mow the lawn consistently with uh, like you're mowing it every other day right but the mower is dull and you're tearing the 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 grass instead of cutting it cleanly what you're going to find is it's going to get like a like a yellowish haze it's going to look it's going to look dull in color so keeping the mower sharp is a very important part of getting just having a great looking turf so congrats again on the mower uh, use it in good health i'm sure you know you did a good job great job refurbishing it if you want send a send us a picture at some point and we'll show it off well let's see everyone uh, i've not i've not seen a late an early 80s mclean Probably looks like the, the current ones. They haven't changed the design too much, but yeah, show it off if you wanna, if you want everyone else to see it. All right, next up is Jason Harrison. He says, how's the new fiber connection? It's doing well, it's doing well, guys. So what Jason's talking about is earlier this week, uh, earlier this week being, let me see, when did they fix it? They fixed it yesterday. So on Tuesday, they were burying fiber in my neighbor's lawn with a ditch witch. And, you know, I went to the kitchen, I came back and I got on my computer, I was working and I said, I was like, huh. Yahoo's down. I'm thinking, no, Yahoo's not down. Something else is going on. And then I checked, make sure DNS is working, everything was good. And like, and, and then and then I hear, the, I literally hear the ditch witch running outside. And I say, I said, no, it can't be. It can't. I'm, it can't be. I tried a couple other websites, did my t did my test, and sure enough, um, they cut my fiber. Right. So I was without internet for um, happened Tuesday, and they came out yesterday morning and repaired it, so we were in good shape for the live stream. If it didn't happen, we were still gonna have the live stream. I got my phone here, I was just gonna tether. Instagram would've just gotten left, would've just got left out, and we'd've been, we'd been tethering and just doing it that way, right? Might not have been 4K, but we'd've made it happen. So I had I already had my contingency plan in in place, but uh, but yeah, it's never fun to, you, to lose your internet connection, especially for someone that works from home. It is, um, it's not good, not a great time. Not a great time, but they came out, they fixed it, and we're, we're, we're good to go. All right, so we got a couple questions here from Instagram. From Instagram, um, Laser Rahoda says, Hey, Ron, happy Friday. Everyone getting ready to aerate before a leveling. Should I do preventative headway G before or after aeration? I would do it afterwards. Um, also, plan on putting down Carbon Pro, uh, Granular Hydrotain. Yeah, so what I would do in your case, Lance, um, is do your core aeration first. And then any any granular products, do them after your aeration, but prior to doing the top dressing work, the leveling work, right? So you would do your aeration, you look like you can do headway, you could do your headway, your carbon pro, granular hydrotain. I would also put a fertilizer in there as well, help the lawn recover a little bit faster, then do your leveling work, water it in, and just be patient. So that's the that's the sequence that I like to use when it comes to um when it comes to, to doing leveling work when aeration is also in play. So is there anything else you'd recommend right after aeration and leveling? Thank you for the feedback. Yeah, just what your, what your plan sounds good. I would, like I said, I would aerate, 
And then um, any granular product. So again, your your Headway, your um, Carbon Pro G or Essential G, fertilizer, hydrogen, anything like that you want to put down, do that first, then do your top dressing and then water, water it all in. You should be good to go. Sounds like a fun project. Um, and then next up is the Maestro. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Is it too early to attempt some spot leveling? No, it is not too early. I've got some spots that need to I need to raise up or just wait till the June heat. It is, you can do it now. I mean, I'm not sure if you're in Georgia, the Maestro, but you absolutely can start doing some leveling work now. The big thing is just to go light, you know? The lawn will recover faster if you wait till June, but it's not like, you know, we're not gonna get um, any cool temperatures or cool nights here going forward based on what I'm seeing in the forecast. So any work that you do, uh, core aeration, leveling, turf raking, verticutting, anything like that, the lawn is gonna recover a lot faster here going forward. Okay, you're in Swanee, okay, yeah. Yeah, so go, go for it, man, go for it. And again, I've got that, I've got a video on spot leveling if you haven't seen it. Um, but if, if you want, I'll see if I can find it here and I'll link it there in the chat on the gram for you. But yeah, by all means, go for it. The big thing is just go light. Go light. Don't don't get out there and try and um, and be a hero and you know you know drop you know two inches two inches of material all at one in one go. You got plenty of time, plenty of season. Uh, do your leveling and see how the lawn um, how the lawn you know recovers from it, and then you can always do a follow up if you want to in uh, in June. So there is the link to the YouTube video on spot leveling. You've probably already seen it, but if not, there you're all set there. All, all good to go. All right. Next up is Papa Moslo. He is in, actually, you know what? I got a super chat. Let me get this really quick. I'm, I'm, in, I'm messing up. I got a super chat. Got it from Mr. Luis Ayabarreño. Thank you so much, sir. He says, good evening, Ron and everyone. I need to get my question in because I'm headed outside. My dad started at 6.30 a.m. mowed and put down liquids. My sprayer uh, mixed phoned up a lot. I believe it was a multi-purpose 402 thoughts. Okay, so your day starts at 6.30 a.m., you mowed, put down liquids, you spray your phone up. Okay, yeah, so here, here's what I do. Here's a trick for that, um, Luis. So whenever I am filling up the sprayer, this is good for everybody, it's a great question. Um, whenever I am um, uh, filling up a backpack sprayer with anything that likes to foam, like uh, like Primo will foam if you, if, you, um, you hit it, if you hit the tank directly with it, like that'll cause foaming. The Miramichi stuff, the Miramichi for, uh, um, products do not really, um, they don't really foam, like the, the Release Zero 901C, NutriCup, none of those foam, but Primo will cause foaming. So what I would do, and, and, I also, uh, and apparently also the multi-purpose uh, as well too. So what I would say is this, you have a four gallon sprayer, fill it you know, between two to three gallons, right? Add your products, add your products, give it a good mix, give it a, get it, get it, get it, you know, everything suspended in that like slightly more concentrated mix. And then here's a secret you can do. What I'll do is this, I'll grab, I mean, not this one, but I'll use like a, let's go to this bigger camera. I've got like, this is not what I normally use. I have like a 32 ounce one, but I'll take this and I'll put this over the top of the, um, the opening for this, for the sprayer like this, right? And I'll spray water in here and I'll just allow it to run in. So it's not like being, it's not like a jet going in where you're, where you're like putting air and you're kind of airifying the mixture and causing it to foam. If you just put, I mean, granted, you can do a couple of things. One, you can just like, like run the water in the tank a bit slower so, you, so it doesn't foam up. Or you can take the, the same measuring cup that you use, lay this on top of the sprayer so that like, this would be the opening for the sprayer right here like that. And then just run your hose like that and it just runs in. And that's a great way to fill it up without causing um, additional foaming. I've never actually, I don't know if I've ever shown that on camera, but it's like a, that's a trick that I, that I do as well. Or again, you can just run your hose really slowly and it won't foam as well. But if you're, but if you're sitting there blasting it, um, if you, if you get like halfway full and then you start blasting the, the inside of the tank with the, the, um, with your hose, yeah, it's going to foam, especially like Primo will do that. Apparently the multipurpose 402 will do that. Um, so again, just make sure that you are, you're, you know, just let it, let you continue filling the tank, but don't, push a bunch of air in as well. It's going to cause it. It's going to exaggerate the uh, the foaming problem. So hope that helps. Great question. That's the first. I have not been asked that one before, um, but but hopefully my explanation makes um, makes sense to you as far as how to go about how to go about um, fixing that. So thank you so much, sir. You are the show sponsor. So there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Appreciate um, all the love and support. Super chat. And if you and if that if you have any other questions, let me know. You got my email address. You know how to get a hold of me, and uh, we can we can hash it out some more. But hopefully that makes sense. Just the big thing is don't don't get a bunch don't you know um, air fire or, 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 or put like a jet into the tank as you've got those products in there because it will cause foaming. I mean you could technically also fill that gallon 
pitcher with water and just pour that in, but that takes more time, right? And time is valuable. So, uh, so just try that trick that I was telling you about. That will likely help quite a bit as far as um, with the foaming. And if you need anything else, do let me know. All right, Papa Mo's Low is up next. He says, if I haven't reached my annual limit of prodiamine, would it be a good idea to apply another app after leveling? I did notice some weeds um, in the soil three bags. It won't hurt. It won't hurt Papa Mo's Low. Um, yeah, so if you want to do that, there's no uh, there's no problem at all. Yeah, no issues uh, no issues with that if you want to go ahead and do it. Um, he says, happy Friday, Ron. And uh, yeah, yeah, if you want to do a um, another pre-emergent app, it, not necessarily because of what was in your lawn already, but because you're bringing this material in, you saw some weeds in there, you're just trying to prevent problems. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't see a problem with that as long as you're not in total, you're not going over your annual your annual limit. Now, on the topic of Papa Mo's Low, um, he also did a leveling project, as you can tell by his comment, and he sent me pictures. So this is his lawn. I think I got them in the right order. So this is his lawn before. It already looks pretty good. You can see the stripe action, some faint diagonal stripe action, which I like. I approve of that. You see, this is the coration going down. You can see he did a pretty good job there. I like what I'm seeing. Um, looks like the wifey's in the mix. She's helping out with, with some of the hard work too. Um, running, uh, you know, helping to clean up the lawn, get it ready for that top dressing. Uh, he's putting down his, his uh, heavy app of Essential G. Again, my name is Ron Henry and I approve this picture. And then uh, next up is his picture of him doing his top dressing. See, this is nice, man. I got to tell you, like how that looks as far as, you know, you can still see plenty of grass exposed. That's looking really good because you can tell what that tells you is that area where you see is like a lot of green. That is likely a high spot in your lawn, right? So you don't need a lot of sand there. And the other areas around it are lower. So yeah, you're doing it exactly right, Papa Mo's low. The lawn looked great before. Like this looks really nice before, but it's going to look even better once this uh, once this grows back through. See the back lawn, also looking quite good. Plenty of grass exposed there. I like it. Same thing here, looking good. And we can see you're already on your way to uh, to recovery. Yeah, man, that's looking solid. So these are some some after pictures with a bit more time um, gone by. So yeah, great great work. Looks looks good. Looks good. You're gonna like how that uh, how that grows back in. It's already looks like, looks like it's recovering really nicely. So uh, so keep it keep it up. Keep up the great work. He does have a question. He says, after the lawn fully recovers from top dressing and fills in, I plan to verticut monthly this year. What depth do you verticut or would you recommend? I like at the most aggressive two millimeters above the surface on Papa Mo's low. Remember, if you did a good job with verticutting, you should not, you shouldn't be carving channels in the lawn. There shouldn't be a lot of dirt and debris and all kinds of stuff coming out. Really, you should just see the runners, just the stolons being thrown into the catcher. Um, it should be a, a relatively gentle process. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, so I'd say two millimeters um, is the most aggressive. If you want to start at like four millimeters above the above the surface, I think the sterling does have. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, so it does have a cultivation gauge on there. It looks like it goes down to ten down to 10, which you would never, you'd never go down that far. That, that, that's more, for, I guess, for, for maybe if you're running a dethatcher perhaps, but yeah, not, definitely don't verticut anywhere near that. So go down to, uh, start with four and see how, see what, see how, how it's doing. And then if you want to take it down to two, two is the, as low as I would go. And you're going to get a great result, uh, with that. Um, verticut if you can in two directions. So do like one, one way and then verticut uh, perpendicular. Um, if you want, and then you should be uh, should be good to go, man. Yeah, the big thing is just to go light. It doesn't take much to get a good result. Don't don't get too aggressive with it. Remember, you're gonna be doing it monthly. Most people don't verticut their lawns at all. So the fact that you're doing it just once a month, just a, a, just a, a light cultivation is gonna is gonna look do wonders for how the turf looks. And uh, and again, you just you don't need to get too aggressive. Just a little bit, you know, two, like two millimeters above the surface is as aggressive as I would go. So. Uh, so hope that helps. Looks like you're on your way, man. It's looking good. Looking solid. All right, next up is Harper's Knitter. He says, or he or she says, um, he says, do you know if the toxicity is lower in Scott's weed and feed than just spraying with Spectra? I'm not so, I'm not sure what, what Spectra is. I asked you in a long form with more details on IG. I'll also look after the show. I didn't see your, um, your, question or your, your comment. Here's the thing, guys. As far as order, or of, if you want to get a hold of me or get responses, I'm not that I'm going to ignore you on any platform, but like by far, like YouTube, I respond to those comments before pretty much anything else. Well, that's not true. Like the 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 Golfers Lawn Academy this first, and then YouTube, and then I'll go through email. 
Um, and then whenever I'm just out checking Instagram or I'm posting something on Instagram and I happen to go and look and say, oh, you got like a bunch of chats in there, then I'll go in, I'll go through that and I'll answer questions. So I don't spend a lot of time in the chat on Instagram, mainly because of just time. I can't like be on all the platforms um, from a standpoint of like answering questions and comments on all of them. So really post on the YouTube, post on YouTube, um, join the Academy. That's a great way to, to get answers really quickly and or uh, or send me an email. You know what I mean? That that would be the way to go. But um, but I, I'm not familiar with Spectra. Um, and here's the thing, as far as toxicity, I, as long as you're applying the products at the um, at the labeled rates, so you're, you're applying them at the correct rates and you're watering them in properly, you know, they, one shouldn't be, I mean, as far as toxicity goes, I mean, unless you're going to an organic product, like, um, unless you're going to a strictly organic product, um, from synthetics, I mean, it should be, it should be similar. So if you're using like a fun, like a, like a herbicide, they, they should fear if it's, if they're labeled for use on residential lawns, um, you know, as long as you're applying them properly, I, it's not something that I would really worry about. Um, I'm not, I've not heard of Spectra, so I don't, I can't, um, I can't speak to that. And I, I'm not really familiar with a lot of the, um, the, uh, the weed and feed, um, pro like the Scott's weed and feed products. I, I tend to not like to use those. I mean, if, if you're going to use a weed and feed, I would say, at the very beginning of the season, as like your first your first app, maybe for that, but then that then no more. Like I would not I would not use weed and feed on your lawn every single month because there's no reason to hit your lawn with herbicides every single month. You know what I mean? Like really, if you are if you did pre emergent, you really shouldn't need weed and feed. Um, but if, if say you didn't do that and you're just trying to get control of some 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 late winter early spring weeds and also um, you know get your fertilizer app down as well. I could see an argument for doing it for doing it then. I am a fan of decoupling like the herbicides and fertilizer. So if, so if I'm doing pre-emergent, I will spray pre-emergent. If I'm spraying a herbicide, I will spray a herbicide. And if I'm fertilizing the lawn, I will use fertilizer. So I'll do them. I'll do them. I tend to do them separately. I don't. I don't like to use combination products. Um, and if for, if for when it comes to especially when they are not in the same. Um, in the same family. Like if you're spraying, like if you were to mix fertilizers, right? For example, if you're gonna mix like a kelp product or and a uh, and a liquid fertilizer, like I'm all for that because they 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 serve in many ways similar purposes. They're about building up nutrient levels in the soil and also helping to improve the soil biology to improve nutrient uptake. Like herbicides are designed for controlling weeds in your lawn, for killing controlling weeds in your lawn. Fertilizers are designed for improving the nutrient levels in your lawn. So they're, they're, so they're different families of products as far as what they're, they're what they're designed to do. So separating them, I find you get a better result and more control over the result than using like a combination a combination product, you know what I mean? Kind of like when, you know, it's a good, perfect example. Like people ask me, you know, as far as like fungicides to use on your lawn, I'll give you a good, great example here, right? If you go to the store and you go to the fungicide insecticide section, like you've got, um, you've got Caravan. This is a combination fungicide and insecticide product. It's a pretty good product, it's decent. Um, but as far as a better option is to use a standalone insecticide like a Celeprin because it, it controls more stuff, it's a better, um, product from a standpoint of not damaging insects and pollinators that we care about. And then from a standpoint of a fungicide, Headway is a better product. So can you use Caravan? Well, can it work? Can it work okay and produce a decent result? If all you care about, for example, are grubs? Yes, yes, it can work. But if you want the best the best result, you you tend to get that from, from decoupling the products by using a standalone fungicide, or in the case of, of, of Headway, it's two fungicides in one, but they're both fungicides, and then using a standalone insecticide product by itself. So we for that reason, weed and feeds, I'm just not I'm not a huge um, not a huge fan of them. I, I mean they do serve a purpose, especially for people that, that aren't really in their lawns or they're looking for something just to, you know, like um, you know, a, 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 something that's better than nothing. But if you're really trying to optimize things, you tend to do better by separating your herbicides and your your fertilizer. That's that's what I am um, a fan of doing because what, what you can also find too um, with this is that as far as um, say you do a soil test, right? It's it's more challenging to find a weed and feed product that has the correct makeup of NPK for what your soil needs than it is to find a standalone fertilizer that has the right amount of NPK and other nutrients that your, that your soil needs, right? So if in, in general, in my opinion, better to separate them. I, I, I'm not a, not a huge fan of weed and feed products. I'm not sure if Spectra is another weed and feed product or something similar, but I would, um, you know, again, if, if it's, you're, asking, you're asking my opinion, I'm an expert on my opinion, I would use two separate products if at all possible. You're gonna get a better result um, and you're gonna, and ultimately, 
uh, you're gonna have more control over what you're putting into your lawn if you if you take that approach. So, so hope that helps, Harpers. If you need anything else, let me know. Great question. All right, next up we have Kenneth Sherrill. He says, "Good evening, Ron. Hope you have a great show. Thanks so much, Kenneth. I'm, I'm definitely gonna be a lot better than it was gonna be if it happened uh, than if we had the show say on a Wednesday, because I've got my internet back, which is uh, which is a good thing. Very happy about that." Very, very, very happy about that. So guys, I wanna show you guys, as far as um, new toys, new announcements, it's, it's a very small thing. It's not, not that big a deal, but you guys know, as a lawn care nerd, any new equipment is always something to celebrate, right? So for the last year, I've been having the, the I have my Verticutter, my Soro Roller, like the aerating um, cartridge that comes with the outlet, and this, the Turf Rake or Scarifier in the boxes that they shipped in on the garage, right? Taking up space in the garage. So this week, I finally, got this bad mamma jamma. Now listen, I know if you're not a lawn care nerd, you're gonna be like, what am I looking at here? What's the big deal? But look at that, that is all kinds of sweet. Look at that, you got my, my turf right there on the top. I got my uh, my sorrel roller or um, my aerator, my, my solitine aerator there in the middle. And then finally, the piece de resistance, the verticutter at the bottom, really nicely organized, takes up far less space than it did before. And you know, I realize it's a small thing, but I am very excited about it. I've been waiting a long time to get one. So, uh, so yeah, so there you go. Highly recommend it as far one of those, if you have a bunch of cartridges uh, for your outlet or whatever more you have, because it does save a lot of space and it looks kind of cool, right? It looks cool. Your buddies come over and be like, hey man, you wanna check out my, uh, my cartridge stand? It looks pretty sweet. I gotta put a sticker on it. It's not done yet, but it's, it's getting close. I gotta, I gotta make sure I label it up nicely. All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, evening everyone. I see a lot of you have been busy this week. Yeah, Robert, you're not the only one, man. See, the thing is you've been raising the bar. You know, you're showing everyone first your super low um, heights of cut and your prism gauge. And you see Mary J and Papa Mo's Low are coming for you, man. They're coming for you. You see, they sent me pictures too. They are out there uh, out there putting the work in, working on their lawns. So uh, yeah, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta keep the game up and keep your game going, man. These guys are not, uh, are not they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not uh, waiting on you. Um, Todd, so you sent me, you said a video of the sand. Um, the video did not, like like, it, like emailing a video is not gonna work out. What I got is like a zero byte file, so the video didn't come across. Um, like if you have like a OneDrive or I don't know, Dropbox or something, you can put it on a Google Drive and you wanna send me a link to that, I could probably download it that way, but emailing it is not gonna, is not gonna work. What I got is a blank, is a blank file from you. But also, Todd wanting to also show Robert that he's not messing around, that he's in it to win it. This is uh, his lawn after, you know, in the middle of top dressing. Looks like he's putting, looks like it's being laid down there is what I'm seeing in that picture. And uh, next up we got um, a street shot. You know, this is, this is what you call this picture. This is the neighborhood domination picture. This is, he wanted to get the angle of what the neighbors when they're driving by, this is what they see. So they realize, you know what? I'm not messing around. I wanna make sure the angle is good. They can see that I am, I'm taking what already looks like a really good lawn and I'm covering it in sand because I'm gonna make it even that much better. So appreciate the pictures, Todd. Robert, you know I'm, messing, I'm just messing with you, but you see that's the good thing, man. When you put when you put it out there, when you show all the cool stuff that you're doing, you raise the standard, man. Everyone, everyone else has got to step up their game to uh, to, to make their lawns look really good too. So Mary, Papa Mo's low, and uh, Todd, and Robert, thank you guys so much for the pictures. Appreciate you guys sending them in. Makes it gives me some fun stuff to show off to everyone, and uh, it's it's always always great time. Always a great time. So. All right, next up is No Name. He says, hey Ron, and fellow lawn enthusiasts, I will miss the first part of the show, but the lawn is finally getting some rainwater. Yeah, man, we got some rain here. It wasn't supposed to be very much. Um, it was supposed to be very much rain uh, today. It was really supposed to rain Monday, but we got some today, but I'll take it. You know, free water, can't beat it, man. You know, running irrigation uh, adds up. So whenever you get free water this time of year, uh, by all means take it, which is another reason why guys and gals, if you're gonna do top dressing, like this is a great time of year to do it because we're starting to get the heat so the lawn recovers faster, but also you get that free rainfall to water the uh, the leveling mix or whatever you happen to be using in. So that's why I'm a huge fan of top dressing uh, this time of year, it's just less work. I mean, if you ever top dress a lawn in June, you'll thank me that you did it like in late April, early May. It's a lot more fun to do it this time of year than it is in the middle of summer. All right, next up is Tony Israel. He says, let me see here. He says, is, is there a visual difference between Tiff Tough and 419 Bermuda? Once established, if side by side, will you be, be able to distinguish between the two? Uh, to my eye, yes. So I find that, I mean, they both look great. They both look great. Uh, Tiff Tough, 
Um, Color-wise, looks a bit darker to me than 419. 419 looks great, um, but the but Tiff Tough and from a color standpoint looks a bit darker to my eye than um, than Tiffway 419. Real Rollers, Real Roller Turf Park, the the grass plot that is furthest away from the building is Tiff Tough Bermuda, and again, it's a great looking grass, great color. Uh, the leaf is uh, is pretty fine. I, I want to say the leaf on Tiff Tough. It, that's that's close. Tiff Tough might be a bit finer than um, 419, but the biggest difference between the two of them, to my eye, is that uh, the Tiff Tough is a bit darker in color. So if you're asking this to ask, can you mix Tiff Tough and 419? I would not. Like if you know that your line is truly 419, I would do 419 sod um, or plug the existing sod you have into whatever areas you're trying to fill in. Um, or if your lawn is Tiff Tough, I would get more Tiff Tough sod or plug your existing sod into the areas you're trying to fill in. Um, I would not mix and, and match. So to me, they look different color-wise. Um, but I also, here's the thing, I've never seen them together. I've never seen them like right side by side, but I looked at, I, I know what Tiff 419 looks like because that's what like all the lawns around here are. Um, and I've, I know what Tiff, Tiff um, I know what 419 looks like and I know what Tiff Tough looks like because that's what the Real Rollers Turf Park is but I've not seen them like right next to each other. But I imagine that the Tiff Tough is gonna be a little bit darker. So for that reason, if you're asking this, like the, the, the deeper part of the question is, should I, can I mix them? I would recommend against it. If you're a picky person and care about the, your grass matching. So just something to, to keep in mind. No Name says, let's get those likes up. I appreciate that, No Name. Thank you for leading the charge. Let's definitely get the likes up. We got 143 people in here right now and only 106 likes. Surely we can do better. Mm -hmm. Surely, 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 surely we can do, we can do better. Um, let's see here. Uh, Faisal Khan says, don't do sand top dressing unless you're willing to keep up like Ron. Otherwise, in next two seasons, your lawn will turn into barren sand spots. Mm, I don't know about that, Faisal. I mean, a lot of people that I know that, um, that top dress with sand and their lawn do not turn into uh, barren sand spots. Um, the only parts of my lawn that are that are consistently consistently are are thin or are, are a little bit bare is a, there's a spot on each side of my patio outside, and that's where there's a window in front there. And I think what the problem is is there like the sun reflects off of that, and it's it think it's a heat problem in that one area because for years that that there's that one spot that the grass is always always like a little eh, like a ten inch. Um, uh, area where the grass just is always a little bit thin, a little bit uh, thinner in that spot. But everywhere else in the lawn is fine. Um, there's lots of neighbors around here that have done top dressing with sand, and most of them do it one time and never again, and their lawns don't turn bare or barren. So I, I'm not sure, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I'm not sure what you mean as far as, um, as far as like in a couple of seasons, your lawn will turn uh, barren and sandy because that, that, I have not seen that to be the case. Perhaps you have, but I have not seen that to be the case. And, and I look at a lot of lawns and I've seen, I've done my fair share of top dressing. But um, but I will say, I agree that, you know, if you can, using a blend of sand and compost is my is my preference. I prefer to do that versus using just 100% sand. Um, you know, I, I think that's just, you're, you're, you're out there on the lawn. I think you're gonna get a, you may as well add some organic material to the soil profile as well while you're out there versus just doing uh, 100% sand. So on that, we uh, we definitely agree, it sounds like. All right, Higgy Pop is up next. He says, uh, happy Friday, Ron. I'm here and coming. I'm still waiting on warmer temperatures. It should be there soon, uh, Higgy. I mean, you're not that far from me. And if you look at the, the forecast, it's gonna be, can I pull it up here really quick? Can I do that? Do we have the technology to make that happen? I think we do. I think we do. Uh, can I show the 10 day? Um, I'm not sure for the weather channel. Like my phone shows the, my phone shows the highs and the low. I would think the weather channel would do that as well. Yep, it does. Okay, cool. So this is the weather for Gainesville, Georgia. And if you look here, you see the low is 58, which is yeah, low 58, um, high of 72. And we'll just look at the lows, because the lows are really what matters. 58, 62, 64, 64, 61, 59, 60. So you see, we're in the 50s and 60s from here on out. And then the highs are looking lovely, looking gorgeous. 70s and 80s, right? So we're, we are definitely in go season. If you're in coming, you're not, you're like, I don't know, 20 minutes from me, not even that far. So, um, so you're you're going to be seeing the same temperatures as this. So we the, the cold snaps that we we had here in the month of April appear to be behind us. It's going to be you know hot weather from here on out. So the lawn is really going to take off. So I would not uh I wouldn't worry too much. Um, I'm Higgy. It's 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 coming your way. You wanted to mow a lot? 
You wanted mowing? You wanted warm weather? Well, you're about to get some warm weather. It's about to, it's about to, to hit in full force. It's about to hit in full force. All right. Uh, next up, we got uh, the Phantom. It says, what's up, Ron? I'm getting a lot of sand coming in for my green. Looking forward to that. That sounds like fun. Very cool. So you got, you're, gonna, you're building a golf green. Is this for, for work at a course or something or for at home? Either way, sounds like a lot of fun. Albert Jefferson is up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron and all. What's going on, um, Albert? Hopefully you're doing well. Then we got Mary J. She says, thumbs up, Ron. I sent pictures of my recent top dressing and aeration project. Very excited for the outcome. I got the pictures, Mary. Thank you so much for, um, for sending them over. And I showed everyone. See, the entire world has now seen the fruits of your labor. How awesome is that? And you got to keep us posted because you know you, you you sent us the before, you sent us the during, you sent us the kind of after. You got make sure, once it's all recovered, we got to see we got to see when it's all done. And, and you know, of course, you know, if for me, you want my picture, you want my my opinion on how to how to you know when you're gonna send your show your vanity pictures for the world. You know, after a fresh mow, that's when you want to take those pictures. Make sure the stripe action is on point, get the angle just right, make sure the sun's in the right part of the sky. Take your picture, send that in, and we will show that to everybody as far as your before and where you are now. So, uh, so again, thanks again for sending the pictures in. I really, I really do appreciate it. All right, Todd Hickey, same thing. He sent you some before and after pictures of the recent top dressing project to your email. 11 yards rented, top dressing machine, but manual shoveling. <laughs> it wasn't, it was worth it. Eastern uh, North Carolina, Bermuda. Yeah, Todd, I think you sent me... I think I already showed that, yeah. So, so yeah, we showed the pictures of your, of your, um, your lawn. 11 yards... Dude, bless your heart. Um, so the top dressing machine, so you have the top dressing machine for spreading it and we can kind of see that, I think that's here. You can tell that this, that looks like an earth and turf machine. Like I've, when I've done my lawn, that's what it looks like. The tracks that it leaves. I can see it's doing it's doing the drop, like it's dropping the top of the leveling mix. Um, but then yeah, if you didn't also rent a dingo or some way to load it, yeah man, 11 yards manually shoveling that into the machine is uh, is no joke. Is no joke. It's gonna be awesome though. It's gonna look awesome when it's done. The lawn already looks great. You got you're working with a lot of uh, a lot of material there, so it's gonna look it's gonna look nice, man. It's gonna look nice. All right, we got Devin in the house. He says, "What's up, Ron? Should be another good night of turf talk. I'm gonna do my best, sir. Do my best not to disappoint. Hopefully, you're doing well. Uh, if you guys know Demir, uh, Devin was on two weeks ago. Was it last week? Last week or the week before? Either, I think it was two weeks ago. He was on the live stream, um, where, you know, and, and he is a um, a golf superintendent at the club at Flying Horse in Colorado Springs. So you know, this is how he you know making grass look good is how he um, how he earns a living. So if you want to check out a really cool uh, video, lots of discussion about um, about cool season grass. Look at the live stream from two weeks ago. He was in that one, and uh, it was a, it was a great time. We're definitely gonna have to make that happen again here uh, during the season. Lee Farmer is up next. He says, hey, Ron, got my super sod top dressing mix last week. Started aerating to prep for top dressing. Hit several rocks, so I ended up cutting out sod sections. Found three bricks in my vanity strip. Say it ain't so. Don't you, I don't, I don't want to believe, Lee, that the builders of your property, when they were out, like, you know, building your, 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 uh, your lawn or building your house and, the, you know, there was debris there and they had the contractors come in to come put the sod down, I don't want to believe they just laid sod right on top of bricks. I I don't believe I would I can't be. It must be mistaken. Someone in the middle of the night must have, must have planted that in your uh, in your vanity strip. Yeah, man. Well, at least you found it. At least you got rid of it. At least it's gone. And it's funny, you know, uh, Alex's brother-in-law's friend. It's it's like several several orders down. Alex's brother-in-law's friend uh, had like a big like I guess they they washed out like um. Like they poured excess concrete in the yard. He had like a big chunk of concrete that was um, in several areas in his lawn, which is just not cool. You know, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess it takes more time to get rid of it, but um, but yeah, I mean, it, it makes it creates problems in the lawn. In your case, at least you found it and you got rid of it. So good stuff, Lee. Your uh, your the, your grassroots will will thank you for it, no doubt. All right, Cooper's dad is up next. He says. Um, Seven tons of PJ sand delivered today for the first part of top dressing. You got seven yards and that's just part one. What kind of project are you doing? Wow. Uh, Zoysia with a height of cut of one inch. How low should I cut before the aerate and top dress? Should I hold off on area of, of slow green up because of the temps and shade? Thanks. 
I don't know what part of the country you're in, Cooper's dad. If you were, if you were my neighbor in Georgia, like you're a next door neighbor, and you had zoysia, I would say top dress all of it because the the temps are going to start really taking off here. Um, you saw through the, the forecast, they're going to start taking off here going forward. So the lawn is going to recover uh, faster. You said, how low should you cut before? An inch isn't bad. You could leave it an inch if you want. What I might do is if you could take it down to uh, a little bit more, three quarters of an inch, five eighths, and then lay the sand down, that's fine too. But an inch isn't, isn't, isn't um, too long at all. What you're going to find is this, right? If you get the grass, if the lawn is too long and an inch is not bad. So in your case, you're already good to go. But if you get, once you get past like an inch and a half, what you start to find is um, you can still apply the material, but using a leveling rake to work it in and also identifying the low spots in the lawn becomes more difficult. So one, moving the material around, once it gets much over an inch and a half becomes harder. And then also just visually seeing what are the high and low spots in your lawn becomes harder as the heights of cut goes up. But at an inch, you're fine. If you wanna go down between five eighths and three quarters, that would be good too. Um, but there's no, I mean, if you want to, I wouldn't be mad at you at all if you want to leave it an inch and just do your top dressing uh, where you are, especially since you're going to be aerating. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, and again, if it were, I don't know how much shade you're talking about. You said the areas that are slow to green up, I would still top dress those. And then the shade, how much shade are we talking about? So this is a difficult question to answer without pictures. I mean, I'll, I'll ask you, answer the question this way. The area that is a little bit slower um, to green up and where the and that is shaded in like say later this month, like this time last or um, in late May last year, do those areas look good? You know, in other words, when we get a little bit more heat, a little more sunlight, more temperature, um, do the areas that are shaded do they still grow in really nicely and look and look fine? And they're just lagging behind right now because of you know the, the lack of sunlight, um, or are they always thin throughout the entire season? If the answer is the former, meaning that you know by the end of May they are they grow in nicely, they look great, then go ahead and, and get your top dressing down. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt anything. It might take a little bit longer for that area to recover, uh, but I would I would just do it all, man. I would do it all, especially again if that area historically has always lagged behind due to shade. Um, but then once you get a little bit further into the season, it it bounces up, it come it, recover, it comes in nicely and uh, and you know it looks as good as the rest of the lawn. Then yeah, I would um I would absolutely do it. Um, but yeah, it looks good. Aeration before top dressing. I like that. If you can get a um, like a biosimilant, like Essential G down, get your um, get your fertilizer app, like a granular fertilizer app down before. If you have liquids, like a liquid fertilizer you want to spray, you can spray that prior to uh, to doing all this too. Anything you can do to help the lawn uh, recover is a good thing. It's gonna help. It's gonna help speed up recovery because once you level it, once you put the sand down and you work it in, you're not gonna be mowing. You're not gonna be doing anything in the lawn really for a couple of weeks. So. Um, and so getting some fertilizer down prior to or day of top dressing is not a bad thing. It's something that I, um, you know, that I, I am a fan of. You, if you look at most of my top dressing videos, you'll see, especially when it's a larger project, um, you'll see that I, I tend to always incorporate a biostimulant like Essential G and fertilizer as well as part of that process. So good stuff, man. If you need anything else, let me know. Sounds like fun. F-U-N-N, -N, you know, four letter word fun, but it's gonna be worth it when it's done. It's always worth it when it's done. 45 minutes in, you're gonna be hating life, but once it's done, you're gonna be happy with how it looks. All right, Colin Potter is up next. He says, uh, 24 cubic yards of masonry. If I'm saying this right, is that, do you say 24 cubic yards of masonry going down tomorrow? Colin, I sure hope you work on a golf course. That that If that's your home lawn, bless your heart. Hopefully you've got a team, of people that you that you like a lot, and that then hopefully they'll still be your friends when you're done. Because 24 yards of material, that's a that's a lot, man. That it has to be a golf course or a field or something of some sort. I can't see someone doing that on their uh, on the residential lawn. If so, if so, take pictures. I want to see pictures of this because that's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. You're a bigger man than me. I I wouldn't bite that much off. I would not do that. All right, that, that's the kind of thing that makes you lose friendships. Like if I told Alex, you know, if I told, here's the thing, if I told Alex like two yards of sand this year, he's probably, he's probably gonna stop taking my phone calls. 24 yards of sand, he changed his phone number, he put up like a solid fence, he wouldn't talk to me anymore. Yeah, that's, that, that will ruin friendships, man. So hopefully you've got like some heavy equipment and you're doing it on a course or, and not actually on your, uh, your, your home lawn. All right, so the maestro is back here. He has a question here on Instagram. 
He says, the uh, Turfplex app you recommended on the 1st and 15th sufficient uh, quick release and pre-leveling. Yes, yes. So if you wanted to use Turfplex prior to your leveling work, you could do it um, the morning of. Actually, you don't do it the day before because what's going to normally happen is you're going you're gonna to be out there, you're going to air it probably in the morning and they're going to top just right after that. So spray the lawn with Turfplex the day before if you can and then the following day do your um, your core aeration and then your top dressing and uh, and have fun. So yeah, that's that's uh that that's going to be a great plan. I would just get it down prior to you um you getting into the, the the top dressing and aeration work. And really getting it out of the way the day before is probably a better plan because if you if you do it the day of, then you got to you got first you got to spray Turfplex, right? And then really you want to give it some time to dry. And then you got to go aerate, then you got to top dress. So do I would do your fertilization or the liquids. If you're doing liquids, do them the day before. And, um, and then do your core aeration and top dressing the next day. If you're gonna be doing granular, you could do all that on the same day because that you'd want to apply after core aeration. But liquids before is just fine. Great question, Maestro, that's a good one. DGS1 is here. He says, I'll be glad when the temps are consistently warm. The struggle is real. The struggle is real, man says. Well, if you're in the Southeast, if you're in Georgia, it looks like the, the temperatures, I'm gonna knock on wood here. The temperatures being consistently warm are here. I'm looking at the weather forecast. We know the weather forecast is never wrong. It looks like we're not gonna have any nights in you know below 50 degrees going forward. And we've got plenty of daytime temps in the 70s and 80s, so it is go time. If you've not put down your fertilizer yet, do that. If you have not considered you know, um, incorporating growth regulator into your lawn care program using Primo, like uh, this stuff here, my fun stuff, the happy juice for your lawn, um, by all means. You know, if you, here's the thing, if you were lagging a little behind, you said, you know what, I'm gonna start Primo the middle of the month, you could start on the 15th, 15th of May, and just do, again, just your half half rate, half whatever the month the, the, the uh, monthly rate is for your grass type, you can start on May 15th and just continue that every 15 days throughout the rest of the season until you get into September-ish or so. So uh, so yeah, Primo is, uh, is, good, is good stuff to, to get down. And again, if you're in Georgia, it's going to be consistently warm going forward. Uh, Leaf Farmer is up. He says, this is how he addressed the bricks in his lawn. He says, I dug them out, backfill with super sod mix, replanted the cutout sections, and top dressed them. Sounds like a plan. These areas happen to be areas that I struggle with with thick growth, so I'm crossing my fingers. Yeah, if those areas where the bricks were... I'm not I'm not surprised that you had... The lawn was thinner there. Or there are, they're just growing problems. So there's no reason that that area should continue to struggle going forward. You've eliminated like that barrier that prevents the deep, the roots from going deep. So, you know, once the, the saw that you cut out re-roots in that section, you should be good to go. It's, I'm, I don't, I don't think you're gonna have a problem at all, uh, Lee. You're gonna be just fine. Um, and you say, and you're, you're crossing your fingers that this work will pay off. It will, it will. I mean, it, it has to, you think about it, right? If, if having, if having like, you know, concrete a couple of inches beneath the surface because causing the lawn to thin out, um, removing that brick or concrete or whatever you have in there, plywood, whatever trash is under the lawn, like it can't make it worse. In other words, in other words, worst case scenario, you're gonna be exactly where you are. But what I think what you're gonna find is it's gonna be a lot better. That Those areas are no longer gonna be problem areas. They're gonna look as good as the, the surrounding areas that did not have bricks and concrete and whatever other trash you happen to have in your lawn there. So. Um, you know, fingers crossed, confidence is high, but I think you're gonna be happy with the results once that area recovers from all the work that you've been uh, you've been doing to it. All right, uh, Doug350Z uh, says, good evening, Ron. Is Quinclorac the best for crabgrass or can I use Celsius or Certainty? So for if for, for crabgrass, Quinclorac, especially crabgrass that is a bit more mature, Quinclorac is a better option than Celsius. Celsius will kill young crabgrass, but once you get crabgrass um, that, you know, you know, once it gets, just once once it's, it's more mature, um, that is when conchlorite comes in. But here's the thing, if it gets too mature, like if you, if you decide you're gonna wait until July, right? Late June, July to kill crabgrass, even conchlorite's gonna have a hard time with it. You know what I mean? So like uh, it's one, crabgrass is one of those weeds that get getting rid of it when it's young, when it's uh, get, killing it when it's early is much easier, kind of like most weeds, right? Um, and if it's young, you can use Celsius to to um, to control crabgrass. Um, if it's more mature, that is when quinclorac comes in, and that and really that's really the only thing I ever um, recommend quinclorac for. Well, there's two things. If people say if people um, have um, um, have more mature crabgrass, if you you know were emailing me or messaging me say in like 
June, right? And saying, hey, I've got some crabgrass on my lawn and you sent me pictures of it and it's like, you know, it's like hulked out crabgrass. It's been on, it's been on a bulk program. Um, that's when I say, you know, go with Quinclorac. That's going to do a better job. Um, but if it's younger than... Um, then I'd say, then I would say Celsius. Celsius can uh, can do the trick. I'm a big fan of Celsius for a lot of reasons, guys, because this time of year, or like say even like a couple of weeks ago, yes, when temperatures are cooler, Celsius and certainty take longer to work. But the nice thing about them is that they work over a much longer temperature range safely. So if you, you know, if you, if you get to like, you know, late June, when temps are in the like high 80s, you know, low 90s, you can still spray Celsius and certainty and the chance of it discoloring your lawn if you are using the correct rates are very low in comparison to say using like 2,4-D or Conclorac or, um, um, you know, or, or any, a lot, a lot of other like Dismiss or Speed Zone. Those are great herbicides. Like they work very well. They work quickly, but they're going to discolor your grass. Like your, your, your grass is going to take an ouchie if you spray your lawn with those, especially as temps get warmer, whereas Celsius and Certainty are not going to, are not going to, are not going to do that. There's going to be much less likely for them to do that. So the downside is that they tend to, this time of year when it's cooler, they tend to take a little bit longer to work. But I, I like them for the, the fact that you can, you know, in other words, if someone asked me, hey, I have I have Bermuda or I have Zoysia or I have St. Augustine and I want like a, a herbicide package or so a combination to spray on my lawn, I don't really have any reservations recommending Celsius or Certainty because I because as long as they stick to the rates, it's pretty difficult for them to have a bad result um, using that product as long as they're going to be patient. Once you start getting into speed zone, dismiss, 2,4-D, any of those types of things, you really got to be careful as far as like the the um, the temperatures um, that you that, that, that's going on when you apply that. And because most people don't like, it's, it's hard enough to get people to measure products out properly. If you start telling them, hey, make sure temps are between this range or not hotter than this, and you know, the peak temp's not going to be, you know, higher than 85 degrees, you're just asking um, for, for people to have um, a, a less than ideal result is what I'm, is what I'm trying to say. So... Uh, so yes, if your crabgrass is more mature, quinclorac, this time of year, you shouldn't really have crabgrass in your lawn just yet, if you, unless you live in Florida. Um, for young crabgrass, you can, use, you can use Celsius. So hope that helps, Doug. If you need anything else, let me know. Great question. Next is Michael Lut, uh, Lutke. He says, hello from the Netherlands. All right, man. He says, I did a seed, I did seed my lawn a week ago with um, RPR from Berenbreg. Uh, there was still a bit of old grass in. Will the all will the RPR um, over control? So you're asking if it will take over. I mean, it, it's it's hard to say. I mean, how much of the old grass was um, was? It depends on how much of the old grass was left. What I would imagine is that um, what, what, what you might see, Michael, is if the old lawn, the old grass that you had was a different color then the RPR from Berenbrug is, is the areas where it's still around. You might see a slight color difference. Um, but as far as it taking over, it's not like, um, it, that grass isn't like Bermuda where it's, it's going to spread, um, it's going to spread very aggressively. I think, I think that's a rye grass. I think that's what you're talking about. If it's a rye grass, it's not going to, it's not going to spread and like, you know, choke out other, other grass types, like a, like a, like a creeping grass, like Bermuda or St. Augustine, um, can. So, just wait. I guess wait and see. You know, wait and see is probably going to be your best result. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a cool season. Um, I'm not a cool season guy. I don't have a lot of cool season grass. Uh, I don't have any cool season grass, um, really. But uh, but Baron Brug makes a good product. RPR is one of the the um, the products that that is well reviewed. I hear people that talk about that that particular um, blend quite a bit. So I think you're going to like the results that you get with it. Worst case scenario, if your old grass is, um, you got a few spots where that old grass is still like the, the color's not the way you want it or the texture's not the way you want, you can always remove it. You can always dig it out, remove it. And you can just seed those areas as well too. That's the thing with grass, right? You can always, it's pretty hard to mess up grass permanently. You can always do things to, um, you know, to, to, to correct and address and address problems, especially when you have, um, you're talking about rye grass. So, uh, so hope that helps. Thanks for coming to check in from uh, from the Netherlands. Hopefully you are. I see you're you're looks like you're a Verstappen fan. I don't have my my, uh, my Red Bull shirt when I was the the second time I flew to Tokyo. I don't know how many years ago. It was probably three or three or four years ago at this point. Um, I flew through Amsterdam, and there's like a Red Bull store in uh, the airport, and I got my Red Bull my Red Bull shirt. So my uh, my jersey, but yeah, I don't I don't have it. I always wear this. I don't I don't wear that, but I will wear it on. On Saturday, I grew up in the Netherlands Antilles, so like um, you know, Saint Eustatius is part of is part of the crown, part of the Dutch Commonwealth. So yes, yeah, so I'm still I'm, I'm a Silver Verstappen fan. I like Lewis, but I like I'm a, I'm a big fan of Max. I like to see I like to see a Dutch guy uh, 
It's like to see a Dutch guy win. So, so yeah. Hopefully that helps, sir. I appreciate you coming to stay up really late and uh, and uh, and you know comment on the live stream. And if you need anything else, uh, let me know. Next is Junk Powers. Junk Powers. He says, uh, "Happy Friday! I've got some cool season grass that's creeped into a flower bed." Is it reasonable to use a warm season herbicide to get rid of it so I don't have to use Roundup? Okay, so you have cool you have cool season grass that went into your flower bed. Can you use um, a warm season herbicide to get rid of it so you don't have to use Roundup? Any downsides? Uh, yeah, you could. You could. So, so a couple of things. If you so to answer your question, yes. If you have like rye, well, rye grass wouldn't creep. But if you say you have like a Kentucky bluegrass that's gotten into your flower beds. Um, or let's say, let's say, I guess you've got some rye in there perhaps, you can use Celsius or Katana or Certainty to get rid of it. Um, it's more of an expensive way to do that because remember the, the, the thing about these guys is like the, the secret sauce to like, to like Celsius to Certainty um, is that they're selective, right? Meaning that they will, they will target um, they will target weeds um, in, 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 like say, warm season grass, but not damage that warm season grass in the process. So while you can use these in flower beds, it's, it's kind of an expensive way to get rid of, of cool season weeds. So, I mean, you can if you want. You could use, you could use Celsius or Certainty, either one of those, to, uh, to, to get rid of the, um, the weeds. The thing you got to keep in mind, too, is you don't you can't, you don't necessarily know that the if you have any ornamentals in there so if you have roses or any other flowers that are in there those might not be it might not be safe to spray those with uh, with Celsius either you know what I mean it's it's not going to be as harsh as say glyphosate would be but um well guess what I'm trying to say is that you can't just go and just blast the entire like everything in your mulch beds with with a with a warm season herbicide because not everything in there is going to be you know this might be safe to 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 hit with a with something like Celsius or or certainty even if you could even if you could um, it's a more expensive way to to get rid of um, of the of the cool season grass weed so so if you here's the thing if you already have it and you want to go that route by all means. Um, you know, but if the grass, if the the weeds in, or the, not the weeds, if the the ornamentals or the other plants you have in your flower beds are not safe, in other words, if you can't spray these anyway uh, directly on them without injury, um, or you're going to have to get a piece of cardboard out there and make sure they're shielded when you're spraying whatever your, you know, the the the, the grass that's gotten into the beds, um, why not just use um, glyphosate or use something like um, like this? I'll show you if you go to shop and uh, weed killer. So if you look at like what Celsius and certainty cost versus like what like Roundup Quick Pro cost, I mean, you're talking about 73% um, glyphosate and diaquat. So as far as something that's gonna burn down like pretty much any plant life fairly quickly, um, you know, this is not a bad way to go and it's a lot less expensive than using a selective herbicide for that. So it's really, it's really your call. You asked about the downsides. The biggest downside is means that you're using, an ex you're, you're, going up, you're going at it um, using a product that's more expensive. If you don't care about that, you're just like, hey, I don't really care. I already got this stuff and I, I just want to use it. Then yes, the answer, the answer to your question, yes, you can do that. Um, but it's an expensive way to go about it. Like the only blend that I, you see me use in a mulch bed with a selective herbicide is Fusilade 2 when I'm targeting Bermuda because Bermuda is very difficult to get rid of. Even when you, if you hit it with Roundup, it's going to, even Roundup alone, like one application isn't typically enough to kill Bermuda. But if you mix it with um, Fusilade, that will take care of it, right? Um, if you're talking about like a like a, a rye grass or Kentucky bluegrass, if you smack it with with um with round with a you know with glyphosate and diaquat, that's gonna that's gonna smoke it. That's gonna do a pretty good job. So it's your call. I gave you the pros and cons, uh, my thoughts on it. Um, either either way can work. But if but if you've already got it and you want to use what you've got, then you can. It's just a more expensive way of um of of cleaning up weeds in your in your mulch bed. So, uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, next is Charles and Denton. It says, how much lime should someone apply each season when lower soil pH, when their, their, their soil pH is lower and they have moss? Uh, I have a fescue and Bermuda lawn. We'll try to get the soil healthy and grass growing in place of the moss. So as far as application rates for lime, um, I like to do a range of between uh, 20 pounds per thousand on the low end up to as much as 40 pounds per thousand on the high end. You know, 
typically want to go much higher than that because it's difficult to get it all watered in. So 20, anywhere between 20 to 40 pounds per thousand, depending on um, on where your pH is, right? So if you if you looked at your soil tests and your pH was like, you know, five, eight, five, nine, then the 20 pound, you know, 20 pounds per thousand is going to be enough to kind of bump you up and get you into that, you know, inch in, well into the sixes. If you you're, you look at your pH and it's in the, you know, the low fives or even, you know, fours or low fives, that's when moving more towards that 30 pound per thousand, or that 40 pound per thousand um, for lime is going to be more appropriate to, to help to help raise uh, your, your pH level. So it really depends. It really depends on where you are as far as how much you should be, uh, you should be using, um, you know, in your, in your lawn. Now, as far as, um, to know the, to measure the effectiveness of it, what I would say is if you applied lime, say today, right? So the beginning of May, so May, June, May, June, July, um, the soonest that I would test again to see any kind of movement would be like late August, early September. So three to four months later is the soonest that I would do another pull course again and see to measure the effectiveness of um, of the the Lyme application uh, that you did. So I hope that helps um, as far as um, as far as answering your question, Charles. It really depends on where your, where your pH is. You didn't tell me what your pH was, but you know hopefully that gives you a good range. If it's really low, again like low fives, fours, then go more towards that forty pound per thousand. If it's just just barely outside the Goldilocks zone, you're trying to give it a little bump. Twenty pounds per thousand will work well. As far as which lime to go with, there's, there are two major types. There's calcitic lime and dolomitic lime. On your soil test results, um, it should also have shown you your magnesium levels as well, right? So if your magnesium levels are low, so if they're outside the optimal range, you're going to want to go with a dolomitic lime. So D, the letter D is closer to the letter M in the alphabet. So, if, you know, that's how I remember it. So D is closer to M in the alphabet. So if, if my magnesium is low, go with, do, go with dolomitic lime. That's going to help raise your magnesium levels in addition to uh, pH. If your magnesium levels are fine, then just go with calcitic lime. So that's, you didn't ask about that, but just something else to keep in mind. If you're going to be, you know, applying lime to your lawn, you may as well make sure you're, you know, you're addressing magnesium levels as well too, if you, if that's, there's a problem with that. It may not be in your case. You didn't ask that, but I, I figured I'd just mention it. Just in case, right? Why not? All right, Ravi Patel is up next. He says, hey Ron, thanks for your tips. So on my yard, I have Bermuda in certain spots and they seem to be growing fast. That's good, it's, that's good. It should be doing that this time of year. I think I need a top dress. Any tips? Also, how long will Bermuda take to cover the lawn? Okay, so, um, so if you want a top dress, yes. If you're asking, I mean, you're asking, Ron, if I, you should top dress your lawn, especially if you have a Bermuda lawn, the answer is yes. Yes, you should, you should absolutely should do that. Um, any tips? I've got tons of videos on that. So here's, if you want some tips on top dressing, I got you covered. So there's tons of content on top dressing, but if you want like a good resource, it's not too long to read, that also references some of the videos that, I'm, that I would point you to. If you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to the guide section and then to the blog, which is completely free, you will see the second video that's on there now is called How to Top Dress Your Lawn, A Complete Guide. I try to make this as short as possible um, while making it value packed, talks about the benefits of top dressing, the basics of top dressing, why it's important to do it, the types of blends or mixtures you can use for that, um, the time of year to top dress your lawn. If you're in the Southeast United States, now all the way through mid-July is a good time to do it. Um, different mixes, um, the tools you're going to need, uh, talking about going out and, and cleaning up, um, like, like scalping or lowering your high to cut to get ready for top dressing, incorporating aeration in your top dressing um, um, uh, you know, process, the fertilizer that I would like to use in the right top dress, some tips along that, um, when you should top dress. I mean, just it's, it's all about top dressing. So with all that said, I will send you a link to this on in the chat. You can always go find it on the store if you want, uh, Ravi. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, that, that, um, along with the other videos that you'll, that you can find on, on my YouTube channel, we'll talk all about it. Um, the big thing I would say is this in a nutshell is, um, if you can aerate your lawn prior to top dressing, it's going to help the sand and soil mix better integrate with your existing soil profile. As far as what kind of material to use, I am a fan of using a blend. So if you can get like a 70%, a 70, 30 mix, so 70% sand, 30%, um, uh, organic material or compost that's that is if I, as far as like the if I could if I could top dress lawns with one thing that is what I would use on residential lawns um outside of that if you if, if where you live all you can get is just sand you could you would still aerate you could then go with like a very heavy application 
of, of, a, of a granular um, biosimilant like Essential G, that's gonna satisfy your organic material component and then top dress with your sand um, you know, on top of that. So if you're in Georgia, if you're in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, or Alabama, uh, the stuff that I would recommend is this, this product from Supersod. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the stuff you can find like in places locally, but it is, in my opinion, it is the best stuff you can use for top dressing your lawn. There's not a lot of trash in it. It's um, very, again, not a lot of trash in it. It's a great blend of their 70% 70, 70 USGA screen sand. There's not gonna be any trash in this. And then their soiled cube compost product. So if you're in Georgia or any of the states that I just mentioned, that is what I would use for, um, for top dressing uh, your lawn, for leveling your lawn. And that, this link that I'm putting here in the chat will save you some money off the price that you see on their store. It's called the Level Mix. You'll see they'll have, they'll have just the compost, they'll have, and also have one called the Level Mix. And what you want is a Level Mix. It's, a, it's sand and compost, and it's already blended for you. All you gotta do is convince some of your best friends to come over and help you spread it all out and, uh, and work it into your lawn. So hopefully that video, that, um, that, that blog post helps, and the uh, comment videos help. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. It's a lot of fun, man. Top dressing, it's a lot of fun. It's like F-U-N-N. It's like a four letter word fun, but it's its totally cool and looks the way the lawn looks afterwards makes it completely worth it. And as far as your Bermuda spreading and, and getting, you know, spreading throughout the lawn, as temperatures get hotter consistently, which they are, are now gonna be in, in Georgia, your Bermuda will really take off and, and begin filling in in uh, filling in nicely. So I really wouldn't, wouldn't worry too much about that at all. All right, Cooper's dad, I, okay, I already answered that question. Wesley R says, as you come in, hit the like button. Yes, please do that, guys. You know what, I'm gonna take a sip of my lemonade, and while I do that, I'm gonna put some intermission music on, just, just because we've done it in a while. While you guys hit the like button, if you get, we've got 140 some people in here right now, only 126 likes. You guys hit the like button, it doesn't cost anything at all to do that. It gives me a chance to sip on my, uh, my Aura Palmer. Nom nom, it's good. All right. Next is Trav Smitty. He says, I just installed the Ratio 3 sprinkler system controller. What controller do you use? I would suggest maybe reaching out to them and see if they will send you one. They are awesome. Here's the thing. Everyone that has one of those things tells me how awesome they are. I just have the, just the plain old Hunter. Uh, it's the HydroWise, I think. It's got like a little touch screen on it, but it's like the HydroWise. It, it works great. It's got like the app. I can use it. I can, you know, connect to it on my phone and run irrigation remotely. It works, I mean, it works pretty good for what I am what I like to do, but every everyone that has a, a Ratio, every single person that has one just raves about it. Now, I, I here's the thing. The Hunter does everything that I need, like it runs when I want it to run and it, I can turn it on when I want and it, I mean, it, it does its thing. So I kind of have a hard time seeing how it's gonna be, how the Ratio is gonna be that much better. Like what, like an irrigation controller is only got a couple jobs, right? I mean, I, ideally it needs to run when it's supposed to run. I mean, if it, Here's the thing, if it if it will integrate with the weather forecast and does a better job as far as not running irrigation whenever there is rainfall, like that would be good because I have not found any of the, any of the irrigation controllers that I've ever owned do that well. So if it does a good job of that, that would be a new thing. But, but yeah, I don't have one of those. Everyone that has one of those says how awesome they are, but I don't I don't have one. I don't have one. I may, maybe something to um to, to look into. Maybe something to look into, Trav. Um, all right, so next up is, if you wanna see the one I use, there's a video on, there's a video that I did on it, I think last, not last year, a couple years ago, a couple years ago on, on irrigation controllers. I can see if I can find it, I might, uh, I can, yep, this one right here. Yep, how to upgrade your irrigation controller. So when I show you guys this, I'm probably gonna get a bunch of hate mail saying, why'd you do that when you should've got the ratio? Oh, dude, you're behind the times. I know, I know. So this is uh, irrigation, let me see here. Irrigation controller uh, video. There you go. So that's the controller that I have and you can actually see it being installed there. So next up is TNDC07. It says, last week you answered my question about burnweed. Yes, you nailed it. It is burnweed, not burnt weed. Thanks. And bought the Celsius pack 3,000 square feet, Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, man, no problem at all. Yeah, I, I figured it was, um, but and again, we got to the bottom, but we looked, we checked the label and it is burnweed. It's, I mean, it's an easy, easy mistake to make. I mean, we, we, we figured it out. So that's all that really matters, right? So we're good to go. Uh, let, keep me posted on how Celsius does. Uh, again, the, it sounds like you were just doing some spot spraying. So that, that, um, that single pack, like this guy here, the single dose pack, 
this will um, to treat 2,000 square feet at the higher rates. Um, so yeah, so keep me posted on how it does for you, uh, TNDC. All right, uh, next up we have Tutrilla. He says, happy Friday, Ron and Stripe Action Gang. What's going on, Tutrilla? And next is Alex Ristiano. He says, happy Friday, some germination on my renovation is starting to take place. That's always awesome. You know, the thing is, whenever you plant grass seed, it's always, you always have to wonder. I mean, you, you, you think you did everything right, but all you can do is hope and pray that you get some germination. So when it's actually coming in, it's, uh, it's pretty rewarding. He says, uh, what time can I spray Celsius? I know this has been asked in the past a lot, but I couldn't find it. I would not spray herbicides until you're mowing the lawn, until you're mowing the new grass. So that's what I would say is I, I realize that as part of you doing a renovation project, there's a lot of bare ground, a lot of bare dirt. And because of that, weeds tend to start to become a thing. I would not spray um, herbicides until you've, you've got a couple of mows on the grass because then it'll be rooted in, it'll be established. And then when you spray it, you know, you're not going to take the chance of, of killing off that or injuring that grass that you worked oh so hard to grow. So be a little bit more patience. Um, when you start mowing it, that's when I will look into um, using a selective herbicide like Celsius. And Celsius is a great example. That's, that's a perfect example of, of where, you know, using that on relatively young grass, I would not feel bad recommending that. If you said, hey, I want to use 2,4-D or like dismiss or speed zone, I'd be like, eh, I don't know, man. You're gonna, I'm probably gonna get hate mail because you're gonna spray that and then your lawn's gonna die and you'll be mad at me. So, um, so yeah, Celsius, once you've been mowing it a couple of times and it's, again, it's, it looks like a lawn, then you can take the process of eliminating the weeds. Remember, anytime you're doing renovations, it, like whenever you choose to do something in your lawn, it's also choosing to not do something else, right? So if you decide that you're going to do renovate your lawn, and you're going to do that from seed, which again, I've always said in, much, in a bunch of videos, is hard mode. That's a hard way of doing it. Then ideally, you should not be spraying pre-emergent, applying pre-emergent with, you know, the, the four to five months minimum leading up to when you plan to put seed into your lawn. The downside of that, the, ch the fact that you're choosing to do, to, to do a renovation by grass seed means that you are also going to accept the fact that you're going to have some weed pressure in your lawn because to you, growing the grass from seed is more important than maybe the little bit of weeds you have to deal with. So in this case, now that you've got the grass is germinating, it's starting to come in, let it get established, mow it a few times, make sure it's just, it's looking good, and then you can easily clean up the weeds after the fact with uh, with Celsius or Certainty, depending on what kind of weeds you are dealing with. So just a little bit more patience, and uh, I, I wouldn't sweat it. It's, it's hard to have, every, like most things in life, it's hard to have everything you want always at the same time, all at once. You, you can have pretty much anything you want in life. You can't have everything you want in life. Not at the same time anyway. So uh, just just stay the course, Alex. You already accomplished the hard part, which is getting the grass to grow from seed. I would not want to do anything to to hurt it faster, you know, to, to, to hurt all the hard work you put in. So just give it, give it a bit more time. All right, Travis Mees up next. He says, receive my carbon crit this week as well. Got to get it down. Appreciate the fast shipping. We try, man. Like, I mean, I know how I am. Like once I order something, I want my stuff. So... I, I try to to work with our partners to get stuff shipped as quickly as possible, you know, to to you guys, especially this time of year. I know the season's getting going. You guys are really out there to start working in your lawns. So I don't want you to have to wait any longer than necessary to get your uh, your product. So we do our best to to get stuff shipped as as quickly as possible. So um, so thanks so uh, so thanks so much for that. I'm glad glad to hear that that it's being noticed that you guys are that you guys are liking what we are we're trying to do. All right, Randall Lard is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I got the Humic Max down and it got some rain. I didn't didn't get completely watered in, trying to get it watered in with sprinklers. How long will I have before it goes to waste? Thanks. It's it's not going to go to waste. I mean, if you if it rained, so if you applied Humic Max and then it rained, you're, I mean, you didn't say how much, but it, you're, you're good there. And then if you ran irrigation around your sprinklers, you're good as well too. So it's, it's not going, it's not going to go to waste. It's, it's going to be, you remember the nice thing about fertilizer discussion time, the nice thing about these guys, so we'll go over, switch over to BCAM, is if you look at, you know, exhibit A, this is your traditional fertilizer. A lot of online fertilizers you'll find are this, or what you'll find at like a Home Depot, this is what they look like, that's the pearl size. This is Humic Max, right? So as far as this, having to get into the soil, like of these two, given the size, which you think is gonna get into the soil easier? The answer is this one, right? It's smaller, it's gonna get past the grass, you're not gonna see it like hung up on the, like hung up in your lawn. Like this is gonna get past the grass, get down in the soil much easier than this. So it doesn't take a lot of water to get this down into the soil and begin working. Even better, so we've got exhibit A, exhibit B, so Humic Max, and then you've got the, um, this is the uh, complete, 
uh, complete or stress. This is a, an 80 SGN fertilizer. This is literally a greens grade fertilizer. So you can see Humic Max, that's a 150 SGN in size. It's pretty small. And this is um, the stress or the complete that you see on the golf course lawn. So you see how fine that is. This this really doesn't take very much to get watered in uh, as far as getting into the soil at all, because it's, it's again, it's like almost like a, um, almost like a powder. I can show you as an example, like this is a tip of a pen for reference, right? This is a tip of a pen. You can see the size of a tip of a pen on a, you know, on a traditional fertilizer. It's like a 210 SGN. This is the tip of a pen on Humic Max. So you see how much smaller that is. And then this is the 80, um, I get my face away. This is the 80 SGN. So you can see it got, this is a lot, a much finer product. Um, it doesn't take very much water to get this into the soil and begin working. And for those of you guys on Instagram, typical fertilizer, Humic Max, the stress or complete fertilizer. So both of these are what we are we, what we largely promote and sell on the golf course lawn store in the fertilizer section. It is what I use on my lawn. So I'll say all that to say, Randall, I wouldn't worry about it. You're probably gonna be just fine. You got some rainfall, that likely did the trick and you also ran your irrigation some too, you're gonna be just fine. So there's nothing really to worry about as far as you losing it or going to waste. It's, it's, it doesn't take a whole lot to get that, to get that watered in and to start seeing the benefits of it. All right, so we have a super chat from Mr. Ted Rogers. We've got a couple of down here. Let me make sure I acknowledge, um, um, let me see, is the Notorious in here? I think, I, I thought I saw LG as well too. So I see Luis, I thought I saw um, LG as well. Yep, so first of all, we got LG celebrating um, 16 months, 16 months of, of channel membership. I just heard that sweet Tango Bolero, therefore I've been activated. We gotta clap it up for that, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a member of the channel, LG. That's pretty awesome. And then Todd with a super chat. Super chat received. He says, "Bro, thank you for your videos. Thank you for watching them. Because I mean, it's you know the only thing that'd be worse is you know I put all that all that hard work into making the videos and no one watched them. It would hurt my feelings, you know. So I'm I'm glad that you're getting value out of it, and that um you know they're helping you get your your lawn better. If you have any ideas for new content or things that you want to see, I've got some some content that I've got here in the hopper. I'm just waiting for some from some stuff to show up to begin filming it." Um, there is going to be some videos on verticutting and turf raking and that kind of stuff this year as well too. But in some other, some other, some new stuff that that, that I haven't done before, I'm just waiting for the stuff to show up for me to be able to start shooting and uh, shooting that stuff and putting it out on uh, on the, the the channel. So hopefully that um hopefully that you're going to enjoy that as well, uh, Ted. And I appreciate all the love and support. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. And LG, uh, just for you, while I go back and go back up and find the last where I left off. I'll put a little bit of Tango Bolero on for you, just because it's you. I know how, how needy you are. I know, I know you can be, so we'll put some, some Tango Bolero on. All right, let me see. I left off here. All right, so Tom V, Kentucky Bluegrass Lawn from Northern Illinois. Nice, Tom. Cool. I like it. I dig it. And then LG says, I... <laughs> He says, I'm down with an alcohol infused live stream. Tis the story of my life. Uh, man, you know what? You know, I, I thought about doing one, um, doing a live stream for like Golf Course Academy members or people that are like channel members where we can just cut up and hang out and just do like a private one. Um, you know, like a, like a, more like an ask me anything type live stream, a little, just a little less formal. But um, I spend so much time working as it is already. And no one really said, yeah, we'd be totally down to do that. So I was like, okay, no one wants it. I'm good with it. I'm not going to really get out there and you know try to create more work for myself than I'm already doing. So that's why I didn't push it. All right. Um, next we have, let's see here. Uh, uh, next we have Casey Bark uh, Baker. He says, I live in North Texas and I can't seem to find anything close to super sod soils. I'm in North Texas. Any suggestions on a mix? Everyone seems to have mason sand or sandy loam out here. Loam is in, um, if you can find a, um, a loam, that's not, that's not bad uh, either, Casey, as far as, um, as far as top dressing. But I mean, yes, you can't find super sod, but if you can, if you can find, um, um, if you find a, a quality source of sand, if you can find a quality source of a blend, like just, you know, it could be, it could be, um, sand and then loam or, or, um, or, or sand and compost, as long as this doesn't have a lot of debris and trash in it, then it, that could work as well too. You know what I mean? So I, there should be someone in your area. If you, you Google in your area, like lawn leveling, 
um, you know, lawn leveling uh, supplies or even like our, our top dressing services, which you might find too, is you, if you find a service that does top dressing, some of them, you might be even ask them to say, hey, listen, will you guys sell top, like your leveling mix? Can I, can I buy some of that from you or whatever, you know? Um, that's an option. You could also call your local golf courses and ask them where they get their material from because obviously the stuff that they're using on the course, they're getting it from somewhere, right? Uh, so you can, that's another option as far as finding good material you can use for top dressing your lawn, like call the, go, the local golf courses. So between those, between asking a lawn leveling service um, or your local golf course, if you can get them to talk to you, they, you should be able to figure out, find some material that can be suitable for, um, for a lawn leveling for top dressing type work. So, uh, so yeah, so, I mean, Superside is great stuff, but it's not the only stuff you can use for top dressing, right? But it's, but if you, if you can get it, it's, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. All right, so we got a couple of super chats. Let me run down here and grab these really quick. The first one is from Christian Havart. Ha Harvart. It says, first of all, super chat. Let's do that. He says, good evening, Ron. It's been a while since I've been on the live. Any fertilizer uh, regime advice for Kentucky bluegrass, rye, Monaco combination? So you you got Kentucky bluegrass, rye, and Bermuda. Uh, combination experiment here in Nashville. It's looking really good. Pure lap 36 in the back. Okay. Uh, yeah, so here's the thing. The same fertilizers that I'm using on Bermuda, you can use on your rye and your Kentucky bluegrass. So I'll show you really quick. If you go to the golf course lawn store, uh, Christian, you go to shop and the lawn fertilizer section. Um, so for Bermuda, the, the amount, the fertilizers are all the same that you can use, but as far as the amount that you're going to want to feed the lawn with, that is what, well, that's what will be different. So any of these, um, Humic Max, if you don't need if you don't need a fertilizer with phosphorus in it and you're not looking for a high potassium fertilizer, this would be a good option. This is the one that I use more than any than any of the others on my lawn. So Cumic Max is primarily what I roll with. That's what I'm gonna be using throughout the rest of the season until September, October, and at which point I will be applying this, the Stress 12024. So these are both great options for, um, for regular feeding. What I would say for with you having cool season grass in the summertime when it gets hotter, when those grasses tend to see a lot more stress, the, the, the Stress 12024 is a good option because this is a bit more slower release than Humic Max is. Um, and it also has a higher potassium component. So as far as helping your cool season grass manage the stress in the middle of the summer, this is gonna do a better job of that than, um, than Humic Max is. So you could start with Humic Max now in June, June, July, you could roll with the stress for a couple of months. And then in August, you could transition back to, um, to Humic Max if you, if you wanted to. So the complete also great fertilizer, this one really is more if you, if you need phosphorus. So if you, your soil test results say that you need a phosphorus, um, addition to your soil, that is when I would, um, incorporate the complete into your program, but Humic Max or the stress, either one of those are going to work great on your rye, Kentucky bluegrass Monaco blend or on your lap 36 uh, lawn in the in the back lawn too. Either any of any of these will work well. Um, the rates that you see on the bag, you're gonna see two rates. So, so it's gonna, so Lebanon lists a rate or a spreader calibration setting for putting down half a pound of nitrogen um, per month. And then another spreader setting that's a bit higher for nine tenths of a pound of nitrogen. With you having cool season grass, I would lean more towards that half pound nitrogen per month um, um, calibration. Even on my Bermuda, that's what I do. I use the I put down half a pound of nitrogen per month on my lawn from granulars, and then I that leaves me some headrooms to still spray liquids on top of that. So I would go with um, the lower the lower um, options. So I'll, I'll show you here really quick. So on the label, let's pick like Humic Max for example. If you look at this label here, right? So it has like your Earthways, your Lebanon Turf, your Acupros. So you see there, you've got a setting for um, 0.9, so a tenth, nine tenths of a pound of nitrogen. And then another one here for half a pound of nitrogen. I would lean more towards this side, the right side of the spreader calibration. Um, and then the, the ones that we have here on the store, as far as these spreader settings for uh, the, the, the Scots, um, the Echo, these all are for the half pound rate, all right? So if you wanted to go heavier, you would just go up, uh, you know, to a little bit on your spreader to, to go to put down heavier than that. But the ones for the, the, the settings on the, on the store for the Scots Echo um, spreaders, assume you're applying half a pound of nitrogen um, per, per month. So hope that helps. Those are, those are great fertilizers. They, the nice thing about them is that they're not just fertilizers. They all contain humic acid, 
the stress and the complete also have a kelp addition as well. So it's a, like a biostimulant and a fertilizer in one. So whichever one you choose, you're gonna have a great result with them. You're really gonna like how your lawn looks using those. So hope that helps. Thank you so much for the super chat. Next up, we have Cedric G. Super chat received. He says, um, Big Ron, where did you rent the dingo and sand spreader when you and Alex top dressed? Um, a couple years ago. It is much easier process using the equipment. Yeah, so where I got it from is from um, Keystone Rental in Duluth, Georgia. So if you know where, I'm not sure if you're in Georgia, Cedric, but where Peachtree Industrial and 120 intersect, there's like a quick trip there. If you turn right, if you turn, not right, depends which way you're coming from. If you head west on down 120, about a quarter of a mile down on the right, you're gonna see Keystone. So just call them, uh, ask for Dan, tell them I sent you. He'll probably charge you double for that. But yeah, they have a package that has the dingo, the aerator, and the top dressing machine, and it all comes with a trailer so you can all tow it home and tow it back. So that's that's where I would um that's where I would go to get one. And I, if I, I might be able to find it uh, for you here really quick. I'm not sure if I have the number. Just, just look up Keystone. Look up look up Keystone um, Keystone in Duluth. Like they're the only. They're the only ones, and that's, uh, you know, they'll be able to get you squared away. If I can go really fast, I might be able to find it, but no, I can't. I don't have it in the description of this video. Just look that up. You'll, you'll find it. They're easy to find. And uh, yeah, that that's, it is a lot easier to use that package than it is to do it manually for sure. So thank you so much for the super chat. Based on that, what I'm seeing here, you are now the show sponsor. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Cedric G, you have dethroned Louise for the time being and save your name and lights, whatever that means to you. Thank you so much. We have another super chat um, from uh, Ben Raham. Super chat received. He says, uh, glad to see you in IG. Um, sent, sent pics of your awesome, uh, sent pics of your awesome lawn. My grass is facing challenges this year to say the least, but I'm not giving up. Good, because if you don't give up, it can get better. Seeded Bermuda is not for the faint of heart. I keep saying that. Here's the thing, I did a video on seeding on seeding Bermuda grass. And in the video, I try, pretty much I spent half the video trying to tell you why it's a terrible idea to do this. I'm like, listen, you're gonna spend a whole lot more money in water than you can ever imagine. It's gonna, you know, it's it's not gonna all grow in evenly all over the place. And it's just, you know, you, people look at the gra the price of, of, a, of a bag of grass seed and say, oh, this is way cheaper than doing sod. I'm just gonna go with the seed. And it's it's not the entire, that the, the price of the grass seed is, is a small part of the price of admission for trying to grow Bermuda grass, um, to establish a Bermuda grass lawn from seed. So if for like 99% of the people, I would say sod is the way to go, especially now that Tahoma 31 is a thing. Like it's a really nice looking grass and it is available in sod format. So I would I would lean towards that. But, uh, but yeah, I'm glad that you uh, are liking the content that I'm posting on Instagram. If I can help with anything else, let me know. And just keep going, man. The biggest thing is if you if you keep working at it, if you keep looking, working at it with a with an eye to improve what you're doing, it's really hard to not get better if you if you do that, right? So your lawn, wherever you are, your lawn can get better if you just consistently keep working at it. Like what you what you are seeing when you look at in the way where is it now? When you look at how that lawn looks, you say, "Oh man, it looks incredible, man!" You know, it'd be really nice to have a lawn like that. What you're seeing, that's like that's eight years coming up on nine years worth of work. That's a lot. I mean, it's not that didn't happen overnight. You know what I mean? You look at like really nice lawns. They unless you got a lot of money. To do to, to throw at it, it's really difficult to make to make to go from like horrible to hero. Um, I mean, at least to the level of to where my lawn currently is, um, super super quickly. You can go in three months. You can completely transform a lawn to where you don't even recognize it. Like if you have not seen the um, the fix my ugly lawn series that we did on Alex's lawn, like that was filmed over the course of fourteen or fifteen videos, and so like the, a little over three months, and you saw where his lawn started and where it ended up in the course of like a a, a season over a summer. And it looks, it's, you don't even recognize it. So you can still make a lawn look really awesome in, you know, in just the course of just a couple, a couple of months. But then that extra, that, uh, that final 10%, you're going to spend a lot more money, a lot more time. And you, you quickly start getting into the point of diminishing returns. And to, 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 to achieve that, it does look better, but it definitely gets to the point of diminishing returns, um, you know, once you really start trying to get like every little bit out of it. You know what I mean? But um, but yeah, just start where you are, man. Enjoy the process. It's a journey. The fact that your lawn is never perfect is part of the fun, right? There's always something to work on. So thank you for the super chat. I really do appreciate all the love and support. 
All right, let me scroll back up and find out where I left off. Hopefully, it sounds scratchy to me in my audio. Hopefully that's not doing that for you guys on the live stream. Is, does the audio sound funny when I'm playing? Like, does, this, does the audio sound like it's um, like a broken record? Hopefully it's just on my end. All right, um, so I will pause that. And then we have a couple of questions here in Instagram I need to go to. So let me find out where I left off first. I am there now, we're good to go. All right, so over to the gram. All right, so first up we have Shauna553. She says, I am late, just got done mowing, aerated Monday and wanted to die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like, you don't want to die, but it's, it's, uh, it's a workout. It is a workout. Now, Shauna, th there is a, a, a way you can go about doing it. There's a technique. If you're going like back and forth in your passes, like making a pass in one direction and then you know, turning it around and dropping it down and going back the other direction, that's hard mode. What I would say is take the NASCAR approach. So just go fast and turn left, like just make like overlapping ovals. That's an easier way to do it because the machine is only going forward the entire time. It does just, just as good a job aerating the lawn and it's, it's, it's less work to do it that way. So if you're worried what I'm wondering what I'm talking about, um, or those of you that are watching this are wondering what I'm talking about, there is a blog post that we did, I think it was last week or the week before, a couple weeks ago, um, on aerating your lawn, how to core aerate your lawn. And the video that's in here, this one that's linked in here, shows that process. So if you guys are interested in like a quick read on how to aerate your lawn or some tips of that, that you know how I like to do it. Again, it's not the only way to do it, but it's like one, it's the way I like to do it and it gets good results and makes it less work. Then, um, then check this, uh, then check this out. Okay. Thanks Ted um, for confirming that my audio is not all scratchy. It's just on my side. That's good. And then Shauna, although it's not useful now because you already did it, at least you can pass this on to friends, family, uh, or you could just let them struggle and be like, Hey, yeah, you know, after they're done and say, Hey, here's this video of this guy showing a way that, that it could be a whole lot less work. Just depends on how, how mean you are you know, as far as whether you want to let them know a, a way of making it easier. But yeah, it's done now. You're good to go. And you're saying, uh, you said, if I have to, if I have to mow Bermuda at two inches due to scalping with a rotary mower, how low do you think I could go with a California trimmer with a grooved roller without scalping? Thanks, Ron. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. You will be, you'll likely be able to go a bit lower than two inches, maybe an inch and a half. The reason why, Shauna, is because um, if you take, let's just use this as an example. The reason why a real mower with a front, with a groove, with a roller on the front of it scalps less than a rotary is if you take this soil test kit, right? The My Soil Test Kit, this is gonna be our rotary mower. And with a rotary mower, you've got, back up here, you've got a wheel on each corner, right? So it's got four wheels that are supporting the mower. If the mower happens, if the right front wheel happens to go into a dip into a low spot, and remember you're spinning this big machete, this big cutlass on this big spinning blade under here. If the front front wheel dips in, the entire disc will dip in and it's gonna you know scalp and, and, and cut it, create a low spot in the lawn. Um, so that's why scalping with a rotary or is a lot more prevalent at depending on how bumpy your lawn is at, 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 um, at heights that aren't really that low. Than you than a real mower because with a real mower what happens is you got like you have really two major points of contact right you got the drum in the back well the, with the trimmer you have you have the t tires you have the rear propulsion drum and you have the roller across the front so let's take the same example now again right so this is your California trimmer now so like I've just I've just a, a Thanos snap this is now a California trimmer you got this big roller across the front of it and you got the propulsion drum in the back. Now, when we hit that low spot, because the weight of the mower is spread across the entire, like a larger area, even if this area right here is lower, the entire mower isn't gonna dip. It might drop a little bit, but it's not gonna drop nearly as much like a, like a rotary. Rotary is gonna really drop right in, it's gonna scalp your lawn. A, because the, the weight is spread across this, this larger area, if, if just right here is low, the rest of this will largely carry the weight of the mower. So your, your chances of scalping are gonna be a lot less. And if it does scalp, it's gonna be less aggressive than what you're gonna find with a rotary. So you should be able to mow lower. How much lower? I, it's hard to say, it depends on how bumpy your lawn is. I, I would say conservatively, you should be able to go to an inch and a half. If you're doing two inches with the rotary, you should be able to get to an inch and a half with a California trimmer with the front roller um, without, without too much trouble. So. Hope that helps. Uh, great question. If you need anything else, let me know. Good job and get your aeration done. Awesome, awesome work. All right, I think I'm all caught up on Super Chats. And now we are back to YouTube and a question from Chase Thompson. He says, 
Hey Ron, aerated last week, Todd wrestling with Santa Campos, tomorrow mix, bless your heart, you know, may the force be with you. This year was May 4th, may the 4th be with you. Um, I put out 1776 uh, for it down after aeration. Should I hold off on playing PGR and my turf plex mix before I top dress? So if you want the lawn to recover faster, yes. Like don't use growth regulator if you want the lawn to recover as quickly as possible. You can still spray turf plex if you want. Like that, that's something I would say you can go ahead and do. Um, but if you want the lawn to recover as quickly as possible, do not spray, um, don't spray Primo. I mean, it'll still recover, but it's gonna take longer. So you already got a granular for it down, that's good. If you want to spray turf plex as well, that's also fine. Just save the the Primo, the, pre, the addition of a, a Primo of growth regulator until the lawn is recovered from the uh, from from the leveling work that you're going to do tomorrow. That is what I would uh, how I'd go about it. And then you're saying because of the additional nitrogen in the compost mix. Uh yeah, yes and no. No, not not really. I mean, I mean there is, but it's not it's that's very slow release nitrogen. It's not going to be that's not going to I mean turfplex literally um you're going to get a, you're going to get a response in a couple of days from that. Compost is still takes still takes a, a quite a bit longer to for the for the uh, nitrogen in it to become available than like a liquid fertilizer will. So and again, with Turplex, if you're spraying it at the rate that I recommend, you're going to be putting down like a tenth of a pound of nitrogen, not very much. If you wanted to, if you want to be extra, ultra conservative, if you're worried about like the compost component, the nitrogen in the compost, which again, I wouldn't be worried about it, but if you want to be concerned, you should want to be really, really conservative. The rate for Turfplex is six ounces per thousand. What you can do is just, just spray it at like half that, like spray it at like three ounces per thousand. And then you're going to be putting out like 0 0.05 uh, pounds of N um, you know, on your lawn. So then, you, you know, you're really back in that rate down. So go, go out at like three ounces per thousand with the turf plex and you'll be, uh, you'll be just fine. So hope that helps. Sounds like a fun, like a fun uh, project. Hopefully you have some help to do the top dressing. Top dressing by yourself is not, is it's a lot of work and having just one more person makes a really big difference. So hopefully you're getting some help to, um, to do that. Um, we got Madam, uh, Madam Reed saying hi. What's going on, Madam Reed? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you as always. And then uh, Ahmad Damra is up next. He says, Ron, can we apply a fungicide just as a precaution? Yes, I. you can. I highly recommend that you do so. Um, it says, I don't know if I have fungus, but I have some browning ears and I don't know whether it's a fungus or because of the sand left over I leveled with. Uh, I mean, if it's a ring, if it looks kind of like, do I have Todd's? Yeah, I still have Todd's fungus problem. If it looks like that, where it's like a ring, where there's grass in the middle and there's a ring around it, that looks, that's, what's very common in Bermuda this time of year is a large patch. So if it looks like that where it's a ring, it, it could be large patch. Um, if it's just a big area where it, the grass hasn't grown through yet, it could be sand left over from, uh, from your leveling works. It could be either one of those. Either way, the answer to your question is, would I apply fungicide this time of year as a, as a precaution? Yes, like I've already done mine. So yes, I absolutely would do um, do that. And as far as options for fungicide, Ahmad, I will show you two. Um, I'll show you three, but really two is what I would say. The two that I, I, are my favorites are what I'm, I'll really recommend. So if you go to shop on the store and then to um, fungicide insecticide, as pure fungicide products, you have two options. If you like liquids, go with Pillar SC. If you like granular, go with Headway G. They both have two um, active ingredients. So as far as like the results you're gonna get, they're both gonna work um, work well. Um, with, with Headway, with the granular, you're gonna wanna apply that at two pounds per thousand. That's a good preventative rate. If you're gonna use Pillar SC, there's only one rate and it doesn't matter if you're using it as a preventative or curative and that is one ounce per thousand square feet. So Pillar SC is really easy to use. It's one ounce per thousand, regardless of how you're using it, preventative or curative, one ounce per thousand. Headway as a preventative, two, two pounds per thousand square feet is a good rate. If you are, um, if you have an active disease problem in your lawn, you can go up as high as four pounds, but it, normally it's between, um, normally between two and a half to three will, will, will work, but I mean, it can the rate can go as high as four pounds um, for, for headway, depending on the disease you're dealing with. So from an ease of use, pillar is a bit easier if you have a sprayer and you have a way to apply it, because really it's just one rate, like one rate to rule them all. One ounce per thousand square feet, 
and, and you're good. So either one of these are what I would recommend. I would do those this time of year, like now is the ideal time for, um, for using a preventative fungicide. Outside of either one, if you've not done an insecticide, you want some grub control and a fungicide as well, you could go with Caravan. The thing with Caravan is, is that the it's, it's a compromise, right? The nice thing that with Caravan is it's a bit cheaper than buying fungicide and insecticide separately, but like all things in life is a compromise when you do that. So um, Caravan is, the insecticide that's in Caravan is excellent as a grub control, um, but it doesn't really do a whole lot against like sod webworms, any kind of turf caterpillars in your lawn. So you don't, you don't really get coverage for that. The fungicide that is in Caravan is a Zoxastrobin, which is a, it's just good against um, large patch, but it doesn't do anything against uh, dollar spot. So if you have dollar spot in your lawn, you need propiconazole or um, the, the active ingredient. It's, um, it's some kind of ozol. It's, it's called something different in, um, in pillar. Um, but, uh, but so if you, if you want an all in one, you could go with Caravan. Um, that'll get you grub control and like base, base um, fu uh, fungicide. If you want the best, if you want like a, like a better option, if you ask me what I would do and what I have done on my lawn, um, you would use a Celeprin, whether you want it in liquid or granular as your insecticide, and you would use either Pillar or Headway as your fungicide. Nice thing is if you're if you're a liquid person, you can uh, you can mix a Celeprin SC and Pillar, and you can spray these at the same time. So if you've not done your liquid insecticide as yet for the season, you could buy both of these and you can literally spray them at the same time. Whereas if you do granular, you would do a Celeprin G first, and then you would do Headway G afterwards. You, gotta, you have to do them separately. But the liquids, you can mix them and spray them at the same time. So. Uh, so yes, I would do a preventative fungicide. If you look here at our guides, if you go to the guide and then lawn care schedule, we have a free month by month breakdown on here. If you go to um, menu item five, this month by month breakdown tells you what you're gonna be doing on your lawn in March, in April, in May. In May, you'll see what we start talking about, our Primo Max, consistent mowing. That's kind of a that's something you're gonna see pretty much across all months. Um, a granular fertilizer, optional is top dressing if you want to top dress your lawn, a uh, carbon kit application, and then Headway G or Pillar SE, and or like I just said, told you, Caravan G instead of Headway um, and a Celeprin. So it just depends on which way you want to go. If you want a combination, use Caravan. If you want best, use a Celeprin um, and Pillar or a Celeprin and Headway. So um, that is what I would do. That is what I do on my lawn. It's what I also recommend and teach in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. And, and that helps people keep their lawns disease and insect free. So hope that helps, sir. Need anything else? Let me know. Next up is Dixon. Yeah, actually, I'll put it, I'll put the this in the chat for you. The to the I didn't put the link to the schedule. So schedule is here. And you can find that again, it's, it's a free schedule, it's on the store. So you can just go to the guide section, it's, it's linked there in the menu. All right, next up is Dixon Yamra, or Yerma. He says, greetings folks, just wanna let everyone know my bad boy launched, uh, no, bad boy launched a new E-Series I just, for their 80 volt string trimmer and mower. Okay, sounds good. Uh, next up is uh, Justin Judkins. He says, hey Ron, Hope you had a great week. I top dressed uh, a couple of weeks ago and have a few spots still working to come in. Yeah, that's that's gonna happen, but it's gonna really it's really gonna fill in now here, Justin, because we're gonna get consistently hotter temperatures uh, here going forward. Even at night, it's gonna be warmer, which is good, which is, which is good from a, a standpoint of recovery, but it's not so great from a standpoint of potential disease problems. Hence, it's why you need to get a, a fungicide down. Is it, should I wait to, to to start PGR until it's fully filled in or sooner? It, or is sooner or later better. With growth regulator, what I would say is this, Justin, let the lawn recover first and then introduce growth regulator. Literally, when you when you apply um, Primo, what you're gonna find is two days after applying this, the lawn's just gonna, it, like someone's gonna yank the e-brake. The lawn's gonna just stop growing. It's gonna really slow down as far as how quickly it's growing once you apply this. So. You know, you can you can wait till the lawn recovers and then introduce growth regulator. It's not gonna, it, in other words, it's not like pre-emergent. It's not like if you don't apply it within a certain window, you're not gonna get the results. Once you start using it, it will begin working. So let the lawn recover and then introduce growth regulator. If you're, you know, it sounds like to me, your concern is letting the lawn recover as quickly as possible. So in that case, I wouldn't do anything to hamper how quickly it uh, it grows in. So once it grows up, it, it bounces back, you're out there mowing it, Introduce Primo and enjoy life. Next up is Tom V. He says, uh, 
somehow I don't see my prior question. Yeah, I don't see it either, Tom. All I saw from you was this, the point where you just said I have, I think you said I have Kentucky bluegrass in Illinois. He says, found a three by three foot area that has driveway stones uh, three to four inches down. Growth looks affected. Do I dig all this out and replace with sod now or wait till fall? Um, yeah, for me, I would, I would do it now personally. I would do it now, so Tom. There's, there's still enough time. There's still enough time to do it. Because so three feet by three feet is not that big, and there's still time to. Um, there's still time if you get it. You know, if you made it a project this weekend to get that to get that stuff out, do some some backfilling, and then get some sod down and have it rooted and established. That I, I would still do that. You know, because I mean, in Illinois, it's only now starting to warm up, and uh, you still got you still got another six weeks easy before you start seeing a lot of high temperatures where the lawn's gonna start feeling stress, right? So yeah, that's, that's enough time for you to get some sod down and to get it rooted in. If, if it were me, I would correct it now versus in the uh, in the fall. That's that's what I would do. So I'm not sure why your question didn't show up the first time. Um, so sorry about that. I wasn't ignoring you, I just, I just didn't see it. All right, next up we have Ryan uh, Kramer. He says, last fall we installed Zeon Zoysia, which didn't fully grow in before it went dormant, still a bit dormant. Aerated and applied Lesco 24 to 11 per soil test. Uh, what would you advise? Sent pics to your emails. Ooh, Ryan, you sent me pictures. Let's see. Let us see. Oh, I got it. Here we go. Yep, found you. Found you. Got your pictures. It's one and two. Uh, yeah, that that is uh, taking a sweet time to grow in, isn't it? All right, so this is Ryan Zoyjalon. Um, I'm not sure when these are taken from, but they, I, I'm imagining they are new. So that's picture one, and this is picture two. So it looks like to me, Ryan, like you can still see the lines. You can still see that, that the sod, I mean, it's rooted in, but it, you can still see that it's not fully established. Based on the pictures, I'm not sure if it's this time of day or not, but it looks like that area also gets gets some shade. Like I don't see a lot of direct, it might have been a cloudy day too, right? But it doesn't look like there's, there's a lot of direct sunlight hitting that, which is also going to slow down how quickly it grows in. So here's the thing. I, I don't think you did anything wrong. It's just going to be a time thing. Zoysia grows slow. Like it's an, it's an incredibly slow growing grass. I, I put to give you an example. A couple of years ago when I did an experiment where I had a zoysia growing in a planter, and you can actually see it. Like you watch the videos where you see like that little, that little grass planter on my on my desk, on my on my uh, the table out there, that's zoysia. That's compadre, compadre zoysia. I think that's what it's called. I think it's compadre. Um, and that literally took an entire season to grow in. So I, I I planted it in carbonized PN, which is about as good as you can get for for growing anything. Like anything grows in carbonized PN, right? Um, and it literally it started out where it had like it started growing around the edges, and it took literally an entire season. Really, it wasn't until the end of the year that there was grass all throughout it, and not until the the following year, the following spring, that it was really thick and looking looking good. And that's in that's that's grass growing in like a pure like really rich organic material with biochar that got tons of sunlight. Like, like there was no shade. It was like sitting in the sun for hours and hours all day long. I watered it. It got a little bit of fertilizer. I, I whispered sweet nothings to it. I made sure I cut it and kept it looking nice. And it still took a long time to grow in and look and uh, and get established. So what I'm saying is is that with you doing your Zeon Zoysia in the fall, like where you are now, like if you took this picture today, um, that's not, I mean, it's not, looking like Bermuda, but remember, zoysia is a slower growing grass and it, it should start picking up here pretty pretty quickly. Um, I don't know where in the country you are, but if you're in Georgia, over the next over the next four weeks, this really should pick up quite a bit. The one thing I will tell you too that's gonna help it, um, to help it um, grow in and, and, and start greening up faster is to mow it. You know what I mean? I'm not sure how much you're out there mowing it right now, like looking at this lawn. It doesn't look like you're mowing it too much, but if you aren't, so if you're not doing that, do that. Like mow the lawn. Mowing encourages new growth, which is gonna help the lawn green up. It's gonna make it look nice sooner. Uh, so yeah, and if your soil test called for a 24-2-11, you did that, so that's good. I would just say mow, man. Mow, um, if you wanna introduce some biostimulants like Essential G, that is going to help as well. If you wanna introduce like a, um, a foliar, uh, fertilizer, a foliar spray product like Turfplex. That's like a, that's a, that's a twenty two three. I think it's still currently sold out in the store, but that's a good option as well. So I'll, I'll show you really quick here. 
If you go to shop and then lawn fertilizer, it's still sold out, but it's some more, some more is coming in. So this is what I would also spray as well. So I'm um, just hit, just put your name in here to get notified. And as soon as it comes in, you'll get an email saying, Hey, it's back. Come buy it now before it sells out again. Cause we, as soon as we get it, it sells out. So, um, so this you could spray as well, but it's given that you have zoysia, it's just going to be a time thing, you know, and just, just give it, give it time, mow it, give it time, introduce like, um, use some essential G and carbon kits. So we'll go over here to, uh, biosimilants. So this you could apply now, this is going to help improve the quality of your soil is going to help, um, going to help with nutrient availability is going to help your, it's going to help your, your, your grass do better. It's like, this, it's a great, it's a great product that I apply monthly to my lawn. As far as what else you can do, if you're gonna do the, um, if you if you also do liquids, because like everything you you mentioned there are just granular products. But if you're if you have a backpack spray and you're comfortable with spraying liquids, then I'd also highly recommend um, incorporating the carbon kit. So you have a really zero, which is a micronized carbon product, a kelp product, which is the got a little bit of fertilizer in there and Nutri Kelp, and then a soil microbial package in Biospectrum. You can mix all these, get sprayed at the same time, and you can mix this along with any liquid fertilizer that you're spraying on the lawn as well too. So that's the only things that I would say outside of um, outside of just patience and just giving it time. A granular biostimulant and the carbon kit. Just give it give it time because you got zoysia. It just that that's one of the things. That's one of the features of zoysia, right? Is that you don't have to mow it as much because it doesn't doesn't grow as quickly. But one of the negatives is that it just takes a lot a bit longer to come out of dormancy. And given that yours is a relatively new lawn, like it's still trying to establish, it's going to take a bit longer to to begin greening up. But just start mowing it. Um, and continue feeding it just like you've been doing. If you want to incorporate biostimulants and also some liquid sprays, that's going to help as well. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, uh, let me know. Um, he says, Ron, when you answer my question whether Miramichi controls grubs, no, it's not a grub control. It's not a grub control. For, a, for grub control, what I would use is, I mean, it might do it on contact, but as far as preventing problems, like in, in other words, using, using it as an insecticide to prevent grubs from destroying your lawn, I would not use the Miramichi, um, the, the pest control for that. I would use a Celeprin. That is what I would use. It's a better product for, for grubs. So if you want grub control, use, um, use this. Use either a Celeprin G or use a Celeprin SC. Either one of these are like best in class, excellent products for grub control. Not only grubs, but also armyworms, bill bugs, any kind of, any kind of turf caterpillar. Uh, this this will knock out in addition to uh, in addition to um, to to grubs, a and it's also a better fungicide uh, insecticide from an environmental perspective. Like it doesn't damage um, like it, it's better on pollinators, so it doesn't harm pollinators, and it doesn't um, harm earthworms. So it's it's a better insecticide for a lot of reasons, which is why I use that one on my lawn. So that is what I would use Jazzbot instead of the pest control. The pest control is more for like. Um, white flies, mosquitoes, roaches, uh, gnats, um, noceums, like it's great for those types of insects. Um, but for like, especially insects that, that are beneath the soil surface, surface of the soil that burrow like grubs, um, you're going to want to use something like a celeprin. So, and I will throw a link to you for that here in the chat. So at jazz, Jazzbot, uh, that's what I would use for your grub control. Next is Ahmad. He is uh, back. He says, how to get rid of torpedo grass. I hit it with Conclark multiple times last year. It knocked it off a little bit, but it keeps coming back. I don't know if there's a pre-emergent you can use for torpedo grass, Ahmad. I don't know if there's one for that. I would have to look. Um, when you use Quinclorac, did you use a, um, um, did you spray it by itself? Or did you also use like surfactant or, uh, or methylated seed oil with it? If you use methylated seed oil, you should find, you should, you'll, you should get a better result uh, with it. It should be, it should do better than just injuring it a little bit. It should really, should do a good job of, um, of, of getting rid of or controlling it um, in your lawn than just using quinclorac by itself. So if you've not done that, um, I would say the next time you spray, look into incorporating either a surfactant like the spreader sticker or um, a methylated seed oil. If you use an MSO, be sure to read the label for Quinclorac because there is a ratio between 
um, the herbicide and the methylated seed oil that you need to follow to get uh, to get a good result. Whereas with uh, with the spreader sticker, it's a couple. It's a, it's like one or two ounces per per gallon per thousand square feet. So it's, that's a bit that's a bit. Um, I don't use the word lax, but it's not as as prescriptive about how much of it you need to use versus a methylated seed oil. You really need to make sure you're using the right amount with uh, with chlorox to, to get make sure you get a good result. So. So hope that helps. Um, I don't know if there's a pre-emergent to prevent torpedo grass. I can look into that. I should just make a note of that somewhere for myself. You didn't ask that question, but I'll just text myself here really quick. Uh, torpedo grass pre -em. I'll look. I'll look and see if there is one for it. I don't know off the top of my head. All right, uh, let's see. Moss, uh, Moss back H is here, says, Ron, big thank you. I followed your advice on fall lawn prep and my very poor lawn is much improved. Awesome, man. I'm great. Glad to hear that. Love to hear that you're getting good results with the advice and recommendations, mainly because you're doing you're doing the work, right? I mean, yes, I'm, I can give you tips and tricks on things that I think will help produce a good result, but it doesn't do a whole lot unless you actually do it, right? So don't, you know, don't shortcut or don't, um, don't um, diminish the fact that you actually got out there and actually did this stuff, um, which is why you're getting a good result in your lawn. And it's going to get even better because, you know, the season is really now getting started if you have warm season grass is really gonna start taking off. So uh, so yeah, just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Jazz says, I don't have grubs. It was a baby slug, snail with no shell, but not a grub. Yeah, so for for snails, um, I don't think a cell print does that, but um, there's, you have to use something different for snails. But uh, but yeah, but at any rate, I would still get an, a preventative insecticide down, Jazz. So uh, So yeah. All right, next is Papa Mo's Low. He says, one last question on verticutting. I'm trying to establish a cross patch pattern. Do I verticut in just one direction or do I go in both directions? I would verticut in, so if you have, um, say you're trying to get like a checkerboard or you have a dominant where you're trying to get the stripes in two different directions on your lawn, I would verticut in both of those directions. Um, in other words, it would, I would verticut perpendicular to, um, to, so whether that's in a diamond, uh, perpendicular or like how my lawn is where I cut where it's like straight one way and then the long then lengthwise um, I would do it in both directions if you're trying to um, if, you're, if, you, if, if to, to, to get as good a result as possible but again go light like do not like if you're gonna if you're gonna make two passes like perpendicular to each other set the verticutter at like four millimeters or five millimeters don't even go down to two because you're gonna be making two passes so you don't need to go you know super aggressive if you're gonna be making multiple passes if you're going one pass then like two to four is is fine, but if you're gonna you know if you're gonna make multiple passes, you can you can raise it up a little bit and um, and and you'll still get a great result. Again, just it's once per month. Don't get too aggressive, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna like the way your lawn looks. The, th the idea is you want to thin the lawn out, but don't introduce so much stress to it that it has a it has problems recovering where it starts losing its color and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So a little bit. Don't be too aggressive with the verticutter. There's just no need to, to do it, considering that you're gonna be doing it monthly. All right, next is Alex Rustiano. He says, uh, also, I took care of most of the washout ruts that happened during the seeding. I remember that from last week. I remember we had, we had like, you know, major alert, you know, your danger, danger, Will Robinson with, you got like heavy rain after the seeding. I remember the pictures. I remember what you were talking about. He says, my soil is so silty, sandy. It washes very easily. When, uh, when, what should I use to do fine leveling? Will that help with stability? Um, uh, let's see. So, so you took care of most of the, the ruts. Okay, so you, I guess you took the leveling rake and you fixed the ruts that happened from the heavy rainfall. When, what should I use to do fine leveling? That will also help stability. Sand, I mean, I mean, sand adds stability to your soil, to your soil profile. So if you've already got sandy soil, um, I mean, you could you could top dress with uh, again. I said, I, I'm still going to say a 70-30 mix is what I would go with. Um, that is that is what I would use. That will help add structure to the soil to where it's less likely to to wash out. Um, than than if you're you have, it sounds like you have like a more of like a loamy type type soil. So adding like uh, like a 70-30 mix will help with with the structure. Will help will help the the material help the the the, the soil stay in place when you get heavier um, rainfall. So so yeah, that is that is what I would do, Alex. Same question, same answer, same answer is what I would say if you had clay soil. And I am working on a. Um, I'm working on a, on a, well, whatever, I won't talk about it. You, whenever, whenever it's ready and I post it, then you guys will see. All right, next up is Justin Judkins. He says, I've been seeing a bunch of dead June bugs and a couple of spots with couple uh, with possible minor 
grub damage. I applied a caravan today. Would you recommend anything else or will that suffice for the year? Yeah, if all you care about is grubs, caravan, caravan will, do the, will do the trick. If, you, if you're worried about um, army worms or any kind of turf caterpillars, that is when a celeprin comes in and that you could wait till, if you're, if you're just gonna treat just for army worms, you could wait you know, until June, July time frame to do that. I mean, a little bit later in the year is fine for that. Um, but if all you care about is just uh, um, grubs, then caravan will, uh, will do the trick. Caravan will do the trick. Uh, Jim Carson says, uh, do you have a link for top dressing? I've never done it before. Tiff tough here. I still have not mowed. Lawn is green. It has seed heads everywhere. Thanks. I received a Scott's 18 inch pro. Uh, I'm not sure what the rest of your comment is. A pro mower. Um, yes, I, so I do have a link to top to the top dressing mix, but again, this is only if you're in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, or Alabama. Those are the only places that they deliver to. And if you are, I think you're in California, Jim, so I don't think this is going to apply to you. I think if I remember, you're in SoCal, aren't you? So if you're in SoCal, then no. Um, what you can do instead is you can use, uh, I'll show you here. You can use essential, I'm going to give you two options. One is less work. One is more work. So you can decide which one is more for you. So if you go to the biosimilant section, if you if all you can get is sand, right? If all you can get is sand, you can't get a blend, and you're up for the work, you could use the you could use carbonized PN. This is strictly compost and biochar. So that's all that carbonized PN is. So as far as like a, a top dressing um, mix or top dressing uh, material, not mix, but a top dressing material you can use from a, for, to add the organic component, component, you can use carbonized PN, but it is more work. So you're gonna have to get out there with a leveling rake and actually work this in, unless you can go out and rent like an Echo or some kind of, um, some kind of machine for actually casting or spreading the top dressing material. Like your, a regular broadcast spreader is not gonna work for this. You have to have like an actual machine to, to spread this. Um, so that is option one. And in my opinion, the better option, if you have the time and desire and, and will, you know, don't mind the extra work of having to spread this all over your lawn. If you want an option that is also good, uh, then go with Essential G. Uh, this is essentially carbonized PN with some more ingredients in a prill form. So you can buy this, go really heavy with this, and you can apply it with your broadcast spreaders. That's a nice, the benefit of this guy is that you don't have to get out there with your leveling rake to work it in. You can simply just put it in your broadcast spreader, apply it all over the lawn, and then put your sand down that you're gonna use for top dressing, work that in, water it in, and call it done. Sip on a lemonade and just wait for the grass to go back through, right? Um, but carbonized PN, um, is a, like as far as like a, strict, a strictly a pure compost product, uh, that is, it's really hard to be that. It's, a, it's an excellent product, but the problem is you just, to spread it, right? You just gotta, you have to manually do it. So if that sounds like too much work, then go with Essential G at just a, at a just go really heavy with it. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's what I would, I'd say. I give you two options. If you can't get the super side leveling mixture, which I, if I remember you, I think you're in California. So that's not gonna be, an option. If there's a super sod or big yellow bag out there, like I believe super sod licenses that like the big yellow bag out to other places out West. And the stuff that you will get is not the same stuff that we get here in Georgia. So if you live in SoCal, which I think Jim, you do, like I think we've, we've spoken before. Um, I would just try and find some clean sand and use essential G or, um, carbonized PN. One of those two just to, to, to be your organic component. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, and actually I'll send you some, I'll send you a link to where you can find both of them right here. This is to the um, the Miramichi Green collection on the Golf Course Lawn Store. And, and at that same link, at that same link, you will find a the Super Sacks. And actually I didn't show you that. Let me go here. Let me go back here. Um, so one thing I didn't show you was this. So in addition to carbonized PN and Essential G, which are available in bags, right? you can also get them in a super sack. So this is a price delivered for carbonized PN or uh, 2000 pounds of carbonized PN or 2000 pounds of essential G. Um, again, if you're gonna do top dressing, I would go with carbonized PN. It's the equivalent of 50 pounds. And if you do uh, uh, 50 bags, it's 2000 pounds, but it's equivalent of 50 bags. And if you do the math on that, this is quite a bit cheaper than going with individual bags of carbonized PN or um, essential G. The lead time on that is about a week to get it shipped because it, because the logistics got it like a trucking company to, to you know to get a quote and get it out there to get it shipped to you. It takes about a week to ship it. 
Um, but you'll save some money on that versus buying individual bags. And again, it's the equivalent of 50, 50 bags. It just depends on how big your lawn is and how much material you need. So there you go. Hope that helps. Next up is Dev Rockney from Utah. He says, I'm in Utah with rye, Kentucky bluegrass mix. If my grass is looking good without 100%, is it too early to put down growth regulator? Just wait for it to grow in. I mean, you, there's not... Here, for me, right, my lawn, you see, you see how my lawn looks this time of year. So for me, I start using Growth Reg. Um, I start using Primo the the end of April, early May. That's when I start. Um, if your lawn, you're still waiting for your lawn to green up, just give it more time. Give it two weeks. Like reassess in two weeks from now, and you can always start in two weeks. If you're spraying it the way that I recommend, Dev uh, Rockney, then you can, you, you're doing the, the split applications where you're doing it every two weeks, you can assess May 15th. If it's not looking good enough then, you could wait till the end of May and do your first um, growth regulator application in June. There's really, you know, there's really no wrong answer. Literally a couple days after you spray the lawn with growth regulator, it's gonna take effect and it's gonna slow down how quickly it grows. So it's not like a, a pre-emergent herbicide where there's like a window of when you have to spray this or you're not gonna get the results with it. Literally, you spray Primo, two days later, the lawn's gonna, gonna stop growing or you're gonna slow, slow down how quickly it grows and you're gonna get the results. And then from that point, it's just every two weeks, you'll just keep spraying it. You know what I mean? So uh, so yeah, without having pictures, it's hard for me to say for sure, but my lawn is under other, already under regulation and it will be that way until September, October of this year, depending on how temperatures are and how the lawn looks when fall rolls around. So. So hope that helps. And the stuff that I recommend is Primo Max, mainly because it makes it very easy to measure this. You got like a built-in measuring cups, like a tip and pour, makes it really easy to measure out how much you need to use and apply to your lawn. So these are money. I really, really like these as far as um, as far as options for getting Primo Max, getting growth regulator. Next up is Terrence Stamps. He says, hey Ron, thank you for doing this weekly. I have a question. Can I put down Melorganite now or should I wait? You can do it now. You can do it now. I mean, if you're in, especially in Georgia in the Southeast, you can absolutely do it now. I mean, in the past when I was using Melorganite, I would apply it in April. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, you can absolutely do it now. Especially if you're in the Southeast United States and Georgia, you can get your Milo app down now. I will tell you that given the choice, I would not use, if you've not bought it yet, I would not use Milo. I would use the new Miramichi Green Organic, not, not necessarily only because it's what we sell, but from a standpoint of cost per application, like you get better, it's a better product for one. And then also you get, um, like your money goes further. You get more coverage for less money versus buying um, Milo. Like Milo here locally is like $25, $26 a bag for like 2,500 square feet. So that's, that's pretty pricey when you when you add it all up, given the coverage and it, and that it doesn't have all the ingredients of a product like, I'll show you here. So you go to Lawn Fertilizer and you go to the Miramichi Green Organic. This is like $69.99 shipped, right? Um, and in addition to having organic, there's some humate in this. There's there's iron, like with a, like you also get in um, malorganite. But uh, this is the analysis. It's a triple four, so you get all three. You get um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, you get some calcium. You get some iron and a bit of humate. And there's also a microbial package. So you can think of like biospectrum. You can think of like biospectrum being added to the bag as well. So as far as like what you get for what you pay, this is a much better option than. Um, Melorganite, in my opinion. Um, but to answer your question for both of them is yes, you can do both of them now. I've been applying that 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 fertilizer, the triple four, on my front lawn since um, the beginning of April. So uh, so yeah. So hope that helps. Um, if you decide to go with Milo, the answer is still yes. You can do it. You can do it this time of year. If you want to try the triple four, the Miramichi Organic, I just sent you a link to that, to where you can pick it up. Appreciate you hanging out in the live stream, man. It's a lot of fun. Make sure, people like you showing up each week makes this happen. So I appreciate all the support. And uh, Devin, let's see. Ant, let me see. No, I got another question from Andrew Phillips. He says, Ron, I plan on applying my first PG Primo this weekend, but wind gusts will be around 20, yeah, that's too much, 20, 25 miles per hour here in Texas. What is the max wind gust for tank spring, especially with the fine tip tanks? I, I mean, 25 miles an hour is too much. Like, I don't, I can't, anything above, 10, 10, 15 miles an hour, that's that's a bit high. That's, you know, I, I I would pick a day or pick a time of day when it's really not too windy. 20 to 25 miles per hour is um is too windy. I mean, you would have to you would have to switch to like an air induction tip with a larger droplet. And even then, 20, 20 to 25 mile per hour is, is too much. Like that you're gonna you're gonna lose too much of the material. It's gonna, you know, there's a, there's a, a term called drift. Like whenever you're spraying 
spraying anything in your lawn, fertilizer, fungicide, insecticide, herbicide, whatever, right? You want to spray the product and have it stay in the air that you're spraying. If you need a 25 mile per hour wind, you're going to spray Primo and it's going to end up, you know, halfway down the street. It's not going to stay in the, it's not going to stay on your lawn. So I would wait for a day when it is not, you don't have 20 to 25 mile per hour winds, um, you know, or, or, or a time of day. Typically in the mornings, the wind tends to be a bit lighter. So if you can do it early in the morning when the winds aren't quite so so severe, you could do it then. But if, if you're telling me that, that all throughout the day it's gonna be, you know, 20, 25 mile per hour winds, uh, just that's a no-go. I would not, I would, I would recommend against not spraying, not only growth regulator, really spraying anything that with winds that high. Because it's not, you're going to be, it's going to be, it's going to travel far too far. It's, it's going to travel too far. It's not going to, it's not going to stay in the area. Uh, let's see, Devin Demiris chime in. He says, uh, Andrew Phillips, yeah, that's too windy. Don't spray if it's above 10 miles an hour, especially, especially with a fine foliar uh, tips. So there you go. So yeah, 10 miles an hour is the cap um, per Devin. And yeah, 25 is way, that's way too much. That's way too much for to be out there spraying your lawn. Um, so, so yeah, so 10 miles an hour you know, per a guy that literally sprays lawn, sprays turf for a living, um, is, is what he's recommending. And, you know, I, I second that. It's just, just, just wait. I mean, that's not going to be that way for days and days on end. So if tomorrow you can't do it, maybe Sunday is going to be better, you know, to where you can do it then. So, but I mean, 25 mile an hour, that's a no go. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a hard no go on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Demir says, that's what I thought. I haven't ever tried it, but I want to know the max. I guess I'll work on spot leveling and prep for leveling soon. Yeah, that's, there's some other stuff you can do that don't require you spraying liquids is what I would say is the, um, is the way to go. We got Striper Man here in the, in Instagram. What's going on, Striper Man? Thanks for coming to hang out in the show. We got Mr. Duo, Rich uh, 70Z, uh, Dutch M80. We got, a, we got a couple guys here. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live, in the, on the gram. All right, so the, cons the consensus is the consensus is not above 10 miles an hour, Andrew. You're going to have to wait for another day. Chris V says, um, hey, Ron, how soon can I level my, how long can I, can I, can I level my turf after signing Celebration Bermuda? I'm in South Florida. Uh, the, a week or two later, if you wanted to. I mean, just if, as long as you go light. Again, key word, as long as you go light. Um, you know, with you being in South Florida, it's not going to take long for that to root in. So if you want to be ultra, ultra conservative, you could, and if you put your sod in, you installed it um, the beginning of May. If you want to be ultra conservative, you could wait till the end of May to do your leveling work. But I, you know, again, as long as it's it's beginning to root in, um, I wouldn't, you know, you really, you really won't take, you don't have to wait too long to, to get out there and start leveling it. The big thing is don't um, beach the lawn. Do not like when I, when I'm done, when you're unleveling it, it should look like, um, no, it should not look like that. It should look like, uh, let me find Mary's picture here. I think one of these, it should look like that. It should look like that or it should look like that. That's how it should look. Like you should see largely green with some sand in the, in the low spots. That's what it should look like. So don't go super heavy. You've got plenty of time, especially with you being in South Florida. You've got like, whereas here in Georgia, we could level now. We could do another one June 15th and we could do another one in like mid-July. You'll be able to level probably well into August if you wanted to, you know what I mean? So there's really no rush. So let the line get established. Once you get out there and you can start mowing it, then you can go out and, and top rest, you know? And given that you're in Florida, again, it shouldn't take long for that to root in and um, start doing this thing. It's, it's Bermuda, you know? Bermuda, heat, sunlight. That's all, that's the recipe. Bit of nitrogen, it'll take off and, and uh, you'll be out there, um, out there top dressing in no time. All right, Adam, Car Adam uh, Carter is up next. He says, hello, I put down image to kill Poanua and now a lot of my yard is turning yellow more and more by the day. Is there a disease that would cause the yard to turn yellow? I mean, yes. I mean, there's a lot of diseases that can cause discoloration, but if it's but if it's doing it across the entire lawn, it could be it could be image. It could be the rate. Like, what rate did you spray? Um, what rate did you spray image at? You know what I mean? What rate did you use for that? Because that could, that could cause discoloration. Um, if you went too heavy, that can cause some. Temp it'll be temporary. This big thing. It's not it's not going to be permanent, but that can cause some temporary discoloration. Uh, in your lawn, Adam. So to, I, if you sprayed a herbicide and the entire lawn has changed color post spraying the herbicide, I would lean towards it having to do something with the herbicide. Even, imaging itself typically doesn't do doesn't um, 
this color lawns too badly. But if you, but again, it depends on the rate. If you went too heavy on the rate, that will um, that will do it. That will cause it to, you know, it'll cause some discoloration. Um, this is discoloration in your lawn. So, so I'm sorry you're dealing with that. It's gonna be temporary. I know it looks ugly now, but now that the temps are starting to get warmer, it will um, it will green up. Disease can cause discoloration as well too, but typically not across the entire lawn. Like if you if you told me you'd like had been seriously overwatering the entire lawn for like you know weeks on end, like Pythium will cause like um, like reddish will cause like reddish color in the lawn, and that will be like wide. I mean, it'll still be concentrated in certain areas, but that can cause like a mass discoloration of the entire lawn. But if you're talking about like a light yellowing, almost like herbicide, like stress from herbicide, um, that's what it sounds like to me. So the way to get past it, it's just gonna be time. Just give it time. Um, just give it time and allow the lawn to uh, to recover from it, which it will now that um, you know now that we're we're getting more sunlight, more uh, more temperature, it'll it'll um, it'll bounce back from it. So sorry you're dealing with that, but it will recover. And uh, let's see, Chu Chu says, um, "Hey Ron, I have a one. I'm not sure what you're saying. I didn't get the rest of it. So if you if you want to repost your comment, um, Chewy Chews, I didn't see what you said there, but I will um, I'll answer it if you do so." Uh, let's see. Doug says weed and feed has to be applied to a wet lawn. That's just a mess. That's, that's another point. You know what? That's, a, that's an other, another excellent point, Doug. Yeah, that's another thing with weed and feed products with granular with granular products. So like uh, Spectricide makes a granular um, uh, post-emergent herbicide. So it's got like um, got some quinquin chlorac in there. It's got some dicamba in it. It's like a. It's like actually, let me tell you what's in there. Let me make sure I'm not telling you wrong here. But they have they have a weed and feed type product that can work well. But the, it's all in the application, right? Let me just make sure I'm not telling you wrong here. So it's got, uh, yeah, it's got dicamba, dithiopyr, 2,4-D, but you have to apply it to a wet lawn because for the herbicide, because you apply a granular, for the herbicide to stick to the, the, the leaf of the weed you're trying to target, it works better when the leaf is wet, right? So you either need to do it in the morning when there's dew on the lawn or after you run an irrigation cycle, which is just, it's its just messy. If you ever watch the video where Alex and I use that product, um, the Spectricide product I'm talking about on his lawn, it works, it does produce a result if you apply it properly, but it makes a mess. Like if you're using, like you don't even wanna use tennis shoes if you do that, because you're walking throughout the entire lawn as you're spraying this stuff, your lawn, your shoes are gonna get all, all like um, brown discoloration and stain from the herbicide. It's just kind of a mess. You don't wanna use boots if you decide to do that. Um, so that's a good point, um, Doug. I didn't, I didn't think about that one. I didn't mention that as well. If you apply weed and feed products, um, and they are ones that have a post-emergent, emergent, a post-emergent component to them, um, you know, applying them to a wet lawn or or with, with the lawn is damp allows them to work better, which is also more messy. So that's another another point as well. Which is all the more reason to, in my opinion, divide like split your herbicide application and your fertilizer application from each other, like decouple them. Like those two things don't like, in my opinion, I mean, it's it's convenience, but not really, because you tend to not get as good results versus using like a, a standalone post-emergent herbicide and using a standalone fertilizer. Like you're able to, to, to better get to the, the, the best tool for the job if you use separate products. All right, Mary just says clap and music for the new uh, equipment at Ron Henry. Yeah, I gotta clap it for myself, you're right. You gotta do that. You gotta give myself a clap for the new for the new equipment. For anyone that's here in the live stream, you're wondering what I'm talking about. I got a new stand for holding my. That's the um, going from top to bottom. That is the turf rake, and then the soil roller or or, or a tine aerator, solid tine aerator, and then finally the um, the verticutter. So that's what you're looking at there. That's my whole. That's my whole uh, cultivation program for my lawn to keep it keep it in top form right keep it in top form i agree mary thank you so much for that and uh i like uh, i obliged as far as getting you as far as clapping it up for myself and then uh daniel says hand clap for ron round of applause for yourself one time ron just did thanks for that daniel i appreciate it um boomer sooner says tenacity will tenacity kill my zoysia i think i put too much to kill poa mm. Is there an effective pre-emergent for POA? It's gonna discolor it, it's gonna damage your zoysia, so you shouldn't, you really shouldn't spray, like the only warm season grass that you can spray Tenacity on, it's labeled for, are, is like Centipede 
And I believe you can spray it on St. Augustine, but the restriction is not really on residential lawns. It's supposed to be like on sod farms, I believe. That's, I believe that's correct for, for St. Um So really, really centipede is, is, the, is the warm season grass that you can spray um, tenacity on. But really, um, for warm season turf, use Celsius and or certainty. This is a much better, um, for broadleafs, use this. For grassy weeds and sedges, use this. And if you want to use them both together, you can mix them both together. They work wonderfully together. Um, I would not use tenacity on um, on uh, on warm season turf. Um, full stop. Really, you know, centipede lawns. I really wouldn't even use it. I would use I would use. Um, I guess I take that back. The only time I would use tenacity on a centipede lawn is if you're trying to control crabgrass because you can't spray centipede with um, or any more, really more mature crabgrass. If you're trying to control mature crabgrass in centipede on a centipede lawn, you can't use quinclorac because it will damage it. It's kind of like spraying quinclorac on St. Augustine. You can't spray, you shouldn't spray St. Augustine with quinclorac or centipede with quinclorac because it will damage and or kill it. Whereas you can spray centipede with tenacity. Um, and again, the only thing I really would use tenacity on a centipede lawn for is for crabgrass control, not for anything. Because for everything else, um, centipede, uh, uh, Celsius and um, uh, certainty will work better and won't discolor the lawn as part of it working. So to go full circle, you says, um, will it kill your zoysia? Um, it, kill it? I mean, depending on how heavy you went, I mean, it, it's it, it's gonna it's gonna likely injure it and discolor it pretty badly. Um, kill it. It depends on how it depends on what rate you use. I would not I would not spray tenacity on Bermuda grass or, or um, on Bermuda grass or zoysia grass like ever. Full stop. There are people that say yeah you can spray it whenever it is dormant. Yes, technically yes. Um, but why? Why when you have like <laughs> when you have select you have selective herbicides that are designed for zoysia grass and Bermuda grass that will not injure it? You know what I mean? So. Um, so as far as killing POA, um, I would use certainty at the high rate. So a, a large scoop minimum per thousand square feet to kill POA. And as far as to prevent POA, the best pre-immersion in my opinion for POA on um, Bermuda or Zoysia is a product called Spectacle Flow. It is this stuff, this stuff. So you'll apply this in the fall, uh, late August, September timeframe. This is like, this is like the cat, like this is like the bee's knees for preventing POA in warm season turf. The downside, you know it's coming, it's expensive. It's not, this stuff is um, like last year, it was like 325 a bottle. And now it's uh, probably more than that because you know herbicides just tend to cost more as time goes by. Um, but Spectacle is, um, if, you, if you got the budget, Spectacle Flow in the fall is gonna, is gonna dra if not fully prevent, it's gonna drastically um, um, reduce the amount of POA that you have um, in your lawn. Much better than prodiamine, much better than, but even better than like prodiamine, um, simazine, and amazequin will. Um, if you wanna prevent POA, use Spectacle Flow in warm season turf. And if you wanna kill POA in warm season turf, use uh, Certainty, use this. Use this at the high rate, that will, um, that will take care of it. And if you want, a link to Spectacle. I'll give you one here. Um, I'll give you one here at Boomer Sooner. And what I would say, it, I guess I'm guessing you're in Oklahoma because it's Boomer Sooner, right? Um, if you, it, what I would say is, if you're going to use Spectacle, um, because the rate for it is so low, uh, I would um, find some friends or you know, friends, some, some buddies that you can split a bottle with. So like, buy a bottle of it and then just split it, divide it up among you guys. And uh, yeah, so it's three hundred eighty dollars right now is what it went up to. So it's still not cheap. Um, it's not 400 yet, so that's good. But uh, but do not spray this in the springtime. Spray this in the fall. This is what you want to use to um, uh, to keep spectacle flow, uh, keep poa away. Um, use that in the fall, and that will that's gonna you're gonna you're gonna like the results you get with um, reduction in poa in your lawn in the spring if you use spectacle. I uh, would the tenacity. I would not use it on your zoysia ever again. Like give it, like get, find a friend that has a centipede lawn, give it to them. You have somebody, you have some family or that has, that lives up north and has cool season lawns, send it to them, but don't use tenacity on warm season turf. Um, there's just no reason to do that when we have Celsius uncertainty. Okay, next is uh, Andrew Phillips. Uh, that's not for me. You guys are, you guys are talking to the sidebar. 
And um, Kels, uh, Kaisel Alexander says, do you always use liquid pre-emergent or do you use a combination for three times a year? Uh, I tend to use, I've used granular in the past. I tend to primarily use liquid, mainly because it's just easier. Because I want to put some, if I want to add some other stuff in the tank, I can do that as well too. Whereas if you're using a granular, all you can do is just the granular. So I tend to do a, um, I tend to do liquids for my pre-immersion. And as far as how often I use them, uh, just twice a year. I tend to spray in the springtime once and I tend to spray in the fall once. That's what I, that's what I, uh, I do. So, uh, so yeah, you can get good results with granular pre-immersion as well too, but I just, I just tend to use liquids. I mean, cause it's just, I mean, I, it's more flexibility, easier to, 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 to jockey the rates, to change the rates around. And I want to put, you know, other, other products in the tank, I can do that as well too. So that's the main reason why I use liquids for my pre-emergent. All right. Next we have, uh, Ben. Nope. That's not for me. Let's see. Um, let's see here. Uh, Doug says, my neighbor's lawn looks like what Faisal described. I don't think he top dressed properly. His lawn hasn't recovered from a year ago. Just barren sand, sand spots. Interesting. Um, so, so how did he, um, I mean, it'd be interesting to, to, to look at, at, at if there's, to see if there's anything else going on in the soil that could be causing that. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the sand, I wouldn't, I wouldn't attribute that to just the sand. In other words, if you had, good example, if you have a part of a lawn, right? Let's say you have a lawn that had bare spots and then you top dress the lawn, that's the, 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 the act of top dressing it isn't going to magically make the bare spots grow grass. So if the areas were bare before, um, we need to figure out why, whether there is a sunlight issue, a nutrient deficiency issue, a disease problem in the lawn, something that's, whatever it is that's causing grass to not grow there, we need to help, we need to correct that because top dressing is not, in of itself, is not going to fix it. And just like, just like um, planting grass seed or putting sod in an area that grass isn't growing, isn't going to cause grass to grow there. Like it'll, it might germinate, but then it's going to die right off just like it did before, right? So, um, what I would say, Doug, is, I mean, I'm not sure if you're on terms with your neighbor, but I would have them do is get a um, get a soil test kit, go pull cores, like get the soil test, test kit, get, get uh, this and one of these guys, a tool to, to, um, to, to pull the cores and, uh, and see if there's anything going on in the soil. See if there's a nutrient deficiency that could be causing part of the problem. Again, shade is a big culprit that causes, that people don't, don't think about, that causes uh, bare spots or thin areas in lawns. Um, and then the last thing is like a debris, like look, make sure there's no debris or any kind of, um, any kind of damage or any kind of debris or, or stuff underneath the, the, the soil that's preventing grass from growing in that area. But I would not be quick to blame the sand or lawn leveling or top dressing for causing a bare spot. Typically, I, I mean, it sounds like it, it would be that, they, that it was that way before and, um, you know, it didn't, and then it, it's not going to fix a problem, a problem area of a lawn. In other words, I have top dressed my lawn with sand, with 100% sand, with a 70-30 blend, and with compost. And in all cases, I never ended up with like a bare spot in my lawn after top dressing it with sand. You know what I mean? It's just, um, it just hasn't really been a thing. All right, uh, Robert Rainey is up next. He says, awesome work, Mary, Todd, and Papa. Yeah, man, they did, a, they did the great, did the work, right? Getting that, um, getting that top dressing down, did that lawn leveling, it's good stuff. They did a great job. Uh, next up, we got Optic Cyclic. He says, I'm sure no one's here on Instagram. Nope. He says, uh, now the snow is melted. I am mowing again. I'm reminded of it, not because he started digging, but because I'm having to clean my deck for a second time. I'm not sure which, that, that probably wasn't for me. That was, that probably not for me. Um, yeah, probably not for me. Um, uh, BG says, uh, blue def, yes or no, thanks. Uh, for me, no. For me, no, there's no reason, I mean, there's no reason to use um, diesel exhaust fluid on your lawn. Just like buy, like buy a real fertilizer. Like if you wanna use a liquid fertilizer, buy, um, buy Turfplex, buy Bloomplex, buy the Miramichi Green 901C, buy any liquid fertilizer you want, buy something that is actually designed to, that's actually designed to spray, be sprayed on lawns. Reason being is that yes, while that can be, um, um, DEF can be a nitrogen source, like most liquid fertilizers, also have, will also have some potassium in them. They'll also have micronutrients. They also may have some kelp. They may also may have, um, you know, they may have other other additives to them that 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 um, help improve the quality of your turf other than just nitrogen. So like I put, I put, 
um, um, deaf in the same, like I just, I just, long answer short is no. I just wouldn't do it. I'm not gonna go into any more into why. Like use, use, use a proper, if you wanna spray, if you wanna spray a liquid fertilizer on your lawn, use liquid fertilizer for the reasons that I, that I said. I would not use, um, I would not use deaf on my lawn. All right, next up is John K. Powers. What are the pros and cons of top dressing with sand versus soil, et cetera? So what I would like to do, John, is a combination. So uh, a blend of sand and soil. The sand adds structure, the soil helps add a bit of organic material, which helps improve uh, soil quality, nutrient uptake, just tons of benefits from doing that. Um, going with 100% sand, is going to, um, if your only goal is just to improve, just for just pure leveling, like sand isn't gonna break down or get displaced nearly as quickly as a compost or topsoil will. So if you were to top dress your lawn with just say compost, that is gonna do a decent job. It's gonna level, it's gonna look smooth, but say 18 months down the road, you're gonna find that it's gonna settle and you're gonna, it's not gonna stay as smooth as longer, as long as if you use sand. Also a benefit of sand is that from a standpoint of improving drainage, sand is very good for that. So if you have an area of your lawn, see so you have like a clay soil, right? Um, and you have an area of your lawn that, yeah, it may drain, but water tends to stay on the surface for a while. If you top dress with a blend that is that has a, has a large sand component to it, that's gonna really help pull water away from the surface. It's gonna help with drainage. Um, so yeah, I, I, I say in a lot of my videos, a lot of my live streams, one of the biggest benefits that I got from top dressing is not necessarily the fact that it's the lawn is nice and smooth and looks like a golf course, is the drainage, the drainage benefits. Like after the first time I top dressed, um, you know, I could get a bunch of rainfall and I've sent you guys, you guys look on the Instagram, you guys will see times my entire back lawn is like a lake and literally hours later, it's all gone. It just, it gets pulled away from the surface very quickly by the um, by the sand that's in the, um, this, the soil profile. So. You can do either of them. If your goal is to add to, to level, to add structure, use sand. If the goal is to add organic material, use soil or compost, I would recommend doing a blend of both. So you get the both, you get the the benefit of both worlds. That is what um what I would do. Uh, uh, Robert Rainey says, the cartridge rack looked awesome, Ron. I'm a sucker when it comes to for being more organized. Yeah, man, I really, I really do like it. And it makes it more fun because the way I had them before is I had the verticutter on the bottom, and I had the turf rake stacked on top of that, and I had the sorrow roller to the side of those. So I had to like move, I had to play like, you know, Jenga, a game of Jenga to move stuff around to get the stuff out. So it was just it was kind of a hassle. Now it's just really easy. I could just go there, just pull it out, and you know, and it's nice, nice and this takes up less space in the garage, and it's just better in every way. Better in every, every way. All right, next up we have Lej. He says, what is your favorite um, pesticide or insecticide for ants? Um, I would say, if you're talking about fire ants, I would say um, uh, Advion. Advion fire ant bait. I love that stuff. That's what I use on my lawn. I've used it since 20, 2017, 2017, so a while now. Um, it's, a, it's a great product. It comes in a, you can get it in granules, a two pound jug with granules. You just kind of walk around and you can just, you can spray it all over your, you can apply the granules all over your lawn. It does a great job of keeping um, ants under control. I've got, um, what I will do is two things I'll do for you, um, Lege. I will send you a link to it. And then even to, to go along with that, I will send you a video that shows you how I like to use it, like how to use it one for as a preventative. And if you have an active, like you have an anthill, how to use it to, to control an anthill. So thing one is this, this is the uh, ledge there, that is the product. And then as far as the video of how I like to use it, it was from last year, uh, ants. <sighs> it would be this one, this guy right here. So this is the video on, um, uh, call it the ant, ant video. Mm, there we go. Um, that one will show you how, like, how to use, uh, how to use Advion. So that, that's what I would use in my, um, to control ants in your lawn. That's, that's again, I've been using it since like, like six years now, six plus years. It's a great product. Great product. And, and the two pound jug goes a long way. Like you'll buy that and you'll, you'll, what I tend to find on my lawn, I use one, jug per one and a half seasons. And I think I might have that one. I don't have one here to show you. But it, oh yeah, I do, right here, this is it. Yeah, this is what it looks like. That's it. 
that's what it looks like, a two pound, two pound jug. The link that I sent you will take you to one of these. And this, you can see here, it's got a, um, this is an unopened one, but it's got like a, like a shaker, like a shaker option here. So you can literally just walk around your lawn with this because the bottle is really kind of squeezy. You can, when you open it, you can kind of walk around, just kind of give it a, give it a burst, like a like squeeze, and it will literally like puff them out and spread them nicely all over in, in the area you're trying to, uh, to treat. So great product, highly recommend it. Not that expensive. That's uh, what I use on my lawn. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, E-Man says, how important is pH and follow your spray and what should the target rate number be? Here's the thing. So are you talking, if you're talking about like um, adjusting the pH of the water that you use whenever you're spraying like fertilizer, I've never adjusted that. I've never done that on um, on my lawn. So I answer, you know, I'm not sure if Devin is here, if he can chime in, if there's something they, that he ever does with, um, the sprays they do on on the course, but um, I just use just just straight tap water. You know what I mean? I don't I don't make any adjustments to um, to the pH of what of what goes in the tank before I mix um, before I mix my products into it um, to to spray on the lawn. I guess maybe if you had maybe if you're using like well water or using some kind of water that was you know highly um, you know that where the pH was was way off, maybe you might want to make an adjustment. But just plain old tap water has worked. Has I've had great results with that. I've never made any adjustments. Um, I've never had to do any adjustments to um, to 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 get a great result with the products that I spray on my lawn. So if Devin is still here, if Demir is still here, and he wants to chime in on that one, um, if he has any thoughts on it, feel free. But um, but yeah, I would say if you're using tap water, not very important. You can get a good result using the water that comes out of your hose. All right, Peter uh, D. Olim, D. Olim, Peter D. Olim, sounds like perhaps a Dutch name. Um, it says, thank you for all your videos and the work you do. I live up in Boston and I find that I learn a ton from your channel and gives me better insight on how to tweak things for coolsies and grass. Yeah, the biggest thing for coolsies and turf, when you listen, when you hear me talk, the big thing you need to pay attention to are the rates for fertilizer. So you tend, so coolsies and grass tends to require less nitrogen than warm season grass, so you can you tend to be able to back the rate down some for two, for cool season grass, and then for herbicides. So you would not spray like you hear me talk about Celsius and certainty all the time. Those are strictly for herbicide for um for warm season grass. You hear me talk about Spectacle Flow that is for warm season grass. So for cool season grass, you're gonna want to be using Tenacity, a three way, um you know something like that for for controlling weeds in cool season turf. Whereas again, for warm season turf, we got we got a lot of options. So that's the biggest thing you got to pay attention to is when it comes to herbicides. Like a uh, celeprin works the that works the same on cool and warm season. Um, uh, Headway works the same on cool and warm season. Like the ratio the same. Uh, what else? Um, Pillar SC like that fungicide same thing. Cool warm season same rates. It's really when it comes to it really is it's for for nitrogen inputs. When it comes to when it comes to the amount of of N. Um, amount of nutrients you're putting into the so into the soil um, that varies by grass type, um, and then obviously herbicides because herbicides that are selective that are safe for warm season grass typically are not safe for cool season grass and vice versa. So there are a couple of different there are a couple of uh, of um, of uh, caveats to that like like a triad like some of the some of the three ways will work on both warm and cool season uh, turf. Um, I think blindside will work on both warm and cool season turf, but in general, the herbicides that are designed for warm season turf, you don't want to spray on cool season lawns, and by the same um, extension, herbicides that are designed for cool season turf, like Tenacity, you really don't want to be spraying them on warm season lawns other than centipede grass, if you're treating crabgrass. So, uh, so yeah, so mo the majority of what I talk about really should apply to you, um, Peter. So I'm glad that you're getting some use out of it. So uh, thanks, I appreciate you being a, a, a viewer and for watching the content. Uh, Jordan Spivey says six to nine inches is fantastic. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I agree. Um, you're talking about um, what? Uh, who, Lord, who was it earlier in the in the live stream? We started out um, VMH. What VMH was talking about as far as like how how far his uh, the the core he's getting cores from? Yeah, six to nine inches is good, man. I really wouldn't worry about that. If, you, if you're getting that, I, I'd call it good. I would not be in a, in a rush to do another aeration. If the if your your tools are penetrating that um, you're getting nine nine inches, that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Cedric John Thompson says thanks for that uh, for that code. They dropped it off today. Uh, cool, Cedric. What code? I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I'm sure. I guess thanks. 
<laughs> Thanks, I guess. Um, but uh, but yeah, if you need anything, let me know. But I'm I'm trying to remember what what code I'm ta you're talking about. But um but okay. All right. Next up is um is uh, Jim Carson. Uh, he says Travis Smith, check out Sprinkler. Um, the sprinkler warehouse in Texas. Make sure you get a Wi-Fi model. Oh, you're talking about like uh, irrigation controllers? Yeah. D oh, here's the thing, guys. Definitely. I was one of these people, and I, I will admit it. I was one of these people that says, and I'm, I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. Where I, when I had my old Hunter, the old whatever it was, the little the little dial one, I was like, man, you don't really need a Wi-Fi. What well, you need a Wi-Fi irrigation controller? Not everything needs to be connected to the internet. You know, it's like a, it's a problem. It's like a problem. A solution search for a problem. You don't really need it. But oh man, I gotta tell you that being able to sit and just from anywhere, pretty much anywhere in the world, and just be able to you know run irrigation and just it's it's a it's a really nice, very convenient, very very convenient. So I highly recommend. I, I second Jim's um, sentiments as far as making sure that whatever irrigation controller you get, get one that is internet connected. Uh, so yes, but I would if you get one, put it on your guest network. Don't don't connect it to the, your to your to your main Wi-Fi because if you understand the way that like. What how, just connect it to your guest Wi-Fi? Don't connect it to your main one. I'm not gonna, it's, it's not like a like a, a thing channel. It's not a tech channel. But don't connect it to your main Wi-Fi. Connect it to your guest Wi-Fi. All right. Once again, we will celebrate that LG has um, been a channel member for 16 months. We're gonna we'll, we'll just clap it up again just because just because you know LG likes uh, he likes the applause. I appreciate all the love and support LG through the through thick and thin. You've been here through the many uh, you know giveaways that you did not. You know, come out on top. All you've won, I think you've won a couple. You've won at least one. I think maybe two. So there's that. But I appreciate you sticking around and being here, man. Uh, let's see. Um, Optic Cyclic says, uh, "How much do you pay for your material? The only place nearby has a blend. You could mention is eight, eighty-five dollars per cubic yard. Basic topsoil. In other places, I think this is probably not for me. Um, around here, you can buy it for like." Ninety dollars. I haven't bought. I haven't. I haven't priced the other stuff in a while. But it's like ninety dollars for the for the other, like the less expensive stuff delivered. And then the super sod is like a hundred and eighty, hundred and ninety uh, delivered. So it's a bit more expensive. But again, it's really good stuff. But I don't think that question was for me. I think it was for somebody else. And again, you're very welcome, uh, Ted. Thank you so much for watching. It, it would not be anything for me to do if you weren't here to watch the content. So I appreciate that. Okay, Saul Rodriguez says, what is the best herbicide for weeds on Bermuda? Depends on the weeds. Um, in, in my opinion, there is, there's not a, a single, um, not a single that control that will control all of them. If I could only have one herbicide for, um, one post emergent herbicide for Bermuda grass, it would be, um, it would be Celsius. If I could only have one, it would be this because this controls like a broad range of weeds. Um, and it doesn't have any temperature restrictions. Like you can spray it when it, the temperature is cool, you can spray it when it's hot, and it produces a great result. It kills a lot of stuff, doesn't damage your grass. Um, as far as um, for grassy weeds and for uh, for sedges, like you, it, you can't really beat certainty. Like this stuff is awesome against any of the sedges, and it's also great against poanua as well. So if you're asking me what's the best herbicide for weed to control weeds in Bermuda, these two put together, these two mixed together is a really tough combination to beat. Here's the thing, I believe in that so much that on the store, on the golf course lawn store, if you go to shop and the weed killer section, we have a kit that has Celsius certainty, also includes some surfactant and marker dye. Um, and this, I mean, these two, between these two, it's gonna clean up like you know 90%, 95% of the weeds that you're gonna have in a warm season uh, lawn. The weeds that they don't control, are like uh, like Dallas grass. Like Dallas grass is not going to control that. Um, it's like certainty will suppress it, but nothing really kills Dallas grass currently that is labeled for use on residential lawns. So, for crabgrass, spurge, dove weed, for like I mean for t tons of different types of weeds, um, stickers, uh, burr weed. I mean you, you name it. Um, wild onions. I mean this this combination. This will do it, and then for sedges, like this, this will take care of any of your green nut sedge, um, all the kalingas. Um, if you have poa in the springtime, uh, certainty. So these two together, it, these two with um, with surfactant is um, that's it. That's money. That, that's that's that. This is all you need to keep on the shelf for cleaning up weeds in um, in a warm season in a Bermuda lawn. It, and Celsius will even kill crabgrass if you catch it when it's young. 
If you wait till like summertime to try and kill crabgrass, then you, then you got to bring out like quinclorac. But if you if you're spraying young crabgrass, uh, Celsius will even do that as well. So um, that is what I would recommend, Saul. I will give you a link to them on the store where you can find them. Um, so, um, Celsius and Certainty is what I would say to use on any kind of warm season turf. Oh, I'll say this. <laughs> Let me correct that. All warm season turf other than Bahia grass. You can spray Celsius and Certainty in all on all warm season grass other than Bahia, and you can't spray Celsius on Bahia, but you can spray Certainty on Bahia. So Certainty you can spray on all warm season grass. Celsius you can spray on all warm season grass other than Bahia. And Bermuda, you're good to go. You can spray that combination on Bermuda with no problem at all. So I hope that helps. If you need any, have any other questions, let me know. And in the description, the link I gave you there in the description of those video, of those uh, products, you'll see a video that has um, that shows how I like to mix it. There's different ways of doing it, but it shows how I like to use it to, and it that produces a a good result, especially if you're spraying it when temperatures are warmer. Um, because the rate that I show in that video is on the lower end. It's really a rate that's designed for controlling sedges, not so much for POA. So if you're trying to control POA in your lawn, then you're going to want to bump the rate on certainty up. But if you're trying to control sedges, um, then what you see in that video will work just fine. All right, next up is Mason RC. He says, I emailed you earlier in the week about Biospectrum. Thank you for your help and advice. I got it down and anxiously waiting to see how well this works. I never used a product like this before. Nice, yeah. I mean, with Biospectrum, remember, you're not gonna, it's not a fertilizer, but what you're gonna find is it's, um, you know, the fertilizer that you apply is going to work better. So here, here's how I, uh, I measure the effectiveness of like a biostimulants. Um, Bermuda grass really calls for about a pound of nitrogen, really starting now, like May all the way through August to all through August, a pound of nitrogen per month whenever the grass is actively growing, right? By using biosimilants like like Essential G, like Biospectrum, by using anything that helps improve um, the microbial activity and, and allows your soil to work better, um, you're going to be able to to apply less product or less put less inputs in and still get a good result. And overall, the lawn is also going to man manage stress better than if you don't use kelp products. If you don't um, you know, if you don't do things to help improve nutrient availability. So um, it's not like Biospectrum. Biospectrum is not a fertilizer. So it's not like you're going to apply it and you're like, oh, wow, my lawn's greener now because I use Biospectrum. It's, 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 not, it's not that way. Um, it's, more of, it's more of something that you're adding to help improve how well the fertilizers that you put into your soil work. That's the way you need to look, think about Biospectrum. All right, so next up we have, uh, let's see, not, um, yeah, Ryan Kramer says, at Cedric Dree, um, Keystone Rental in Duluth has the whole trailer with the dingo. Yeah, and again, tell Dan that Ron sent you and tell him to be nice. Tell him that he can't charge you double um, if you, um, you know, if you come by there. So I'm just, he, he, he's, Dan's a really good guy. He'll talk your air off. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great guy. And, um, and, and take good care of the product. I mean, take good care of, their, of that equipment because there's very few places that, that will rent a package like that and we don't want to be tearing it up because then they'll be like, you know what, we don't want to get out of this business. So make sure you guys are taking care of the equipment whenever you rent it from them. Make sure you return it clean and, you know, all that fun stuff. All right, T. Mitchell is up next. Says, we enjoy the show. Thanks. Keep up the great work. I appreciate that, TJ. I mean, it's a fun place for us lawn care nerds to hang out on a Friday night, right? And talk about turf and just cut up and laugh and have a good time. Drama-free zone. That's what we try and keep here, right? Talk about grass and other stuff, but for the most part, try and keep it drama-free. All right, so here in the um, Instagram, we got the Truckers Champ 31 says, what up, Ron? Not too much. I'm doing well. Excited for the warmer weather coming, coming our way, you know? So yeah, it's a great time of year. You know, everyone says, you know, Christmas is the most wonderful time of year if you're a grass nerd and you're like a Bermuda, you have like a warm season turf, like May time frame. I, I would argue that is like the most wonderful time of year. All right. Um, John K. Power says, I just want to second the appreciation for your best in class shipping from the golf course lawn store. I'm all excited to get my orders and they always get here quick. I can't always say that for other places. We try, man. I mean, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes there's, there's delay. Sometimes stuff gets lost. But it, believe me, if there's a delay or problem, it's not for lack of effort. You know, I am, I, I try really, really hard to get stuff out as quickly as possible. And the, the partners that we work with, you know, I always, were, you know, I, I I work with them and say, hey, listen, guys, you know, it's got to ship fast. It's got to, you know, when people, when, whenever, whenever the or people put their order in, it's like tick tock, the time, the time's running. We got to make sure they get their stuff to, to them because, you know, grass, grass has to be, uh, grass has to be fed, you know, domination has to happen. And, you know, we are standing in the way of that happening. So we got to make sure we get stuff out to, to folks uh, as soon as they order as quickly as possible. So 
So uh, we do we do our best to make that happen. So I'm glad that that we are meeting your expectations, uh, John. Again, it doesn't always happen, but we, we do our best to um, to do that. Uh, Trucker says, how do you actually get into lawn care? Um, so just over time. So it's something I've been, it started out, believe it or not, as a hobby. Started coming up on nine years now, nine years ago. Some of the content on my channel goes back that far. And I have um, like a lot of good friends in the turf grass industry that took me under their wing, that taught me a lot of stuff, a lot of experimentation on, on, um, on, my, on my end. And uh, it's just grown over over the years into what you um, into what you see now. So just um, again, there's a lot a lot of a lot of help from a lot of people that are smarter than me um, that taught me a lot. And then also just playing in the lawn and doing it. It's, it's one thing to have theory, right? Like everyone can have theory, but there's nothing nothing really beats doing it, right? So you learn you learn what works, what doesn't work, what works in your lawn that doesn't necessarily transfer over to other people's lawns. And that's a lot of what I, tr I try and do with the, um, with the store, with the Gulf Force Lawn Store, and also the content that we put out, that, um, it, that, it, that like it's, it's easy for me to go out and create like my lawn and my lawn to be awesome, right? But what's really cool, right, is whenever I can put together a program and that other people that are, that are into their lawns but not really as hardcore about it as I am can follow and still get a really good result, that's when you're doing something, right? So it's, again, theory, theory is, is, is fine and good, but execution beats all things, right? So that's, that's a big part of, um, one, the products that we carry because I wanna make sure that they are ones that are easy to use and that, are, that, that I'm confident can produce a good result and also the content both in YouTube and also what's on the blog on the store, um, it's, it's really catered for a broader, for a broader audience so that, you know, for, for someone that is just starting out, you got content for that. And for people that are really want to get down deep into the weeds, into, you know, really, you know, really nerding out, um, that's what the Golf Course Atlantic Academy is for, right? So you got different different levels of of, um, of, of, of instruction, depending on what you want to uh, get into. So, so yeah, that's, that's me and lawn care in a nutshell. Believe it or not, when I was younger, I actually hated mowing grass because my dad made me do it over the weekend. And instead of going fishing, I had to go mow, mow grass. So, as you get older, you turn into your dad, right? All right, so you're asking, how low should you go when cutting grass before leveling? This um, will be the project in the fall. I'm a fan of going between an inch to an inch, so an inch and a half or lower is the, is the way I would answer that. I, I'm a fan of going an inch and a half or lower, mainly because it's easier to move the top dressing mix around, and it's also easier to see where you have, um, where the low spots are in the lawn. Uh, to help with that, uh, the truckers, um, and you said you wait. Your oh, your grass type. Your grass is turf type tall fescue. Ugh. Um, yeah, I don't. You can't. I don't think you can cut turf type tall fescue that short, man. You're you're gonna you're gonna make it angry. Hmm. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, you could probably take turf type tall fescue down to two inches and not make it too upset. But um, but an inch and a half or lower is probably not gonna. It's probably not gonna do too well with that. So maybe two inches, two and a half, like on the low end for turf tactile fescue. And, uh, you know, then then you could do your top dressing based on that. Most people that top dress their lawns, most of them, it's it's something that, not so you can't top dress a turf tile, uh, a fescue lawn, but majority is for people, most people that do that tend to do um, grass types where it is shorter cut turf, you know what I mean? So you can still absolutely do it with fescue, but I mean, yeah, my advice as far as cutting it down to an inch and a half or shorter, um, I wouldn't do that with fescue. It's gonna, you're gonna give it a, a pretty nasty ouchie if you do that. Um, and then as far as some help that you can read that's easy, um, check out this blog post. It's all about um, all about top dressing. So two and a half, two inches um, in your case for other grass types that will tolerate being cut shorter below an inch and a half for the reasons that I said. You can top dress a lawn. You can, you, in other words, could you top dress a Bermuda lawn that is growing at three inches? Yes, you can, but it's a lot more work. It's a lot more work to one, move the material around, and it's harder to see where the low spots are in the lawn when the turf is that long. So you can do it, but you will get a better result, and it is easier to do if the grass is a bit shorter. So in your case with, with fescue, you can top dress it with it being longer, but just prepare for more work as far as you know moving the material around and getting getting it worked in properly into the uh, into the lawn. So hope that that link um, to, that, to that blog post helps you out. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. All right, uh, next up we have Alexander Sackman. He says, hey Ron, loving the live stream, great info. 
Uh, thanks so much for that, I appreciate it. Because I'm going to scarify my Zoysia this weekend and apply Turflex after. Would it be okay to mix in some growth regulator? Yes, yes, I would highly, I mean, yeah, answer the question is yes. Um, I'm not sure if this will help or hurt the recovery. It's it's not really going to, um, here's the thing. If you're, when you're scarifying or you're turf raking, you shouldn't be going so aggressive that the lawn really like needs to recover. You see what I'm saying? It should be light. It should be when you turf rake, you don't want to be too aggressive. You shouldn't be getting into the into the uh, into the the, the the soil at all. Um, what should look what it should look like after you're done turf raking is the stripe should be very well defined, and then you should you should see that a lot of the grass that was might have been laying down will be standing up. And then once you mow it, the lawn should look really good. The stripe should be awesome, really well defined, really crisp, but you should not see a bunch of bare spots and a bunch of missing areas of the lawn after you're done turf raking. If you do that, if you see that, you're doing it wrong. It needs to be, it needs, you need to be at the most aggressive two millimeters above the surface. You don't want, you don't want the turf rake getting down into the dirt to where you're ripping chunks of, you know, chunks of, uh, of, of lawn out, that's uh, of turf out. That's not, that's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to, to gently, reduce thatch and to remove debris out of the lawn. So what I would say is make multiple passes at a higher setting and gently and gently step your way down to remove material out of the, um, to reduce thatch in your lawn. And uh, if you do it that way, then yes, there's no problem with using a growth regulator along with it, using Primo along um, with your Turfplex. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put you this way. My lawn is already under regulation. Um, it will be that way until September-ish time frame, depending on temperatures. And I will be, I turf rake the lawn weekly and it's still going to be, again, it's still going to be, have, um, it's being under regulation the entire time. So yeah, it's not like, uh, like, right, like being, having growth regulator on the lawn and, um, and turf raking are two things you can't do together. But again, I don't like destroy the lawn when I get out there and I turf rake it. It's, it's a very gentle process. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not aggressive. So as long as you're doing that, you're going to be just fine. And I think, yeah, that, I think that was it. I think it was the only question that you, uh, that you had. You said, um, I'll apply to reflex. I'm wondering if the PGR, it, it, you know, it won't hurt recovery. And with the scarifying, like I said, just don't go too aggressive. All right, next up, we got Gary Kellett Jr. He says, happy Friday, Ron. I plan on throwing down some 1608 Humic Max next week. Love that. I also bought Anderson's Humic DG. Can I also put that down later this month also? By the way, Anderson isn't a fertilizer. What is Humic DG? Is it, is that the, is that their, um, what's it called? Is it Humichar? Is Humichar the Humic DG? Hang on a second here, let me look here real quick. Humic DG. Uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Yeah, organic soil amendment looks like. Um, yeah, if it's not a fertilizer, if it's basically like what Essential G is or Carbon Pro G is, uh, yeah, fulvic acid, humic acid, hum. Yeah, you can do this at the same time. You could do that. You could do them both on the same day if you wanted to. Um, if I were gonna do an order, I would do um the um the the humic product that you're gonna apply, and then I would do humic max afterwards. Because I've gotten this question like a bajillion times this year already, I don't know what's going on this year, but I keep getting the question over and over. I, I create a quick short showing the, the order that I like to apply lawn care products in. And just for completeness, I will link it here in the chat again for you guys. What order, what order to apply products in? Again, this is not the uh, only way to do it but this is how I do it and it served me well. And I explain my logic in the video. So hopefully that makes sense to you. It's only 60 seconds, um, but the long short of it is I will do granular biosimilants first. I'll do essential G first, then I'll do granular fertilizer next. So it'll be essential G, humic max, and then I will spray the carbon kit along with any liquid fertilizers and, and growth regulators. So it would be essential G, humic max, and then the carbon kit um, and Primo go along with any other, any fertilizer I'm using go in the tank that I'll get sprayed all together. And then if I were spraying, say like an insecticide or a fungicide, I would do that later in the day because the um, the the carbon kit and all the, the fertilizers that we carry, the liquids that we carry on the store do not need to be watered in after application. Primo also does not need to be watered in after after application. So the idea is you you put down your granulars first, which do need to be watered in, right? And then you would spray the liquids afterwards, which kind of helps in a very light way to kind of help push them down a little bit, um, allow that to dry. 
and then you'd run your irrigation either later on in the day or the following day to water in the uh, the Humic Max fertilizer. And if you're doing like a like an insecticide, a liquid insecticide or fungicide, you could do that later in the day and again run irrigation um, the following day to water those in. So that's in a nutshell of how I do it, and that video captures that in a more concise way than I just did it because the video is only 60 seconds, and I think I just went on longer than that. But yes, you can do them. You can do them both. And he says it's only a biosimulant. Yeah. So do that, do the Humic DG, and then do Humic Max. And then anything else that you're applying on that day. No problem at all with doing that. All right, Jimmy Miller is up next. He says, I sprayed 16,000 square feet of Tiff Tub Bermuda with Celsius Uncertainty, loving the results, but is there a better dye than blue or a better way to see where you spray? Can't see it too well, and it's super messy. Mm, I mean, the stuff that I use is this. So I use the Turf Mark. Where is it? Uh, weed Killer. This stuff. Nope, didn't click. This stuff is um, it's it shows up pretty well, man. I mean, I I, I mean, Jibby, I might say you might want to you might want to boost use how much you're using. I mean, you can use half an ounce in four gallons. That's a bit light. You can go up to an ounce or in um with four gallons of water. I mean, that's you can probably still go a little heavier than that if you want. But I mean, I, I find one ounce in four gallons of water of Turf Mark is plenty. Like this stuff is very potent. It shows up shows up really well, even on a green lawn. It's it's pretty easy to see where you've sprayed and where you haven't sprayed. So what I would say is if you've not used Turf Mark, give this a go. This is, um, um, it's a great, it's a great spray indicator. It's a great, great product. And it's not gonna permanently uh, stain your turf, uh, stain your, uh, your, your hardscapes. If you get it on sidewalks or, your patio is not going to permanently stain that. So I that's one thing I've not heard. I've heard that about other marker uh, dyes. Like people about um, said that about the blue laser blue that it didn't didn't work quite as well. But I've never heard that about turf mark. So if you've not tried this, give this a shot. Um, I think you will be pleasantly surprised with the uh, with the results um, if you use that. That shows up really well on the lawn. Okay, next we got Jeremy, uh, Jeffrey, not Jeremy, Jeffrey Lancaster. He says, Ron, I got my lawn aerated. See, see, see Jeff, Jeffrey was smart. He's like, y'all are crazy. I'm not doing it myself. He says, he says, I got my lawn aerated. I mean, I paid someone to do that, to do it for me. I got it paid to get it aerated and top dress right before May 1st, uh, edition of complete 14714 and release 901C and added Primo. Will it take longer to return? So do I not add Primo on the 15th? Yeah, so what you can do, if you already did spray the Primo, you've already done that, that ship has sailed. But if you want it to, to recover faster, you could simply omit it um, on the 15th, on the May 15th um, application, assuming the lawn isn't recovered by then anyway, right? So if, if you look at it on the 15th and say, wow, the lawn has already bounced back, it's looking pretty good, then continue with your growth regulator program. If you look at it and you say, eh, it's, it's not coming back as quickly as I would like, then you can omit it, allow the lawn to, um, to recover, um, and then reintroduce it once you're happy with how it looks and then regulate from there on out. I can tell you, I have in the in the past, I don't know, five years, my lawn has been sprayed, has pretty much been under regulation every time it's been sprayed here in past years. So, but again, I go light and it doesn't take very long for the lawn to, to, uh, to bounce back. So there is that. So if you want to recover as soon as possible, do not spray Primo. And once, because once you're done, once it bounces back, you can... You can introduce Primo and you're, you're good to go from there on out uh, for the rest of the uh, rest of the season. Jim Carson is up next. He says, thanks, Ron. SoCal here. I have a 180 square foot lawn. Okay, yes, yeah, so you don't need it very much. Um, I already have Essential G, small yard, only 200 characters. Makes it tough to get all the information in. Yes, my new push mower, uh, my new push lawn mower. Thanks for the link. You're very, very welcome. Yeah, so in your case, Jim, you could get like a, a bag or two. If you want to go heavy, get like a bag or two of, of carbonized PN and spread that and then just do sand on top of it and you're going to be you're going to be great. You're going to be good to go. Or in your case, Essential G, just go really heavy with that. And uh, yeah, again, you'll be happy days. You'll be uh, living your best life. It doesn't take much. That's one thing. That's one one benefit, man. I mean, sometimes I get um, email from people and say, hey man, I got like two acres and I want, and I want to you know make my lawn look like a golf course lawn. I'm like, man, I said, I, you have no idea what you're asking for. One, it's going to be really expensive, and the amount of time it's going to take is uh, you don't realize what you're, what you're asking for. So there is something to be said for a smaller lawn that it doesn't, one, like from a standpoint of products, you don't need as much, and it, it doesn't take as much to make a smaller area look really good. You know what I mean? So 
There is something to be said for that, uh, Jim. Next up is Ignacio Paez. He says, hey, Ron, just did a light scalp. I'm leveling over 300 square feet of Tiff Tough in Central Texas. Soil temps finally consistently over 75. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised by that, Ignacio. Again, around here, you know, yesterday, last night was the last night when the soil temps got down into the 40s. From here on out, it's 50s going forward. So if you were going to do Bermuda, a Bermuda grass renovation, you know, via hard mode, if you want to turn on hard mode, now would be the time to do it because it's warm enough, like the soil temps are going to be consistently warm enough that you're going to get great germination and uh, all you have to do is just water it a whole lot, right? So, so yeah, we are, uh, we are good to go. We are good to go at this point. Next is Joseph Atkins. He says, when you fertilize your lawn with granules, would you advise to water more heavily to ensure the, the fertilizer gets into the soil? Not necessarily more heavily. A quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch is, is typically all you really need, especially if you are using, if you're using these guys, let me go over to the other camera. If you're using um, like the ADSGN stuff, so the very fine prill, so this is the complete or stress, or you're here using Humic Max, these guys are really, it's a very small prill, so it doesn't take very much to get this down to the soil profile. Now, if you're not using either one of these, and you're using one of these guys, like this is your standard fertilizer prill, this is like what you're gonna find in a lot of, um, you know, all the online fertilizers, and also what you'll find at Home Depot, or any of the big box stores, like this, you may wanna water a bit more, maybe half an inch, to make sure it, it gets off the grass into the soil, but these two guys, it really doesn't take very much to water them in, um, you know, to get them past the canopy and in the soil for them to begin um, begin working. So to answer your question, no, I would not run a super heavy irrigation cycle. Your normal irrigation cycle should be just fine. Uh, Jeffrey Lancaster is back. He says, um, Ron, I forgot to ask, how do you tell what type of Bermuda you have? I have a drainage issue that I have to address with fill dirt and then sod by about four, four by 12 feet. Uh, you can, you can, if you can get a, um, a sample of it, the answer to your question is visually is not really, it's not necessarily easy to tell. You, you can send it to one of the extension offices and they might be able to tell you. Um, but I can, but what I'll say is this, if your lawn, if your lawn or your house were, was, was built in the last, if you're in Georgia and it was built in the last 15 years, um, more and you, and you didn't pay extra to have like Tiff Tough or Zoysia put in, more than likely it's going to be 419. More than likely if you have if you have a, a, a lawn that was, you know, that was any, like all the lawns around here, all the houses have been built in this subdivision, like all of them are 419. Like all the ones down the street, they're all 419. So if your lawn was recently built, again, in the last, you know, 15 years and you're in the Southeast, more than likely it's 419 unless you pay to have, you know, because Tiff Tough is more expensive, Celebrations is more expensive. Um, to home at thirty one is more expensive. Like you got to pay to have those. Like they're, they're like, like, that's an extra that's an extra cost versus like Tiffway four nineteen. So it's more than likely Tiffway. If you want to know for sure, you can send it off to um, the extension office. But here's the thing I would say, right? And it's a four by twelve section is a fairly big area. It's a it's forty eight square feet, right? So it's not not a small area. But even if it is Tiffway four nineteen. Not all Tiffway 419 will look the same. And I know you think, well, why is that the case? That shouldn't be the case. But I've experienced it myself firsthand that it's not all the same. They don't all look the same. So if you are, you want to ensure that it matches as perfectly as possible, meaning when this is all done, we're all past this, you do the irrigation work or the drainage work. And, you know, when a month or two from, from now, you look down the road and, and the grass is beginning to grow in and starting to recover. And you want to ensure that it matches as perfectly as possible the existing lawn. What I would recommend is to not do sod and to plug it. Like, like get plugs of, of the areas of your lawn that are very strong and transfer that into this area that you're going to do all this work. That way, you know, there's a hundred percent that it will match um, perfectly. If you, you know, if you bring sod in, it's, there's a, I mean, I think it's a strong likelihood, but there is a chance that even if it's the same grass type, if it's, even if it's 419, that it's not going to match your existing lawn. And if, if that kind of thing bothers you where the color is slightly different, if it's going to drive you crazy, then it's really hard to correct once it's in. Like you can't, like the thing with Bermuda is like, once it's in, it's in. It's really hard to get rid of. So just something to keep in mind, um, you know, as far as your the project the project that you're doing, it's more it's more than likely uh, 419 if your lawn is new, relatively new. But um, but even if it's 419, you know, it's, there's no guarantee that if you get 419 saw that it's going to match what you currently have in your lawn. Uh, well, perfect example like my neighbor, not Alex, but the one that's um, I don't know, like a not like a pitching wedge 
like um, at like two o'clock from my from my patio. Um, he his lawn is all Tiffway 419, but like you can, but part of it, like whenever the the, lot, the house was built, the builder only did sod, I don't know, like 20 feet away, 20 or 30 feet away from the back of the house. And then the rest of it he had done later on. And they're both Tiffway 419. And if you walk out there and you look, if I stand on the back of, back of my lawn, I look at his lawn, you can clearly see where one lawn, one grass, like where the sod, the original sod is, and the other sod that he put in, both of which are Tiffway 419, where you can see where they meet. And, th and that lawn is, was the house was built in like 2008. So that lawn is uh, well over 10 years, like 15 years, 15, 16 years old, and you can still see the difference between them. So just something to keep in mind before you start mixing, start bringing sod into your lawn. Just something to, something, something to consider. I know it takes longer for it to recover if you do the plug route, but that way you are guaranteed that it is going to match. All right, next up is, is Scary uh, Peeper. He says, hey, Ron, uh, happy Cinco de Mayo. Best um, sand from big box store for top dressing a few spots. Is play sand okay? Thank you, appreciate all you do. I'm not a fan of you, I'm personally not a fan of using play sand for doing leveling. I just, I I, I prefer to use a coarse, a coarse uh, sand. So if you can find like a masonry sand in the big box store, some of them will carry that, like masonry sand, that is what I would go with. Um, I mean, for a small area, if you wanna use some play sand, fine. But I mean, I would not go out and buy you know, 50 bags of play sand and use that to level your lawn. I would I would get masonry sand in uh, instead of play sand. Um, so yeah, that's river sand or masonry sand is what I would say to go with a, a, a slightly coarser sand. Like if you look at the if you look at you, the the sand that that the USGA uses for greens, it is not play sand. It is it is coarser. It is more coarse than than uh, than uh, than play sand is. So uh, so there is that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Matt Jones says, do you know if ammonium nitrate is still available? I remember using it many years ago, best fertilizer ever. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think, um, cause you can use it, you can use it for other things. I think they use, there are other forms of nitrate that are used in fertilizer these days, Ahmad, cause ammonium nitrate can be used for, um, uh, less than good things. Um, so, so yeah. Um, we got Tom Hoffenkamp. He says, uh, happy lawn, happy lawn, lawn and y'all. That's a new one. Happy lawn and y'all. Uh, thanks, Ron, for all your hard work. I appreciate it, uh, Tom. Thank you for all the support. Uh, we have a question here on the gram from DJ O'Shea. Uh, DJ O'Shea uh, says, I live in Georgia. I got new Bermuda sod late in November. Should I aerate and top dress this year or hold off till next year? You can do both. You can... Uh, you can I mean, if it's if it's established, DJ uh, O'Shea, meaning it's rooted in. In other words, if the lawn looks, if the lawn does not look like it was just sod, like it's already rooted in, it's already established, looks good. Um, you know, in other words, if it looks like a like a like a like a, an established lawn, like you're, not, you're still not seeing the lines like where the sod went down. Um, you can aerate it. If you're trying to be really conservative, what you can do is just top dress it and just and hold off on the aeration. If you're afraid of potentially pulling it up or anything like that, you could not aerate and just do just the top dressing. So top dressing, 100%, yes, you, can, you that's, that's definitely a go. Aeration, if the lawn is established, that would be a go as well too. So if you're asking, if it were me, would I aerate my lawn, uh, aerate a lawn that was, that was established in November of last year? If it's Bermuda, yes. Um, but again, it depends on how it looks now. Is it, is it, is it established? Is it, you know, does it look like a lawn or does it still look like rows where you can see the different squares where the sod was put in? So depending on that, you can decide whether or not you want to aerate. Um, either way, you're good to go on the top dressing. Cool, we got Mackenzie Jones. What's going on, Mackenzie? What's going on, Kenzie? Uh, I see her in the live stream. Hopefully you're doing well and uh, and having a, having a good time. You gotta, you guys, you guys gotta come by and visit, man. You guys gotta come to, uh, to, to RSK and come visit us. You guys have forgotten about us. You know, feelings are hurt. Feelings are hurt. All right, next up is uh, Lavendi. He says, uh, it's three months enough time that a professional company should have knocked out sedges. I don't want to be um, uh, unbalanced, but it's getting to me. Uh, three months, yeah, yeah. I mean, three months, sedges are pretty easy to kill. I mean, like, uh, I mean, depending what, depending on what kind of, um, sedges in warm season turf are pretty easy to kill. So, I mean, this, this will kill sedges in warm season turf in, two weeks, right? So, so yeah, I mean, do you, do they know, I mean, try, in defense of the professional lawn care company, do they know that you have sedges in your lawn and that you want, I mean, obviously they made it, they, if they knew that you wanted gone, they would do that, but do they know that that's, that's a problem in your lawn? Because perhaps what they're spraying 
right now isn't, uh, maybe they're not putting certainty in the tank, right? To spray for sedges. So I, I might reach out to them and say, hey, listen, I got sedges in my lawn. Can you guys please come out and spray something to take care of the sedges? And you might even say, hey, if you got certainty, I've heard that works really well against sedges. Um, but yeah, three months should not, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't take three months to kill, to kill sedges. But I mean, you must be um, in like, Florida, like South Florida or like South Texas, somewhere where it's really hot because sedges really aren't a thing in Latin Georgia as yet. They're not like, like nut sedge. None of that stuff is really growing in here as yet. It's not hot enough for it as yet. So I imagine that you must be like in South Florida or like South Texas or something. I love any, but the answer, answer to the question is if they know about it and they're actively trying to kill the sedges, it should not take three months to kill sedges. If they don't know about it, then yeah, because they might not be spraying something that, you know, they might be spraying like a, like a three-way or something, which has some very little control against like some sedges, but it's not great. Really, if you're trying to kill sedges in warm season turf, you need to use certainty. Like this and surfactant will, um, will get it done. So I would talk to them and just make sure that they understand that's what you want, what's going on in your lawn and that they need to take care of it. And then if they still don't kill them after like another month, then maybe you can just go, I don't know, take care of it yourself. Just get certainty and do it yourself then. Uh, so there's that. All right, uh, Benjamin Kane says, uh, do you recommend super sod leveling mix or um, do you recommend super sod leveling mix? Is it an all organic or mixture? Additionally, do they deliver to, Ma to Madison, Alabama? They do deliver to Alabama. I don't know if they deliver to Madison, Alabama and the leveling mix, um, I recommend the leveling mix. So they, they, hang on, let me see if I can pull it up here. Do I have... I do. Okay, I can show that. So you have, uh, let me see here. Let me find the actual link because this is going to, this, this is taking you to the actual top dressing, the actual product. I'm trying to find the page that it's going to drop you on. So this one. So if we go here, it's going to take you to this, right? So you have just the compost, right? Which is just the big yellow bag. You would not want, if your goal is to level, you would not want to use this. What you'd want to use is the level mix, which is 30% of this stuff, of their soil cube, the hummus compost, and 70% 70, 70 uh, USGA sand. So this is a blend of organic material in the form of compost and 70% sand. So this is the stuff you're going to want to use if you want to um, if you're gonna, if you want to level your lawn, if that's if that's your goal, um, the code. If you want to save some money, use this link at Benjamin Kane. It will take some more off of whatever sale they are currently running. I mean, not a ton, but it'll take some off of which you, it didn't cost you any more. It'll save you a little bit of money, and it's a way to support the channel if you want to do so as well. Um, and you have to find out if they'll deliver to Matt to Madison, um, Alabama. I don't know. I don't know that. All right, Brew Crew Fishing says, Happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, Brews Cruise? And then Alexander says, Thanks for answering my question. You're very, very welcome, sir. Thank you for asking the question. It was a good one. And uh, let's see here. Matt Jackson says, I laid down five, um, I laid down five pallets of Xeon Zoysia, hoping the shady spots survive. I trim the trees. Yeah, I mean, all, all as much as you can do to get um, direct sunlight on that zoysia, it's going to do better. Zoysia is better than Bermuda from a standpoint of, of dealing with less sunlight, but it still does better with a lot of direct sunlight. So anything you can do, you know, cut trees up, raise the canopy, you know, thin the, thin the trees out, anything you can do to get more direct sunlight on that zoysia, it's going to do better. It's going to do better. So, uh, so yeah, sounds like a fun project, man. Keep me posted on how it, uh, on how it does. Let's see here. Um, oh yeah, Tom Havenkamp says, maybe it helps others. I had loads of seed heads a week ago, could not believe the intensity and honesty. Was at one and a quarter inches of Bermuda. I took it down to 0.75. Um, wow, last year, 1.1 1 .1 and a quarter was a sweet spot. Now 0.75 is pretty uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, so, and seed heads really, uh, guys, if you, um, if you don't have seed heads in your lawn yet, you are going to experience that really later this month. For most people, it's a two to three week problem. It's a stress response in the grass. You can use um, Primo, you can use Growth Regulator. This is a way to help suppress seed heads to make them to make them less um, less apparent. It's just gonna, it's gonna reduce how much you're gonna have seed head problems in your lawn. But if you are, again, if your soil is healthy and it's getting enough water, um, you should, uh, it should only be a two to three week problem in your lawn. Back to Tom's point here, 
as far as 0.75, yes, it is. It is um, again, for me, that's a sweet spot for a real mowing Bermuda. And you says, question, as the lawn ages, does the optimum height of cut change? Not really. I mean, 0.75 I found is still, like I, I, I did that in the past. I started like taller than that. I, I went to 0.75 and then I said, you know what? I'm gonna go really hardcore and try and go like below half an inch. Let's see what that looks like. And it does look pretty cool, but it's a whole lot of work. And in my opinion, the juice is not worth the squeeze. So 0.75 is, uh, is where I would say, and that's where I'm gonna keep the lawn. So no, I wouldn't. It, it, the, 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 the optimum height of cut is based on um, one, Thing one is, can your grass tolerate being cut at that high to cut? Bermuda, yes, all day long. And then second is how much time do you have? Because the shorter you go, the more you have to mow it, you know, to keep it green between mowings. If you go, you know, at, 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 a, at 0.75 or three quarters of an inch, you, you figure you can technically cut off, you know, 0.25 or whatever, um, you know, that's a third of the, of the length of the grass and still keep the lawn green between mowings. When you get down to half an inch or lower, it's like 0.17. You know, if you get even shorter than that, it's less and less. So as you go shorter, the amount of grass you can take off um, between mowings and still have it say green between mowings becomes less and less and less. And the problem is, is that it's not like a, it's not like grass at like point at like a, under half an inch grows sh grows slower than grasses at three quarters of an inch, right? So the grass is still growing for the most part at the same rate. But the mowing, so the mowing frequency has to has to pick up, has to has to to be has to increase to make sure the grass stays um, good, look, looks good between mowings. You know, so 0.75 is what I, is where I would recommend. That's a good height of cut that looks great, great color, great stripe action, and real mowing won't ruin your life um, if you go with that height. In my opinion, that's what that's what I would say to go with. All right, Ryan uh, Wolfel is up. He says, "Hey, Ron, uh, did a second soil test." Four weeks after doing a topper's application, my pH is saying 7.77 versus the test in February. It says 6.71. Should I be worried about this, the sudden increase? I would give it some time. That's a, that's a pretty large jump. Um, that's a pretty large jump to happen in a four week a four week swing. That's uh, I mean maybe maybe the pH of this of the soil that, or the material you brought in maybe it was a more alkaline. Uh, um, product, you know, but our, our, our material, but um, like the entire, your entire soil profile did not go, I mean, that's a big, that's a pity, that's a very big jump for four weeks, um, Ryan. So I, I, let's do this. Give it more time. Let's give it, let's give it, let's give it three months. Give it three months. Let, let it, let what you've, what you've applied settle, uh, integrate, and then pull cores again, pull, get another, do another soil test and see what you measure then. Cause that seems, that's a, that's, that's a pretty big jump for only, for only four weeks, um, so yeah, I would I would give it more time. That's uh, that seems like a, that seems pretty big to me. And uh, so to answer your question, should you would, would I be worried about it? No, I wouldn't worry about it because I think something's going on there. That's that's a that's a pretty big jump to only happen in a, in a four week period. Because I'm in San Antonio, Texas, with clay soil, my sul my sulfur, calcium, and sodium are also really high. That welcome to living in Central Texas. Like that's everyone's soil in Central Texas. Like all the soil test results that I look at for that area, calcium, not always necessarily sodium, but calcium and sulfur are always uh, always high. Calcium is normally off the scale, off the scale high. Uh, what I'm seeing uh, from when I see a lot of the the results there. So um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't worry about it too much, um, Ryan. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do you can do about it. Uh, let's see. Matt Jackson says, "How soon can you top dress new sod? Wait until you can you start mowing it. That's if you're trying to be super conservative. That's how long I would wait. Wait till you're done mowing. When you start mowing it, then you can top dress it. Because you think about it, right? When you put down brand new sod, you don't want to. You're not trying to walk on it and get all over it. And you know, you typically rope it off and keep people off of it. So when you get to the point where you're out there regularly and you're out there mowing it regularly, then you can um, then you can you can get out there, you can consider top dressing it." So, uh, so, so, uh, that's, that is what I would say. Uh, let's see. JB is up next is I am currently dissolving ammonia sulfate. Okay. Um, with my liquids, I have alkaline, alkaline, high pH soil, and I've read ammonium sulfate helps reduce pH levels. Uh, no, do I see any issues with this? No, it's a way to increase. It's a, it's a way to, 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 um, to acidify, to, to lower pH. Yeah. That's no, um, to, to lower the pH levels in your soil. Yeah. No problem with that. Um, Jay. No problem with that. Uh, let's see here. Um, Bermuda guy says, I'm in Northeast Georgia and I have a ton of sedges. I'm spraying this weekend. Are you sure it's sedges and not POA? Because uh, again, it's still, 
it's still relatively early in the year to have a lot of a lot of sedges, um, a lot of sedge in your lawn. Like I'll put it this way: I don't have any sedge in my lawn, and neither is Alex, and neither a lot of the lawn the lawns around here. I mean, when I drive around and I look at the lawns in the neighborhood, I see a lot of poa in the lawns, but I don't see any uh, any nut sedge or anything like that as yet this time of um, this time of year. So you, you might think it's sedges, but I I, I, it, I could be wrong. But in, but it's um, but not not around here, not in this area anyway. All right, Dalvin Larry's up next. He says, the outlet is fixed. Plant a verticut and turf rake next week before I begin the aeration top dressing fun. As of now, I don't plan on using PGR while it is recovering from the top dressing. Good plan. That works. It will uh, it'll recover faster if you do that. Uh, yeah, nothing here on the ground. Good. All right, uh, No Name says, just wondering when the top dressing is going to happen for you this year. Man, listen, I already told you guys, and I'm sticking to it. I said I'm not top dressing doing a major top dressing of the lawn this year. I already did the front lawn. You guys saw the video. I did the front lawn. I top dressed the front lawn with carbonized PN. It was not a leveling. It was just, just a top dressing. Like that was done. I got my, scratched my itch. I, you know, I got out there and I did, did the work. Um, but the, the back lawn, like a full top dressing, I don't know if I'm going to do it this year, guys. I mean, it looks pretty good. And you know, it, it I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say no, like never, or there's, there's zero chance. But um, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to keep Alex as a friend, man. And I don't want to, you know, he's probably not going to want to come over and help out if I, if I, if a bunch of sand shows up. He's going to look at me like, you're crazy. And he's right. So we'll see. I, I'm not going to say not, it's, there's no way it's going to happen. But at this point, I've done some on the, on the, on the, uh, I've already done the front lawn, the back lawn, to be determined. To be determined. Uh, Daniel Lynn says, uh, hey Ron, I uh, love the handwritten sticker I got along with my products, super fast shipping. I'm glad you enjoyed that, Ladani. Appreciate, uh, I'm glad it got to you, everything got to you in uh, in, in good order. Uh, the level of domination I'm achieving is like the 96 <laughs> bulls. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, that goes back, man. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, nice, 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 Danny. I'm glad one of your products got to you. I'm glad everything was there. And uh, I'm glad that you are setting the standard for domination in your neighborhood. Keep up the great work. Uh, how Hutchinson says, how soon to start applying growth regulator? If you are, I mean, now, you start doing it now. If your lawn is greened up, you're out there regularly mowing it, you can start using, uh, you can start using Primo. I, I did my application last week. So, uh, so yeah, I started Primo last week and it'll be in the lawn until, you know, the end of, until September, September or so, depending on, again, depends on temperature. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Matt Jackson says, uh, potting soil and coarse sand for us. Do it yourself, people. Sure. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, potting soil or, or, or um, coarse sand and carbonized PN would be good too, or, or potting soil. The big thing is you want you want to use material that is free of debris. The, the, the nice thing about this stuff, uh, about carbonized PN, is that here is that there's literally no trash in any of this. There's no garbage in it at all. I'm, I'm trying to show a picture. I'm just trying to show a picture on the lawn. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so you see there, there's no there's no twigs, no bark, no no peanut shells. There's nothing in that. It's, it's just, it is two things. It is compost and it is pine wood biochar. That's what that is. So that, so as far as like you having to pick stuff out, you're not gonna have to do that with carbonized PN. So if you, a couple of bags of that with um, coarse sand can work as well too. Or if you get some potting soil, as long as it's debris free, that can that will work as well. So I just I would just say whatever you decide to use, make it as debris free as possible, so you don't you don't create like a third job for yourself because you're already gonna get get like sand and material and you're gonna mix them. You don't want to have to get sand material and have to mix them, and then after you're applying it, have to go through and get all the garbage out of the lawn that you put into the lawn because the the material that you used was not clean. Uh, so there is that. All right, Benjamin Kane says, thanks, I'm just ordering a bag of leveling mix. Good job, you will like it, Benjamin. Uh, let's see here, Matt Jackson. Uh, I'm Matt Jackson, yeah, you would need to screen the potting soil very well. Same thing I said, right? Most have huge chunks of either bark or some kind of debris. Yeah, so it's, you, you the money you save on the potting soil, you will trade your time and frustration for. So I would just say, get carbonized PN, mix that with the, the sand you're gonna use and go to town. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Get to Liz says, I accidentally used double portion of Celsius and certainty surfactant on a portion of my lawn. Will my grass survive this? Should I hose it off in the morning? 
It's, I mean, will the grass survive it? Likely, yes. Um, should you hose it off in the morning? I mean, you could water it heavily, but it, but it's already, if you did it today, it's likely already dried. So watering it is not going to do a whole lot. Um, watering is not going to do a whole lot, unfortunately, get to Liz. It, it's li it's likely going to be okay. You, you'll probably get a little bit of discoloration, um, but it's, um, but watering, a heavy watering tomorrow is not likely to do a whole lot, especially if you did surfactant because the very purpose of surfactant is to help it stick to the uh, the leaf of the of the plant. So um, so yeah, there's not not a ton. Let me think what else. What else could you do? You could mow it. You could do that. That's what I, that's what I would do. Like if you can if you can get out there and mow tomorrow morning, like that's something you could do. Like maybe take them. I'm not sure kind of mower you have. If you can take it down like one notch lower. Not, I mean don't not don't scalp it. But if you take it down like maybe one notch lower than where you uh, you normally mow in that area, like that will help. Um, you'll cut off some of the leaf that has yet to absorb into the to make its way into the uh, into the grass into the work its way into the into the plant. That's something you could do. But as far as watering, that's not going to do a whole lot. So mow it, mow it tomorrow morning, um, like maybe like one notch lower than you normally would. Um, again, that's going to discolor it because that's going to, because you're going to, you're basically going to do a light scalp. So you are going to have some discoloration from the mowing, but then you won't have the, um, the potential injury from doubling up on the amount of herbicide that you sprayed in the lawn. So it's your call whether you, you know, which, which way you want to go. So, um, if it were me, uh, if it were me, I would. Um, if it were me, I would just. I would probably wait it out. But if you. But if you wanna. If you wanna mow it, you can. If you wanna mow it shorter, you can. Either one of those are options. But water. Don't don't water. Is what I'm trying to say. Watering is not gonna. Is not gonna do anything. Not at this point. It may have done it like an hour right after you applied it, but like a day or so later, it's not gonna do a whole lot. Sorry, you're dealing with that. Keep me posted on as far as how it. Uh, on how as far as how it develops. All right. Next up, we have Catherine. Turner. She says, uh, hi, Ron, we live in the Pacific Northwest and want a top dress. So far we have, we have thatch, I guess dethatched and put down spectricide and ordered my soil test kits. Do we aerate top dress and then add furt and other products? What's the order? The order I would do, Catherine, is I would aerate, add fertilizer and any other granular products. So like Essential G um, and any granular fertilizer, and then I would top dress. So here's my logic behind that. And guys on Instagram, I'm gonna have to stop here and restart it because we're about to run out of time and they're gonna boot me at the four hour mark. Um, actually, for Instagram, if you guys wanna keep watching, come over to YouTube because I've only got like one more question and I wanna restart it for like two minutes. So if you guys wanna keep watching, come over to YouTube because I'm gonna have to stop the stream here in like three minutes. All right, so for Catherine, um, I would aerate and then Add fertilizer and or and bio and um, biostimulants, anything, any kind of granular product, and then top dress. Here's the logic behind that, right? Whenever you core aerate the lawn, you're you're literally creating voids all throughout the soil profile, right? You're literally pulling cores out. So it's a great time to add any product that, by definition, has to get in the soil to work. So fertilizer needs to get in the soil to work. Granular biostimulants like Essential G need to get in the soil to work. So, so you would do that after aerating because it's going to fast track getting those products into the soil. After you're done with that, then you would top dress um, and water, and then that's it. And then, then all, and then at that point, all you're doing is just waiting for the uh, for the lawn to recover. So, aerate, apply granular products, Essential G, granular fertilizers, then top dress, water, and wait. That is the order that I would do things in. So uh, sounds like you guys are on your way. Have fun with it and have fun with the uh, with the project. Uh, let's see. And then Matt Jackson says, should I buy a leveling rake? 2,000 square feet to level. I would. If I had 500 square feet to level, I would still buy a leveling rake. It's a great tool to have. And to have. They don't take much, take up much space and they do, I mean, they make leveling way easier. They make leveling way, way, way easier. Um, Let's see here. So I have a question here on Instagram. It'll be the last one before I stop the stream here. He says, hey, Ron, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Unfortunately, I have a lot of common Bermuda and some hybrid. I want to oversee with some Yukon. I bought a 1600 from Prairie Turf like you. Awesome. So yeah, so common and hybrid, there's not a whole lot you can do to make them um, match. Mowing it shorter, using growth regulator to keep to keep them and uh, to keep them, you know, to where the, to try and suppress the differences and, and how quickly they grow. Um, is, is, is a strategy, but there's um, there's not a whole lot you can do if you got hybrid and um, and a common Bermuda in your lawn. Yukon, I mean, if you want to introduce that, it's that's your call. I don't know how well Yukon is going to look with the hybrid that you have, but it's just um, 
you know, just it's just something to keep in mind. I mean, what I would say is mow shorter, mow the lawn shorter, use growth regulator, and if you do that, you, it, the, the differences between the common and the hybrid are not going to be quite as um, as apparent. I have 20 seconds before Instagram ends, so I'm, for the guys and folks on Instagram, I, I appreciate you guys for watching tonight. Um, this will be posted so you guys can watch after the fact, and I will see you guys next weekend. Have an amazing weekend. Take care. All right, so guys on uh, YouTube, we're still here because we're not done, but I didn't want to restart this just for like one minute. All right, so, so next up, um, so yeah, Matt Jackson, I would get a leveling rake, and the one that I would say, there's one from Standard Golf that's pretty good, um, and if you want a link to that, if you, if you feel like supporting the channel, there's tons of them out there, like r, &R makes a good one. Um, but this is the one that I typically recommend to folks. Um, let's see, at Matt Jackson. Uh, and there you go. So um, what were you asking me? What with, uh, what with rake? It depends. It depends. Um, for a small lawn, I mean, 30 inches, 36 inches. Uh, mine is a 40 inch, but I have, a, I have a big lawn. I have a big lawn. So a 30 or 36 inch leveling rake, it'll be just fine. Uh, the big nice thing about a small, the slightly smaller one, is that it's less as far as storage space. Doesn't take up as much as much space to, to store it. But I would do a 30 or 36 inch um, for especially for a 2,000 square foot lawn. So yeah, you, you don't need to go get a big wide one because where are you going to put it once you're done? You know what I mean? It takes and it's not really necessary for for a lawn uh, that that small. So I put a link to one that I rec that I that I recommend um, in the description. There's other options out there as well too if you want to use something else. Um, but I would say six to 30 or 36 inches is what I would go with. That is what I would go with. All right. Um, next up we got, um, uh, Talorn says, let me know the day and I'll come help. Man, you don't know that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a taskmaster, man. You don't want to be out here. You, I mean, you, it's a lot of work leveling. I get, I got like a, almost 12,000 square feet. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Be careful. Careful what you wish for. You show up out here and you'll be like, man, you know, you know, you know Ron, I don't, you, know, you won't, you won't talk to me anymore. You won't show up at the live stream. You'll send me all kinds of hate mail. You'll send, you'll, you'll tell folks all kinds of nasty things about me. Mm -mm. Be careful. Careful. Although, you know, I might cheat if I do it. I might, um, I might just have, um, I might have a service come do it if I, if I do it again. I mean, we'll see. I mean, the lawn really doesn't need it, guys. I mean, look, look for yourself. This is the lawn right now. It really does not need, um, it really doesn't need leveling. I mean, I, Next year, I could test, but this year, it really doesn't, uh, really doesn't need it. It really doesn't. I mean, maybe some spot work here and there, but just really doesn't really need a full leveling. Okay, Joseph Atkinson says, have you ever used Milky Spore for grub control? I have, I have, yes, I have. Uh, it's, if you look at my, so my really old YouTube content, there's actually, if you look up Ron Henry Mil Milky Spore, you can actually find a video on that. I did a video on it. Um, the thing with Milky Spore, is um, as a grub control, I think it, it, it works fairly well, but it, it, it takes a while to build up in the soil. So it's not going to work as well as something like a celeprin that um, that you apply it and you're going to get protection for this year. So if you do if you do applications like several applications of milky spore over, let's say, the 2023 season, the residual should help you with grub control in 2024. But it's not going to work as well as, say, like um, like a celeprin, a celeprin G. If you, if you want if you want control for grubs and armyworms, like I said, I think Milky Spore only does grubs. If you want to control also armyworms, just get a celeprin. That's, that is what I would say. But I have used Milky Spore. In my estimation, it worked pretty well. Like the year after I used it, it I didn't have a whole lot of problems with grubs in my, um, you know, with grubs in my lawn. But then I started just using Caravan for a while and then switched to Celeprin and I haven't looked back because a Celeprin takes care of more than just grubs. So for that reason, I um, I, I just use that. That's what I'd recommend. All right, next up is, is uh, Donnell Burrell. He says, evening, Ron. How soon can I mow after a leveling application once the lawn has recovered? Because here's, here's the problem, Donnell, is that if you go out there too early, especially if you have a real mower and you get the reel into sand, you're going to dull the reel and bed knives. You're going to be, you're going to be spending, you know, a hundred bucks or whatever it costs in your area to get your mower resharpened again. So I would say wait until the lawn has fully grown through. And even for your first few mows, raise the height of cut up a bit. So if you're real mowing, go up a quarter of an inch. So if you normally mow it at, um, even if you normally mow it three quarters of an inch, set the reel mower to one inch just for the first couple of mows, um, because if you, again, it doesn't take much. If you get this, if you get this, the real mower into sand in one mowing session, that's enough to where you're going to be, 
um, at a minimum backlapping it, but then more, but you may have to take it out to get it ground depending on how, you know, how long you run it that way. So it depends on how quickly your lawn recovers. I would say raise it up a little bit, wait for the lawn to be, to be fully grown through, and then, uh, and then you're good to go to resume mowing. Taloran says, uh, that's what I, I'm, I was doing. I got a quote today to level my 3K lawn and it's cheaper to use them than rent the equipment and super sod mix. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, because if you have, you have, um, because you get the super sod um, um, mix, you have to get that. You have to rent the equipment and then there's your time. There's your time and effort involved with it because you have to rent the equipment and then you have to take it back. So there's also that. So, and you know, with, you pay someone else to do it. You can just sit back with a lemonade or you know some some adult beverage and uh, watch it happen. You know, I will tell you, having done both, watching someone else do it is far less work. However, you know, the control freak of me looks I'm like, man, he's going a little heavy there. Eh, I want to put a little more material down there. So there is that. There is that aspect of if you have someone else doing it, you got to let them do it. You can't be out there like quarterbacking and saying, hey, man, you can put a little more hair. You know, this is too heavy. You can't do that. If you can let them do it, let them do it. So that's the, uh, that's the one thing. So if you got to, you have to, you have to let that go if you're going to pay a service to, uh, to, uh, to do it. But most of the services around here, especially if you're in Georgia, if you use like Sandman or any of the other guys, I mean, I, they, they do a pretty good job. I think Richard does a pretty good job when it comes to leveling. So, so yeah. Well, guys, gals, thank you guys so much for coming out to hang out tonight. I think we covered everything as far as, as, far as blog posts. Um, we have some new content coming out. Um, so I'll, I'll show you guys we did get ahead. There is a summer lawn care schedule that's, uh, that's here now. We're trying to get ahead of the curve as far as that goes. Um, and then there's some new content coming out, uh, next week as, uh, as always, but, um, but yeah, get out there, start mowing your lawn. If you've not started feeding it, start feeding it. Uh, if you haven't played with growth regulator as yet, uh, what are you waiting for? This stuff is, is tons of fun. Your lawn will thank you for it. And yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Get out and have some fun in the lawn. It is, uh, I said it last week, but it's really go time now. You know, we got only warm weather coming our way going forward, so the grass is really gonna take off. If I can help with anything, don't hesitate to reach out. I will see you guys next week. Take care.